Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. I'm Shaklin. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Linus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakhwari. Hare Krishna Pentala. John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hi there. It's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not! That's because you're not using AIM Chess. AIM Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, AIM Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... But it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just come on. Literally, why not? All right, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. All right? Jesus Christ. Chess, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. 
Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. And so much happiness. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective.
Hello and welcome to the World Rapid Championship 2022, one of the most exciting events of the year in the chess calendar. We have Magnus Carlsen, we have Hikaru Nakamura, we have Rapport, Duda, MVL, Nepomneshi, Grishu. It's a star solid lineup. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm delighted to be here to cover the action with the legend, the great Peter Leko. Peter, how are you this morning? Hello, Jan. Hello, everyone. Super excited, as you said. Yeah, this is uh, an incredible event. Yeah, everybody is looking forward to the players, the audience, we as commentators, fans all around the world. A very special event. Everybody gets a chance, and uh, it's a fantastic uh, lineup. Very much so. Everyone is there. Of course, nowadays, the big rivalry in these rapid controls is Carlson and Nakamura. But this is rapid, not blitz. We've just seen. Nakamura beat Carlsen in dramatic final in the Speed Chess Championship. In Rapid, what do you think the packing order is at the world top? Is it easy to say? Because I don't really know. Yeah, I think not. Uh, you are absolutely right. First of all, I think that since recently Magnus and Hikaru have been so dominating the online, also the Rapid, I mean... Let's not forget, Abdus Satorov is the defending champion who's also had an amazing 2022, making great progress. We've seen Daniel Dubov win this a couple of years back. So Dubov claimed then that there's a pool of like 15, 20 players that could win this event, given, given a good tournament. And I think I agree, it's very hard to predict who will be in shape. But of course, Magnus Carlsen, to me, is the favorite in any event he plays, and there's not an exception. That's true. I mean, Magnus is a clear favorite. Uh, he has also some incredible record winning this championship, I think, seven times. Uh, not, not exactly the only the rapid portion, but combined the rapid and blitz portion, I think he has already won it seven times. Uh, incredible. Yeah. By the way, we have liftoff and pair Sahakian versus Magnus Kars. No, it's probably just a test. Yeah. But also let's talk about the pairings. Yeah, that Ter Sahakian against Magnus Carson. The Armenian player who is very experienced, he was part of the team, the Armenian national team, which sensationally took silver medal at the Olympics. A very dangerous opponent. And we see that because there are not so many players, yeah, it's like 160 players uh, field. 
We already have very big clashes right in the very first round. Yeah, especially because of rapid ratings for guys that don't play rapid events all the time are a little deceptive. I don't think Ter Sakyan is a 2-5-30 player and even more extreme. I see down my screen Tabatabai against Nakamura. Tabatabai is listed as 2-5-26 and trust me, he's not 2-5-26. I've just seen him play in sieges. This is a very, very strong, quickly improving player who's approaching 2700 and that's a real, real test for Nakamura in the first round. Exactly. I mean, uh, Tabatabai is super strong. He has also played in the Grand Prix uh, this, this year. Yeah, it's still this year, 2022. I mean, it's a very, very critical situation for many players. Also, Rapport against Vahidov. I think Vahidov was one of the guys of the Uzbek kids who was part of the uh, winning team there in the Olympiad. Also, you don't know exactly what to expect. Yeah, when you see 25, 30, you think like, Okay, but no, it's not. I mean, plus 150 rating should be added, definitely. And then we also have, for example, uh, Jan Yapomyashi against Pantsulaya. Pantsulaya is a very experienced player with a very good uh, record in rapid championships. It's his time control. He, he feels at ease and it's already the very first round pairing as well. Yeah, we've seen, especially Magnus, I'm sure others as well, have somewhat slow starts in this event. I recall maybe it was two years ago where Magnus started with like half out of two and he couldn't quite catch up the whole event. And yeah, there's no warm up here. So let's jump into the action. It looks like we do have liftoff on the top board. Tersa Kian versus Magnus Carlsen. And Carlsen goes for the French. Yeah, very interesting. I think that uh, also he knows that Tersa Kian used to be Leon Aronian's second, yes. So basically playing any kind of E4, E5s, uh, he might, does not want. Yeah, also assuming that Tersakian definitely came prepared. It's also a very special event. Yeah, usually when the event starts, that's the moment when for the very first game you can do some preparation because you have the drawing of lots earlier. Uh, later on, there is no more talking about preparation. And we see the win of variation. Yeah, and here the first surprise, or the next surprise, Knight C6. An offbeat line, this Vinavar, of course, has been around Jan Nepomne. She played it in the previous candidates, but it's never quite been established at the top level as a main opening. The computer doesn't love it. Magnus, what is he up to? Knight c6, queen g4 blitz out, and pawn to g6. Yeah, this, this is, is a specialty rare. of Rapport. Rapport is the one, Richard, that uh, likes to play this with the black pieces. This knight c6 and then goes for queen a5. And uh, the idea is to close the position with c5, c4, go for long castle, bishop d7, long castle, and uh, create a completely different strategical play than the usual win hmm. H4 played, queen a5 on the board, bishop d2 will happen. And let's see what Magnus has in store. Will he go queen a4? Well, usually if you can, then you like to include queen a4. The big question is, can you? But no, Magnus goes h6. He needs to stop h5. Yeah, this pawn is not as important. But Tersa Kian also says, no, sir, I won't allow you to go queen a4. And for this whole complete block on the queen side, plays a pawn to a4. Both sides seem to know this line. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rapport uh, plays quite a lot of games. I mean, I think before Richie... People were saying that, okay, this is some sideline. I mean, we won't really analyze, we won't take it seriously. But when Rapport has played, I think, already more than 10 or 15 games in this line, even recently, then, then people tend to, to look at it. Yeah, that what is it? The, the trick is, however, that the computer always prefers white. Yeah, so yeah. it's not so easy to, to, to really get deep into the position unless you really force yourself. Yeah, that's okay, come on, it's not easy. And C4, we see over the board. Uh, black closes the, the queen side and gets ready for bishop these are long castles and then tries to break on the king side with f6. It's very interesting that suddenly black one black is the one uh, trying to open up the queen's the king side as well. How was it for you as a one e4 player? These French structures and in particular this Vinaver. Did you did you feel at ease with white? Okay, computer says white is better, black doesn't have a lot of play. Or did they confuse you? I always found them very confusing, but I'm not much of an E4 player. Well, personally, I have uh, quite a good result from the white side. I think it's also connected that in 1999, 
uh, when I was like 20 years old and already 2,700 players. Then I devoted like 10 days of my life to these Vinaware structures. Yeah. And uh, I think that really helped. I got very deep into it. I understood the structures and it's, it's, of course, now with new computers, everything is move pen, move preparation as well. But just to understand all the plans, all the ideas, uh, I think that was a very well invested time. Sounds good. I think maybe it's changed a bit by when this Lila Zero, this engine was new and everybody started using it. It was funny because in most of these French structures, it just gave some crazy numbers like plus two, plus three. This is completely winning for white. And maybe it scared some, some people off saying, okay, if new computers think this is completely lost, I can't really do it. But it looks like it's come back a little bit thanks to these rapport games you mentioned and as a fighting weapon. Magnus, okay, he's playing every opening, of course, but he's shown a lot more sympathy for the French recently than we've seen in the years past. Yeah, usually Magnus was uh, the one who picked the French uh, occasionally for one game yeah, as a surprise. Yeah. yeah, that's a typical idea with the white pieces. You put the queen on f4, targeting the f7 pawn. It's uh, black's weakness. Also, you are covering the dark squares. You have eventually also the f6 square if uh, black develops the knight to e7. Yeah, knight g8 to e7 is a very typical move. Then white could invade with queen f6 as well. There are such ideas. Also, there are ideas like knight h2, knight g4. It's not very often that you get time for it, but if you get time for it, then it's fantastic. Um, the big question is now, how will Black react? I remember some uh, rapport games with Rook H7 that he protected this pawn like this, and then got ready for Long Castle and then Rook F8, and then he was anyway insisting on going F6. Yeah, not a pretty move to make, but very, very logical. You need to get the pieces out. And I wonder if Magnus is a little annoyed. He prepared this. Surprise, or sort of surprise, but his opponent blitzes out all, I'm assuming. And they are hardworking. They love to work on chess. Yeah, this is always the main point. Yeah, that basically, if you love to love what you are doing, then uh, it's it's ne it never feels like hard work. Yeah, you are just happy to find the truth of all positions. Yeah, that's why I'm so good at watching TV. Um, but yeah, very true. I've played Sargis Yan many a time, and even in the days when I was well prepared, it was never a very a very pleasant experience. Like they know their stuff so so well. Magnus blitzes out his rook h7 move, covers the pawn, and now it looks like Tersakian is taking his first time out, wondering what to do next, which is not so obvious, right? Like, because as you mentioned, black has a clear plan. For white, now he has to decide do we bring the bishop? Is rook b1 clever, or does it just leave the pawn in place? Is this maneuver too slow? Bunch of options here. Yeah, and also there is the big question that where do you place your bishop from f1? Yeah, that do yeah. you play this uh, simple bishop e2 or g3, bishop g, bishop h3, in order that when black plays the breaking f6, then the bishop from h3 will be targeting the e6 pawn, yeah, because that will be the vulnerable spot in black's position. So I would say that somehow g3, bishop h3 looks more natural, but knight h2 on the board, I'm loving it because this is a very clever strategical idea. If it works, of course. Black shouldn't go h5, then the knight can even go back, and white has this built-in harp on the king's side. So Magnus, I guess he'll just castle and allow this to happen, or can he do anything? Think about g5, but it's too much. Yeah, there will be the question eventually of, of knight g4, g5, that where does it uh, lead us? However, on the other hand, usually when black goes something like h6, g5, then it's very typical for white to break that structure with h4. So yeah. it's double Even if the tactics work, you can just say, thank you, go somewhere. And it looks like white is prepared for this. <laughs> well, then uh, the new question appears that then you go h5 and then you push yeah, yeah. g4 and then you still try to get, for example, the knight to f5. But here I still have hg. <laughs> yes, they here it, it definitely works. And the idea of knight h2 to g4 is also to hinder the 
freeing move f7 f6 or the breaking move how you want to call it yeah now complicated strategic battle here how should we do it in general i i guess we focus on one game we find exciting but rapid probably gives us give us time to have a brief look around if they slow down no? what do you think yeah, that's also my guess. I mean, maybe we have a chance not to look at Hikaru because this is also a very big game. Yeah, Tabataba against Hikaru Nakamura. Oh, I love this line. This is something I worked on recently because, as we know, the Nimzo Indian is a pretty good opening. And I think people are a little stuck in Queen C2, all these castles and D5. They're so well analyzed now. You can play F3, but C5 and B5 or whatever, it's also very tricky. So they've gone back to the roots, playing the good old Rubinstein. And a lot of discoveries have been made here recently, I feel like. Nakamura yes. goes C5. I think most people prefer D5. It would take too long to explain all the differences. But it's interesting, Oric. Yeah, let's just call it that Hikaru usually likes to play with C5. Yeah, so C5, Knight, G2. D However, C5 gives wide the option of going Knight, G2. Yeah, if, uh... The point is, if you do this, you have this, which is a exactly. much better version. And yeah, I, I played this recently. And this is... For playing whatever you want to call it, small ball, this is a nice line for white, actually. It looks like black is very, very solid. But somehow, often you get these positions where you take, and the white piece are a little better positioned to put pressure, especially the bishop on c8 finds it hard to find a good square. And yeah, it's a very, very interesting line. Yeah, we also see is... that uh, Tabatava is way up on the clock. Yeah, six minutes advantage if the clocks are right, and it could easily be because uh, Tabatava definitely came prepared. And Hikaru is not. Ex I mean, okay, in all these pitches championships, you know, don't need this very deep preparation. Yeah, you just play some kind of a position. Hikaru is very good at, and that's it. But here in rapid time control, already all these deep preparations. Uh, come to life, and I wonder how well and how deep Hikaru is prepared in certain lines. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he plays very solid openings, and he trusts himself, even if he gets into some hot water by being surprised to find a way out of it. And it has always worked pretty well recently, especially in this speed chess. But yeah, this is this is a challenge. Bishop e7, queen b3, I think I've still seen this position. H6, bishop e5, Tabatabai clearly knows what he's doing, blitzing up bishop e5, threatening knight to f4. Yeah, nice nice prep by, by Tabatabai. Yeah, it looks quite promising. I mean, basically now, blackface is a big question. Maybe it's not even that big. Probably you have to take this bishop, yeah, yeah with knight e5. d5, queen takes e5, and then you run into knight f4. Queen yeah, d6. It's not the end of the story. Queen yeah. d6. We have to knight decide takes. how we want to take. I guess knight takes. This looks logical. And it's always a question if white can keep a little pressure maybe with a move like bishop c4 here. I mean, can't we consider queen takes b7 or that's too much? Directly, yeah? Yes. Oh, I didn't see it. I mean, it's still so early morning for us, but yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if I'm blundering a piece or is it a clever idea? I have no idea what's, what's that. But look at this. The game progresses and he first includes look AD1 before taking on D5. Oops, and he still so, bleeds uh, out. So that's, that's the point of the preparation. He knows. Now, what about Bishop G4? It would be very tempting. It looks Do we logical, four for some bishop e two? Yeah, just bishop e two probably. Yeah. Knight takes d five is also there. I think it's, uh, bishop d one. Then bishop d one. Knight e seven. Queen e seven. Queen e seven. We we can't do that. Yes. No, but I guess he just wants bishop e two, and if takes rook takes, and the white pieces are much more active in the center. White will get the pawn back. Black looks like has to be very precise to make it out of this. Yeah, well, maybe after bishop e2, black will have to play bishop e6. Do we have this move? Because knight takes e6, f e6, bishop g4, it's kind of scaring me. Very scary. Yeah, b7 is hanging. Okay, there are all these vulnerable spots. Uh, maybe you can just protect it with look f6. It could be, but... You have to, yeah. And bishop e6 played. Computer hates it. Directly. 
Why is it so bad? How bad can this be? Computer is going crazy. Yeah, computer is going crazy for which exact reason? Yeah, that's the big question. I, I don't, don't see, see any direct tricks. Of course, this combination, there's always this problem that your light squares are incredibly weak. I'm not sure if this is this is the way to go, but this is always in the air. We know these old Kasparov Karpov games and so on. Once you play at h6, the structure is never very safe. But it feels like there should be something something more violent than this. Uh, hang on, but then can you start with bishop b1? Start with this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then threaten queen d3 because in the other structure after knight e6 fe you have always look f6 uh, kind of covering yeah. and then king f7. But now with the pawn on f7, it might be a problem. It is a problem. I mean, how do like we react after... g6? What do you do? Yeah, this is it. This is it. I mean, just a very simple bishop b1. And we see that uh, Tabatawi for the very first time in this game thinks and at the right moment because he knows exactly that Probably computer was saying that black had to play something very specific yeah. and it wasn't bishop e6. Yes, the usual. You're happy that you know your opponent made a bad move, but you also know, oh, now, now I have to start calculating. But it doesn't take him very long. He goes bishop b1 within like a minute. Wow, and here and we he are. You are in like a, a lot trouble. of trouble. That's the thing. You're not warmed up. You traveled there and usually you want to get settled into things somehow. But first round. He plays against Tabatabai with 2-5-26, who blitzes out 20 moves of very, very nice preparation. He's really not 2-5-26. And yeah, deep black prep, as you mentioned, is sometimes the one vulnerable spot Hikaru has with such a complete player. But yeah, this, this looks tough to get out of. Yeah, absolutely. And we also should mention yeah, that uh, the tournament is played in Almaty in Kazakhstan, which means plus five hours for our time zone for the Central European. However, for all the American uh, players, and I think we only have Hikaru and Fabi, there is like, depending from where they come from the States, it's at least 12 hours time difference. Yeah. And even if you arrive early, 12 hours time difference, I know how it is. Like, usually it's worse than on like day four or five and you're lying there at 4 a.m. and you can't sleep at all and you think, ah, I have to get up in a couple of hours. It's, it's an issue, of course. Most chess professionals are used to all these time zones and they have the little tricks to adjust quickly. And particularly, Hikaru he hasn't really traveled that much recently because he hasn't been playing a lot of classical chess. And I think he struggled with it from, from India as well, where he played this Tata, Tata India Rapid. I hope I get the name right, where he was mentioning that he was a little jet lag. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a thing, but also. He's just all prepared here, even with all the sleep in the world. Tabatabai would still have blitzed out the sequence. Yeah, now the big question is, can he stay alive? Yeah, because it, it can be just uh, very simply game over. Yeah, white is setting queen dc checkmate mm. on h7. And basically run. the famous Magnus quote, yeah, that uh, let's attack without sacrificing anything. He did give a pawn, but it doesn't really feel like white is material down here. And this already looks like you choose, choose the finish here. Yeah, if of nothing course. else, Queen G7 wins, but I'm sure there are more spectacular ways to do this. I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, maybe Hikaru just felt like it's all about the D5 pawn, and he just completely missed the move Bishop B1, yeah, because this is such a simple and G6 mm -hmm. played. This is this is a very sad choice. It just yeah. shows that he he felt like there is no other move. Yeah. White can take hmm. in a variety of ways. No, I will have to calculate. His point is now he has after queen d3 as bishop f5 at least. But of course it's insanely sad. Even this looks Yeah, just bishop g6 very primitive. Yeah, I guess he wants bishop g5 and try to somehow survive, but it looks it's the only. But you know, even after bishop g5, he can retreat with the bishop 2b1, yes. <laughs> bishop f4, queen d3, nothing changed. Ah, uh, f5. You have f5. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it's not pretty, but <laughs> trying, trying to survive. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, no. Of course, Endless this, this we want mm -hmm. one give black. Yeah. All right. Let's leave Hikaru with his troubles, or is is it unfair from our side? No, let's leave him alone. We can't help him on this one. Let's switch back to the world champion Magnus Carlsen, the still classical world champion, I should say. Of course, in this format, Abdusatorov is the defending world champion. 
See how that went. We've seen Knight H2, Long Castles, Knight G4, Rook of 8. Typical plan. Magnus, when he does something like this, he usually doesn't bluff, right? He knows the plans. He knows the game's played, even if he plays an offbeat line, and he probably knows the computer doesn't love it. He usually knows what's happening. I think he knows all the ideas, exactly. I mean, he might not be move and move prepared in all of them, yeah, but because it's simply impossible. However, he knows the spirit. He knows all the strategical ideas, why things are happening. He goes queen d8 here, trying to push f5 or f6, controlling this square. Tersakian, taking a lot of time, goes queen to g3, and f5 is on the board. I guess you take. Yeah, you yeah take. EF6 also played knight xf6, and now black is threatening knight e4. And because of this threat, I don't believe that you can really keep the knights alive. Okay, one could argue that the h6 pawn is hanging, and maybe Tersakian feels that at least he needs to calculate it, but it looks extremely risky. Knight h6, knight e4, queen take g6, going for another pawn hunt. I don't believe in this. Nah. You might just play queen e7 and everything falls over. The, the queen on g6 also is unsafe. Look, g7 coming. No, no, it's it's clear that uh, you you kind of have to take on f6. Say so queen takes. But yeah, now black is winning the fight for the e5 square. That's the problem, yeah? That now if the bishop from d2... Could land on d6 in black stomach, yeah. Then, then you cover any kind of e6, e5 businesses. Then you dominate the position. But the bishop is stuck on d2. Black is very active. Black will be able to play e6, e5 break at at the most convenient moment, opening up his bishop. Uh, it's uh, also not ideal. I understand why Samuel is taking his time. Still, the white position is stable, even if e5 happens. It doesn't look too bad if I play. I don't know. This is maybe. Maybe a stupid move, but some move waiting. Because of e5, I, I guess I can take and probably castle bishop e3. I have some potential in my position as well. Oh, yeah, think. you have. But okay, then usually the knight retreats to c6. Yeah, it's the typical stuff if you already want to follow just two more moves. Yeah, knight c6, bishop two comes to f5, and the queen hits the c3 pawn, so the bishop from d2 can't move that, uh, that easily. The bishop on e2 is kind of stuck because of this powerful pawn on c4. I mean, I understand your point. I always love this kind of structures from the white side, but exactly this one feels fine for black. Could be, yeah. Interesting. Interesting struggle ahead. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm biased because of the bishops, but yeah, this guy is not <laughs> is not doing so much right now. Just feels like white is potential as well. I'm not rook b1, rook b5, rook d1, but sure you want. But yeah, it becomes move by move. And I guess he should look for a better sort of waiting move than f3 yeah, maybe he, just he castles i was a bit worried about some no but he but... haven't uh, captured on oh. f6 yet and actually finally decided on bishop takes h6 wow what is this action 94 queen e3 very greedy grabs the pawn rook fh8 magnus had anticipated this turn of events he's a pawn down now but white is very loose all of a sudden e5 is there yeah everything is hanging in the air However, bishop h6 was a justified question, yeah, because uh, let's let's just highlight that the rook on f8 was hanging. That's why black had no time to capture on g4. Knight take g4 runs into bishop f8. That was the justification. Uh, good morning for us, because we, we did blunder the move bishop h6, that it's legal at, at all. There will uh, be but, worse blunders. Yeah, but knight e4, queen e3, rook f8, and the game is just about to begin. These are sharp stuff. Yeah. Probably Magnus doesn't mind this turn of events at all. Because, of course, he's also looking for ways to keep the position as complicated as possible. Tersarkian does not mind. But what does White play? I don't see a good move. Yeah, let's let's mention that F3 opens the G3 square. So now G3 comes with probably double attack. Or, However, we have now Bishop G5. What is it? Can we play Bishop G5 now? Then maybe Oof. knight gc isn't even the move. Like maybe let's just go back to f3. Even this position feels so loose. I don't know, queen a5, jump. Yeah, and then you also have some knight takes d4, knight takes h4 ideas, depending on the situation. Yeah. But Okay, rook h3, at least we stabilize the rook. 
kick the knight away, knight f5, Jump queen d2, two. Yeah. and knight h4, king f2, then we are happy. We're still alive, or maybe we're better. Yeah. Well, if we are alive, we might be winning strategy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very tricky. So hang on. Then after FC, do you have some this E5 that you already mentioned? Yeah, that you you can try to break everything, but doesn't yeah, the problem is work. there's always a check on G4, like after exactly. <laughs> ah, sorry, let me check. The no, other I mean one. FE. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is check. So this is check. Like yeah. It works. Yeah. All right. Then then F3. Tempting really... to take this idiot, but mm, no, not in time. Yeah, there's another fork. Yeah. Yeah, now the fork and also the f5 square is then protected. No, bishop fc played. Bishop fc is on the board. I'm not believing in this move. Computer hates it, as you can see from the live bar. We don't have an engine running, but we can see that little... Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. The little bar on the live board. Uh, we don't always have it on screen. But we can see the engine bar dropping, but we can't see any moves. Um, so we will once yeah, in a while e5 so exactly now e5 makes a lot of sense because bishop e4 d e there's no longer the bishop covering this so d takes e5 what does he want to do good question yeah okay d5 looks logical I'm now more careful after claiming that uh, knight takes f6 was only move and blundering bishop takes a6 now I want to take my time yeah? take your time we could Let's take also here. This guy. Yeah, bishop g4 takes takes king b8 because the bishop on h6, bishop f4 runs into rook h4 or g5. Yeah. Many tempting options. It's so loose for white. It doesn't look winning yet, g5, bishop g3. No, winning not. But I mean, let's not forget that actually, where does this white king runs from e1? Yeah, that's a very big question. Yeah, this is not exactly safety either. Yeah. No, Magnus is very happy, as you said. Yeah, that Magnus uh, certainly, it was a strategical battle, yeah, which is quite, I mean, much more easy to understand. However, now the strategic uh, battle got also very tactical. D takes E5 on the board. Yeah, this takes, takes. Yeah, what else? <clears throat> I'm very curious what he does now. So it feels like some stupid moves like g5 could be in the position just trying to restrict this bishop, but I'm not But sure okay, then e g5, you also yeah, yeah. stabilize them. Yeah. And queen a5, queen not, a5. not the move beloved by our engine friends. Let me just briefly see, because I'm curious what computer wanted here. Yeah, just yeah, wanted it or like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Bishop f4 and just rook h4. Rook h4, rook h4, claiming. Your king is weak, sir. Bishop h3, then there's g5, bishop and h2, g4. g4. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But Magnus plays queen a5. And now, according to our engine friend, the move is king to f1. I switched it off again. I don't, don't, don't do when I read out computer lines. But I had a little peek. And king f1, then it says white is, white is very much alive. Or better. Yeah, yeah king f1 is kind of... Um... Difficult move. On the other hand, if you spot it, then you immediately feel that ah, probably that's exactly what you need. However, with one minute on the clock for and Rook Sahakian, three played. will be very tough. Yeah. Rook H3. And now we also understand why Magnus is uh, probably rushing with his moves. Yeah, that he he simply feels that somewhere is solo on the clock. That yeah. if he sets up some new questions, then he might crack. How do we punish rook a3? There's still the option to take here and go away with the king. But that might be better. But then I feel that, yeah, the, the queen on yeah. d8 was maybe better. On the other hand, this rook on a is a very bizarre piece. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's, it's completely... It's, I mean, it's, it's completely stuck there and also it's loose, yeah? It's not... Yeah, bishop f5 played. Okay, Magnus just wants to play quickly, putting the pressure. This is a slightly random move, though, it feels like. Um, yeah, he protects the knight on e4. And he's also, he's trying to make moves that come as a little surprise, making his opponent play quickly. Short castles feels very dangerous with his battery on the h-file. Maybe still king f1, just to get out of 
all kinds of T4 threats, which yeah, I guess... Yeah, but then you are really are... kicking yourself. Why haven't I done yeah. that before? Yeah. No, tough. With 30 seconds on the clock, uh, and you don't know, you only feel that the danger is coming from all around. And it does castle. Computer hates it. But now it just takes, takes, and King beat, and then can we just uh, mate uh, white on the H-file? Looks like a good plan. Not made yet. Yes. Not Maybe some yet. G5 wins, but... But G5 you can take now, yeah? This is a difference. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering if we have some rook h3, but it's not it's not breaking through direct. Yeah. No, Magnus goes king b8 first because now actually already bishop takes g g4 is a very big threat. If bishop f4, then he can just go rook h4. Yeah, that's probably smart. Yeah, that's it. I mean, nice basically, move. then it looks like a total collapse for White. Seems good at chess that Magnus Carlsen kid will keep an eye on him. Oh, I mean, okay, let's let's wait for Samuel. Does he find the move at all after King B? It's so tough. Yeah, Bishop G4 is a big threat. G3, Bishop G4. We, now we don't have any play for the piece. No, it's just, no. just not enough. Yeah, the clock is ticking down. We don't know exactly if the clock is correct or not. Bishop G5 played. Out of panic. Sad, but what to do? Knight G5, Queen G5, Rook H4. And then G3. It, no? Ah, the still g3, sorry. There is still g3, g3, but then you can take and then you just take the rook, yeah? Pick yeah. up the rook. Let's just show this because it's such an important line. Takes, takes, g3, rook, yeah, takes. And then bishop takes, rook h1, rook h2, king f3, rook takes f1. And there are no checks. This might be the winning line, and that's what we are seeing. g3 on the board. This seems pragmatic. GH prolongs the game, but Bishop F3 should win for white, for black. And let's see if Magnus finds anything better. Maybe he's thinking about, I don't know, Rook H5. There are some moves here. Yeah, he has many moves. But of course, if you already see that you have a straightforward win, then it's very natural to go for it. And, and well, I mean, looking at this game, we can say that uh, this line worked to perfection for Magnus. Mm. He's taking his time. Yep. This is also the right uh, attitude, yeah? I mean, if you feel that you're already winning, you shouldn't be rushing, yeah? Because just one good move and you finish the game, there is no reason to rush. Mm. Yeah, you can see it as very selectively. Yeah? When the position was complex, but he maybe wasn't bit better, he played some moves quickly to make Ter Sakyan take decisions. Now that he's winning and has seven minutes, he just takes his time to calculate it till the end and no longer needing to put any pressure on the clock. And of exactly. Of course, he knows he's winning. Yeah? I mean, I'm wondering, however, <laughs> is, is there some defense we are missing after bishop take g4? Because otherwise... I think just gh and... Keep playing, no, I don't know, he's six or whatever, but of course yeah, it's but bad. I mean, this feels so lost. What to do? Mm, and we hear that apparently Magnus is kind of disappointed that the game is still on. Yeah, he's uh, unhappy, he's upset, but uh, I think he should be happy. Yeah, we can see him there thinking deeply about the position. Teresa Kian, all dressed up. Also hanging in there. And Magnus hesitant to make a move. We should maybe mention that there is a three minute delay on the game. So we get the moves. Now it seems like, of course, with all the cheating debates and chess, that most big tournaments are bringing back some sort of delay. But as long as the camera is in sync with it, it doesn't really make a difference in in practice for us. And three minutes, I think it's also unlikely. We'll get too spoiled on Twitter or wherever by people giving the results. But just if you're confused about it, we are three minutes behind real time here. Yeah, now I'm, now I'm confused. Yeah, because this Bishop G4 looks like such a simple move. I'm... Um, no, bishop g4 doesn't work. Why? How? I guess it works, just other moves are better. Yeah, bishop g4, bishop g2. Ah, bishop, that's oh. why Magnus is so upset. That's it. That's the trick. 
Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, so easy to miss it. Yeah. That you think like that's it. Game is over. Now we understand everything. Thank you, computer. Computer gives some winning lines, but not so easy. Like he wants to take here bishop e4, f3, queen c5 check. Also pronouncing this rook is an idiot. And yeah, well, rook takes g4, g4 on, on the board. board. It's played. Bishop g4, bishop e4. This happened. Wow. Okay. Now we know exactly why Magnus is so upset because this is then the real game now. F3, it's not over. Let's see. F3, queen c5 check. Yeah, king g2. King g2. And what to do? Wow, what an incredible defense. This bishop takes g4, bishop g2. Oh and it's God. it's very tilting because you know your opponent missed it and you think you finished the game. But now that the position is on the board, he thought for a bit, there's a good chance Terzakian will find it because it's the only good move. And then you have to come up with something else. Let's see how it is now. Queen c5 check on the board, king g2. He takes on a3, f4 takes on c3. And yeah, doesn't look like black is completely winning. No, maybe he's fine, but this is a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. I mean, maybe black is slightly better, I would I would say. Yeah, but uh, I mean, this structure is always so unclear. Just for the sake of completeness, let's revisit this position and look at the way for black to win. It was rook 4 to h5 here. That was the best move. And, and then after queen, queen f4? f4, now you take. And after wow. queen takes g4, knight takes e5 wins. Because the black white pieces are overloaded. Queen f4, rook f5, and the queen can't cover everything. So well, there was a way to win, but not an easy one at all. Some nasty geometry. Yeah, very counterintuitive, yeah, that you remove the pieces. I mean, Magnus is looking g4 is so much in the spirit, but it does not win. No, now black is just better. But yeah, the computer gives something like plus one. Or a bit more, which means yeah, black is pleasantly better, but it's uh, it's not over. Ah, but it's uh, it's based on this move pan move line that after queen c two check rook f two, you have queen b one, and after rook f one because protecting from queen h one check me, then queen b two check picks up the e five pawn with the queen or with and the rook f two queen takes e five. Yeah? Yes, exactly. So it's all based on this very deep uh, precise calculation. And even this black is a pawn up. Yeah, I guess it's good. The king can stop the deep one. Exactly. Looks good. Yeah. yeah, if Magnus spots this queen b1, queen b2 idea with followed by queen e5, then it's it's all fine for him. Yeah, queen e4 is also a tempting move. It's <laughs> it's not obvious a queen b1 move. Yeah, however, here then then we have bishop f3. Yeah. And we can uh, avoid that queen trade. Yeah, we can take on g6 maybe. Knight d4, it's nice, nice of course for blank, but a bit more messy. Yep. In the meantime, Hikaru shows his usual incredible resilience from a lost position. He somehow makes it to a worse end game where he's so tough to beat because he just he doesn't blunder. Like he might not always play the perfect move, but he never gives you anything easy. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's safety in this. Wow, but uh, still it looks very bad, yeah. Doesn't look great, but opposite color bishops. Um... Yeah, okay, but yeah, it's, it's, it uh, we, we can combine. Yeah, f4, king, f3, look b2. I mean, white can also play all the moves. Based a tempo, yeah, activating the king later. Exactly, king will always find a safe shelter on g4. If the white look ever enters to the seventh rank, it will be game over, basically. So black will have to set up some uh, second rank defense with rook c7. Yeah, I'm not saying it's pleasant, but. To make it here from this position, I think, is an achievement. And it's also what Hikaru does. He just doesn't, doesn't collapse. There's no easy wins against Hikaru. That, that's for sure, yeah. Anyway, Magnus spotted Queen B1. Showing he's in shape here early on. Like, he was upset how this went. But overall, he's playing a very good game. Yeah, look at, look at one and Queen B2 check. The idea. Looks already so tempting, yeah. If you have already spotted Queen B1, or is there any reason why he might think that maybe even Queen E4 check has same effect? I'm not sure if the rook is worse on F1 than Bishop F3. Uh, he played Queen E4, but it's wrong. Queen B2, you were right. What's the move? Bishop F3, Queen E5, this on the board. Well, once again, this Queen takes G6 now, yeah? Yes. Queen G6 played. We still have a game, ladies and gentlemen. 
Tersakian is hanging in there. I mean, on the top boards, I see that the very first game that uh, ended was uh, the win by Jan Yapomiasi against Pantsulaya. So a good start for Jan, but everyone else is still very much in the bottle. And Queen e4, lovely little move, Queen e4, because the yeah, knight takes f3, queen takes f3 is possible. We are kind of protecting the, the king. Yeah, the king on g2 is very vulnerable, but... And this end game with the two passes no longer looks better for black, like queen e4, but should be four. The cheap one can also run, the rook is active. Magnus exactly. still has... The knight on d4 is also a bit, a bit strange. Yeah, can be asked some questions. Still work for the world champion. He's also running a little low on time now. Tough fight here in the first round. Yeah, very tough. And we see that uh, the situation that Ter Sakyan is in, it's not, not ideal. Yeah, that he's under pressure and he has very little time on the clock. But thanks to the 10 seconds increment, he, he keeps the game alive. And I know it that as a player, when you feel that you are better and you, your opponent is about to lose on the clock, it's so frustrating when the game keeps on going, yeah, because you, you just get very nervous that uh, how do I finish my opponent off? <clears throat> and uh, Ter Sakyan got already the rhythm, yeah, of, of these 10 seconds and he's very much into the game. And also the momentum is on his side. He took the first punch from the world champion, managed not to collapse, now as an equal position. It's a little easier to play than it used to be. So he should be feeling good and full of energy now. Still, it is Magnus. It won't be easy. It's never easy, yeah, of course. But now black face is a very tough decision, and that's why Magnus yeah. is taking his time. That should he? I mean, what is the right way? Do you keep the queens? But if you go queen g7, for example, then all these queen f4 checks d6 or d6 immediately. Things are opening up. Black king on b8 will also not feel very secure. Mass messy stuff. Yeah, the most pragmatic seems to be to take here. It feels like at least we can't be worse. But he's probably trying to evaluate if he has enough winning chances here. Some over 48. Yeah, it's, it's a safe choice. Yeah. And it still feels like Black is the one who could be better. But yeah. uh, wow, he goes for the end game. Takes, takes, look, e8. Asking this bishop directly. Yeah, but why D6 goes is D6? Possible, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because of the checkmate idea, look for look f8 checkmate, you can't take the bishop. And after king c8, white has some some ideas with the bishop also. Bishop d5, that looks slow. Yeah, computer doesn't like it. It was yeah, maybe d7 and bishop takes b7, but okay, bishop d5 on the board. Let's see what happens. c3. Yeah, this yeah, is good news for Black now. The, the bishop is misplaced, the, the knight yeah. is strong. Yeah, this was the wrong direction. The bishop no longer controls the c pawn. Also, it doesn't really support the d7 pawn, the d6 pawn, because it can't give a check from this diagonal. Yeah, rook f7 played. Yeah, that was the idea that the rook f7 rook gets behind the pawn with rook c7 check, but suddenly it does not seem to help because rc2 and then knight c6 will be the winning idea that you will be able to close the c file with knight c6. Yeah, why needs to sweat something? Rookie one is also there. It looks like this is just not enough firepower. And it's on the board. Rook c7, king d8. It's game over. Knight c6 or rookie one is coming. Yeah, wow. I mean, so exactly at the moment when we felt like white is about to survive, then one mistake and it caused the game. And he did resign. Tough fight in the first round for the world champion, but he does come through. It's also just just when we were praising, yeah, the momentum is on his side and so on. And maybe sometimes you relax a little bit, you think the worst is over, and boom, there it is. After king c8, okay, it's not easy at all, but the bishop had to stay here. Rook f4 was the best move also. Threatening bishop takes b7, followed by rook takes d4, and black just doesn't have any advantage. What's okay, I was calculating this line. I was thinking that c3 is the point from black side. Yeah, that's the move that you worry about. But that this works out for a ah, and c2 rook. Check. Is check. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So there's no rook c8. Yeah, yeah. It's a draw. White is even better, but it should be draw. 
Anyway, Magnus Carlsen wins in a tough struggle. Let's have a look around. Hikaru Nakamura is still suffering against Tabatabai. But I'm telling you, Hikaru, he doesn't he doesn't lose end games like this. He's seen worse. Yeah, definitely. And wow, this is not very tricky because after G4 you have Luke E3 check, and after King F5 you have Luke F3. Yep. However, then King F6. King f6 and bishop f5. This might be checkmate. It might not be the right way. How do you survive this? Let me think. Well, g4 Is on the checkmate? board, okay. <clears throat> yeah, look a check. Bishop b8 check, bishop f5, and. Yeah, look bc, bishop e6 check. Lose I'm winning the, the rook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's still so tough to. Defend this, then you you can also go for d3. Yeah. Yeah, probably this is the way to go. But still, I mean, with the black king on the stuck on the eighth rank, king on g8, there are all kinds of mating ideas. D3 on the board. D3 played. Karo's already wondering if Tabatabai will be able to save this. The d board is running. <laughs> yeah, it's very important because after rook d7. Black goes d2, and for example, after the same idea like king f5, yeah, rook d7 played, then king f5, rook c5 check, you start checking. Yeah, it's like in rook end games, you give checks from the long side and you somehow survive. Yeah, wow. I mean, how can white even ask questions? Yeah, black will push the pawn to d2. It is not better. Should, yeah, he should try to make a draw. g5, now we can take, and if we want d1, and bishop takes g5. Okay, and then that uh, uh, takes h6. Sorry, yeah, in g5 h6. I mean, rook e3 check, we always go king f5, yeah. so we just ignore the trick. It's, it's tempting, but it doesn't do anything exactly. And if we give checks from the side, yeah, rook c4. I ah, and then rook I takes can f4, take here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the board, Hikaru is very sharp. He, he feels like if he already got uh, so far, then, then he doesn't want to lose this for sure. Oh, yeah. He's, he's not losing. Yeah, king e5 played. Rook f4 is still possible, but gh6, these aren't very pleasant pawns to deal with. I'm not sure if it's lost, but it looks dangerous. Like, takes and I don't know. Look at then rook f8 and just sit, yeah? It's probably a draw, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, it is a draw. This d-pawn is too much of a distraction. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. Um, King e6 played. Yeah, he played bishop b2 check. King e6. What does he want? Rook d4? Yeah, he goes rook d4. Also draw. Takes, takes, bishop c2, bishop e3. Draw. Yeah, very systematic. I mean, unbelievable defense by Hikaru. If you would have yeah. asked me after the opening, after bishop b1, if, if there is any chance for Hikaru to survive this game, I would have said no. But here we go. He saves it. Yeah. You can even take here if you are in the mood. And take here, queen your pawn, <laughs> yes. and sit. He goes king g seven. Yeah, okay. Now it's it's a dead draw. It's a dead draw. Yeah, I mean, why does the, the wrong bishop? So yeah, black. Why really can't do anything? <clears throat> g six. These pawns never move. This is this is over. Speaking of over, bunch of games are over. <clears throat> Yarshish of Duda. Wins against Idani Puya, another very strong Iranian player. Maxim Ashila Graf, reigning Blitzwear champion, makes a draw against Vladislav Kulalyov. You've mentioned Nepomneshi beats Pensulaya. And Mamed Yarov draws against Nikita Petrov. Yu Yang Yi beats my friend Srinath Narayanan. He's playing chess himself, the coach of many of the up and coming Indian stars. He used to work with Nihal Sarin. Now with Eric Aisi, a rare sighting on the chessboard here, but lose to Yu Yang Yi. Artemiev beats Dura Bailey. Dubov beats Darda in the DD versus DD battle. A lot of strong players in this field. Your, I should say, former countryman, Richard Rapport, is still. Still in action here against Vachidov. 
But he's winning, no? Three pawns or Yeah, it seems pawns. like it should be winning. Yeah, with the uh, with the three pawns, the bishop on f5 controls the b1 square. That's it. It's an elemental win. It it wasn't an easy struggle, but it looks like Richie is on the right track. Yeah. How's he? Is he a rapid specialist? He has an incredibly high rapid rating. I can't recall him play, having played in that many rapid events, but it should suit his his style and his natural talents. No, the time control. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he haven't really been active in all these uh, World Rapid and Blitz events. I believe that his last one was in uh, Riyadh 2017. I played with him there together. So ever since he did not participate, on the other hand, he does have experience in the rapid blitz time controls from the Grand Chess Tour. Of course. Yeah. Will be very interesting to see how he performs because, yeah, as, as you said, it suits him perfectly, this, this kind of rapid and blitz time control. Because bishop b1 here, just to make sure there's no bishop a2, b1 queen. You probably know this. If, like, Bishop a2 was allowed, and black queens, the three pawns versus the bishop, that's a draw usually, right? If the king is close enough. Yeah, but black has also this bishop f7, bishop g6 idea, so that's why Richard is now running with his king towards the king side. But hang on, after bishop f7, how do you react? Just king d2 or king... Yeah, yeah king and d2. then bishop g6 takes, takes, and king takes. c2, that's it. King c2, yeah. <laughs> so just in time, it's in fact a move pen move position. I can try to go here, but it doesn't feel like he has enough. Well, you could have even played the move G3, yeah, just to stop. Yeah, maybe I should. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. And then we have F4 check and or H4 yeah. check and pick up everything. Yeah. In the game, Black opted for Bishop C4. He was trying to go Bishop F1. However, now Richard is just pushing his pawn forward H4. Now just King okay, C3. Now it's three and, yeah. and that's it. Last hope is to miraculously get these two pawns and once again have a bishop in wrong H pawn, but there's no way to, to get that at all. Yeah, not at all. And what else do we have? So here it's a clear win. And Grishuk is a piece up against Mustafa Yilmaz, but white pawns look pretty nice. Yeah, very tricky strategical position. Yeah, the pawn on d6 and this, this locked character, black doesn't have enough space. Let, let's just see the last two, three moves just to understand. Uh, aha, so white activated the rook from e3 to h4. All right. How did they get this? Sorry, I'm just curious. Okay, this is some sort of theory. 92, f4. He just sacrificed a piece early on. For yeah, looks like very beautiful compensation, as we said. Yeah, it is beautiful, but it's uh, it's not easy to. I happen to know this from very old times. Analyzed it, I think, like uh, too, six, yeah. seven years ago. I also got very excited that wow, this is fantastic. But against computers, it was not easy to prove anything at all. Yeah, I also vaguely recall here looking at ninety-five here. <laughs> but yeah, Grishuk, the three times Blitz World Champion. Loves loves this event, takes it very seriously. And I'm always happy to see him, if he's in good shape, to see him up there. He's, his chest is so deep, he's so passionate about Rapid and Blitz, his preparation is always great. I love to see Grishuk do well. Hope he can. He can yeah, let's be see on the top order. Yeah, let's see this final position. Look H4, look G7, look F4. They repeated some moves. Doesn't look like Black can win this. No, there are no breaks. Like maybe it's just a draw. Yeah, because the problem that knight g6 runs into look f6. But on the other hand, can't you just put the knight on d7? I mean, maybe you can put the knight on d7, block it like this. But no, Grishuk just well, repeats. Yeah. Very what's, strange, but hang on. I mean, next? knight d7 followed by bishop g6. This doesn't look bad for black at all. Okay. I'm a little bit surprised that uh, he did not try this. Mm -hmm. I mean, hang on, how many times did they repeat already? Looks like there was some moving back and forth. So let's see, bishop e8, rook h4, rook g7, rook f4, rook f7, one. Aha, but the, so he played the move rook f7, but he still has the chance to, to avoid three for the repetition. Yeah, it's only the, it's only the second time if, I, yes. if my count is right. So 
One, two. He could still play out. Yeah, because he's such a fighter. I mean, I just can't see him. I mean, unless he feels that otherwise he's risking too much, which I don't don't feel yeah, like. No, it's but a the draw. game disappeared, so it yeah. had to be a draw. Yep. Yeah. Broke a seven draw. Yeah, I just didn't think it was better. Nakamura also drew after, yeah. A trademark defensive effort, getting ambushed in the opening. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening in in these four E3 lines. We could only touch on briefly. Yeah. Tabatabai blitzed out until here, at the very least, where Nakamura went Bishop B6, which was a mistake after Bishop B1. He was in deep, deep trouble, but managed not to collapse directly. Went for this incredibly unpleasant endgame, but still an endgame where he did get checkmated and held it with his typical resilience. No easy, no easy first round games here. Magnus Carlsen did come through against Teresa Akian. Let's see if we still have a running game for you, Peter. Not a lot. We have Sabino Brunello, which I mean no disrespect. Why is Sabino 2725 in rapid? Like his classical rating is, I don't know, 2530, something like that. His peak, I think, was 2600. How is he 2725 in rapid? That's very high. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, 2725, he is like top 20 in the world or something yeah. like this. Uh... I don't know, maybe some weekend tournaments in Italy, which he's crushing all the time uh, by with 100%, it, it could maybe explain. Or maybe just, just one weekend tournament he crushed and he didn't play so much rapid, because most guys, I, I honestly don't know, we'll, we'll find out, but most guys that aren't in the very top where they have more of these high-level rapid events, Grand Chester and so on, they don't really play a lot of ra rated rapid events. I, I can't recall. When I played my last rated rapid event, okay, I don't play much. But in general, there aren't that many. Yeah, there aren't. And uh, okay, Sabino is, of course, a very nice person. He's a teammate of mine from Padova, in Italy. Always a pleasure to play with him in the same team. But yeah, the 27 25. I'm very is... nice too. I don't have 27 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's see how he will play this event. That, that will tell his real strengths. Yeah. As for the position here, I guess white is active enough to give checks. No, this pawn is so strong, black is never in any danger of losing. But I don't think black can win this either. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like queen e7 check. King b8 would be like a threefold repetition invitation. Yeah, because, yeah, king a6, you might. Wow, but what Hang happened? On, something happened. B5. B5, what kind of B5, B5? B5. okay. Okay, wants to give this check perpetual. Ronaldo doesn't allow it. But are we losing the pawn ending? My my counting skills are not great. But what is this? But I mean, this okay, king d5, king f3, king d4. We can't lose with black. We just, we can win, yeah? King e2, king e4. Can you win? <clears throat> Maybe, Maybe not. <laughs> but... It's close. And g5, Oof, yeah. Barely. Okay, white doesn't want any of this. Also doesn't need it, frankly. There are too many checks. <laughs> of course, yeah, it just uh, should be a dead draw. Yep. And this is the last game running. Really? Yeah, okay. Yep. Interesting. Off the first round. Yeah. Mm. One, one thing we have to mention about the format that uh, usually there is quite a long break between the runs. Yeah, this is... Uh, Good for the players because after all these exhaustions, wow, look at this computer says that queen b2 check. Now the king can run to f2 and then go e2. Maybe black is winning. Sabino, come on. 2725 coming through. Exactly. Endgame technique and the endgame wizardness by Sabino. Yeah, king e2 because after king f2, we are also setting queen take gc checkmate. On the board, on the board, Sabino. Yeah, of course you try this even if you're not sure if it's winning. But it is. Wow. The yeah. queen end games are always very tricky. And this e-pawn gives the chance for black's king to hide behind. Yeah. 
Queen and Games, as I say, are never about the number of pawns, but about the quality of pawns. So if you have an advanced passer, it's such an asset. It doesn't matter if you're pawn down or whatever. Here. Sabino Brunello grinding it out. I should mention, as I said, it's the last game running. It's the last game running in the open section. There is also a women's section with many of the stars in action. Kostenyuk drew her game. Lachno lost her game. That's a big, big upset in the first round. No, but hang on. Madelka. Ah, it's a bishop on a7, not on rook. I was like shocked. What is it was happening? A rook what? you can take, but exactly. <laughs> it's just a bishop. That explains. Tan Chong Yi is playing <clears throat> Goyachkina, Zagnitze. So yeah. I, I don't think it's see one of the, one of the first or times. Fun, but most of the other big names are there. Yeah, I wanted to mention that I think it's one of <clears> the first times that Goryachkina plays this uh, rapid blitz event. And I'm very interested to because she was fighting for the crown. However, she lost now the candidates match. She's out of the yeah. cycle. So it's absolutely understandable that she wants to focus on this event. We have... Okay, this position looks drawn. Yeah, one of the Local heroes and stars. I think won the the silver medal last year. Maybe so. Oh, she won the event. She won, she won the, the rapid, and then in the blitz, she won silver. Was this or she she crushed the the whole thing? I, I might misremember. But yeah, drawing her first round game, playing at home here, name to be reckoned with. Yeah, there should be some immense pressure on her, of course, after yeah. winning last year. Yeah, the expectations are very high. It's never easy to perform under such expectations, but Usually, if you get your rhythm, uh, if if you really settle in and things are going your way, then then the home crowd gives you the energy. On the other hand, if things go wrong at the start, then it's so difficult. Yeah, because everybody will be asking what's wrong, what is happening, and then then if you can't just focus on chess, you have other things in mind. That, that's that's terrible. I always thought in chess there's a home disadvantage. Because it's not like in football or handball where you get the energy from the crowd yelling, the adrenaline, but you do get the distractions and the extra pressure. So it's a little different than other places. But it could also be different depending on your personality. If you have your surroundings, your support system, it could also give you a piece, a boost. But yeah, I, I was never a fan. There is some game still on the screen, but it's not on our PGNs here. Maybe we don't have PGNs of of all the games, what's going on there? Yeah, usually there are... Maybe not all the games actions. are on yeah, the yeah, board. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the games. We can see the position. It's Rook Bishop versus Rook, which gets won quite a bit in practice, in theory. This is, of course, a draw. But never easy, even if you know the second rank defense or the Philidor defense. I was just recording this this video series, 100 Endgames You Should Know, based on this very good book by De La Villa in German. So now I feel very competent in all these endgames. I'll have forgotten all about it in two weeks again. That's my problem. But now, now I'm very booked up. It's a draw. Rook Bishop versus Rook. Heard it here first. Yeah, that's that's true. It's it's a draw. But on the other hand, in a practical game where your opponent with the 10 seconds increment can play on forever yeah, and test your skills from from every angle not not an easy spot however the big question is sometimes we have seen this uh, narrative as well that one of the players succeeds getting the winning position and then fails to to win it there yeah are all kinds of dramas this winning position is also far from easy you need to make like 50 very precise moves like forcing the rook from the first rank to the third rank with some zugzwang some sick bishop b3 and no one knows what we're talking about but yeah i i recently Study this. It was great fun. Black is doing fine here with the so-called second rank defense. This is one of the typical setups. Keep your rook on the second. Don't block it with your arm so we can see it and wait. And it's not easy for white to shift that. Uh, it's Manuel Petrosian, yeah? Yes, Petrosian with the white pieces. I just saw him in sieges. I have to admit, I'm not sure who's black. The, maybe the we need a better camera angle. But also, I'm old Peter. I don't know anybody below 40 anymore. There's so many strong young players I just have never seen. Yeah, that's that's true, of course. Yeah, we have incredible amount of players. 
very strong players, new faces, which we will be very familiar soon. But for the moment, there are some people who we don't know. 55 seconds for black. All right, with 10 seconds increment, this should be fine. However, this game has a potential to go on forever. Do we cover it? Is there enough excitement here? Can we see the faces? We see the position. The key is, of course, that black always has the stalemate. Let's say white goes rook g3 check, king of one, king f3. You go rook f2 check, and if the, bishop, the rook gets taken, it is a stalemate. So it's very hard for white to break this construction. Sometimes you can force black to shift it to the other side of the board, making run around a little bit. Even that, that's work. And he goes rookie four. He doesn't. Ah, but he, okay, he can go rookie two next move. So he doesn't blow up his second rank defense yet. I don't like messing with it though. Like rook g3. Mm, but yeah, it's still. It's yeah, still and uh, rook h3, rook h2. I mean, you are coming from, from the other angle. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it doesn't uh, matter. We can still go rookie two. Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can also you can maybe try to run out then with king f2, king e2, king d3 if if I insist. Also, yeah. <laughs> no, it's of course a draw, but with 10 seconds increment, you can you can go the whole the whole 50 moves here if you want to. We also have a chance to look at the playing hole. I mean, look at this, it's quite nice that everybody has his separate board. Looks uh, very nice. Yeah. I'm reading there were some troubles setting up the the lower boards, DGT. Um, so we don't have PGMs for all the boards. Maybe we'll get them throughout the course of the tournament. But they aren't there yet. Yeah, Rook D3. Okay, what do you do? If you, if you stick to your setup, then Rook E2, and then White will play Bishop E3. Then, then White will play Bishop E3. King F2 played. I understand it does not hurt you that much. It doesn't bother me that much. Put your mission away, like, <laughs> I'll go rook c2. <laughs> but then bishop d4, yeah, and then some rook gc. I mean, at least I tried to break up your defensive mounties. I understand. <laughs> I know. I know that you understand. And look at this. White is done to 12 seconds. Rook d8 played. Of course, whenever white feels that he needs some time, he can just move uh, four five random moves and get all the time in the world. It's so tough to defend this. Yeah, basically there are two mechanisms. One is keeping your rook on the second, and the other, he seems to be willing to switch. I'm a bit surprised, but okay. He still keeps the option to go rookie too. The other is to, if your king is already back on the back rank, is to pin the bishop from far away, and then white, in order to unpin, has to step with the king to one side or the other. And depending on what side the white king chooses, you go to the other side and run away. That's also a fairly stable drawing mechanism. But over the board, everybody knows these things. It's still very easy to get distracted for like a move. You have to stay focused all the time. Make sure you don't end up in a position where you don't have these mechanisms. So it's it's always work. Yeah, exactly. And the problem is that you have to keep on defending all the time. Yeah, white has the luxury of uh, making just random moves without any purpose. Yeah. But... Uh, it does not ease the yeah now rook is the check king f2 it's basically the same position rook but three. Some, here we go again yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah some little new twists but not really yeah well, he's defending as well he should hold i like how well black is dressed yeah i mean black suit everything he deserves a draw people people came dressed up i'm not sure what the dress code is nowadays i guess it's you gotta wear a shirt and can take off the jacket, but it looks like everybody's dressed up. Yeah, also I have mixed Manuel. feelings about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, also Manuel, he removed the jacket, but the jacket is is there on his chair. I'm always loving when when players are nicely dressed. It is nice, although I have to say, in this rapid and especially in the blitz. I would like it if like a polo shirt with short sleeves was allowed. Because sometimes if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt, you feel a little restricted in your movement in, in blitz. And I think we could have some sportier uniforms. Like even, even if it's a dress code, if there's a dress code there, allow them to dress like golf players or whatever, like polos. Yeah, I mean, Blitz is a different story. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there we only get the two seconds increment. Yeah, there is more drama in, in the time scramble. For example, here we, we have seen that both players were done to a little bit over 10 seconds. And now 
already one site has over 40 seconds. It just thanks to this 10 second increment. Yeah, this this might continue for a while. White hasn't made any progress, but he doesn't have to. He can keep making moves and maybe a chance will arise. Rook A8, the rook is waiting in that far away corner, which yeah, I guess is fine. And if white went king e4 now, then you can, if you want to, you can also go rook a4 check, but you could switch to this technique of giving a check from behind and keeping the bishop pinned. Then but away. honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that white is making basically almost zero progress. It's, it's usually completely different. I mean, you should try to go closer with your pieces yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's staying far away <laughs> yeah, he doesn't distance. want to pose any trouble to his opponent i mean <laughs> just keep him in this uh, belief that ah, it's an easy draw and then suddenly you start asking the questions well the problem is also when you start asking the questions around move 35 and then you reach this winning position it still takes 15 moves to win so you can very easily um not make it past move 50 there even if you get a winning position at some point yeah, I mean, okay, king e4, bishop d4, bishop e5. I mean, the, the bishop has to come closer. He's trying to, to take the rook sneakily, hoping for a king move. But most rook moves to not f4, e4, d4, or b4 should save the game. Yeah, he found one of them. Or h2 was bad too. Do we go now bishop b4? Yeah, it would be the... No, bishop c5. Okay, yes. Yeah, bishop, bishop d4, king e4. I mean, coming closer, rook b2 check, forcing the black king to the back rank. I mean, that, that should be the way to go. Yeah, I mean, anyway, bishop d4 and then... Yeah. But now bishop d4, he goes rook. I struggle with the squares. Rook h5 check, king e4, rook h4. And still not much progress being made no but do you see an arbiter actually the, the, who is writing down the moves i i don't really see somebody writing no also the dgt boards don't work so maybe they would just play ten thousand moves here because they don't have anybody writing or any dgt there you go there you score. go now the king will be forced uh now bishop no, rook a2 second rank defense is fine he's already shown us he knows that king f2 okay. he wants to run away yeah fair enough that's good enough too now you get shifted a little bit at least, and you have to start rethinking angles, king e3, but it's still fine, king g4. It's very hard to win this. Yeah, no, it it seems like it it I mean white is not making any progress. I don't know at which move. However, when we came, it was already like the second rank defense. So by usually judging that the second rank defense comes after quite kind of some at least 20 moves. Yeah, one has the feeling that they should be like move 40 already at least. It feels like move 60 already, but maybe if no one intervenes, the players there are not writing down the moves, they don't know how many moves they played. This can go on for, for a while. Arbiter, where are we at? Maybe the arbiters think, because I guess there was a plan, that there will be an electronic board keeping score, but there's not. They just play all day. Everybody else will wait. At 4 p.m. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> rook bishop well, is rook. I believe at some point somebody should interfere. Yeah, I mean, okay, it can't. You you see the gathering also. I mean, people are like, okay, come, <laughs> come on, on. What's going on, yeah. Back to the second rank. And also players know exactly that if nobody interferes, this will go on forever. <laughs> You're not getting a draw for here from Manuel Petros, yeah? Yeah, rook is three check. Okay, come on, rook is three check. Yeah, getting closer. And also force the opponent to make his this make up his mind. Does he go king d1 or king f2? Both look perfectly fine. Yes, it's fine for the moment, but <laughs> at least making making him think here. Yeah. I'd go king f2. King, king e4. e4 back. Again, king f2. 17th time we have that position on the board. <laughs> no, wow. king d1. Uh, king, king d3, rook d2. Yeah. <laughs> All right, rook h3. King c2. 
let's show the second rank defense even in close quarters. Rookie two check, also not a bad move. Yep. Yeah, played so once again. King d3, rook d2 is always what keeps you keeps you in the game. And Manuel should check it once if his opponent finds us. No, King d4, cunning. You can't go rook d2. But King c2 is legal. <clears throat> I also have the feeling that the, the, the defender side actually shows a lot of confidence. Yeah, it seems like he knows all the different techniques and he's saying, okay, please, sir. Bishop c3, rook g2. Yeah, and then king c4, rook g4 check, bishop d4, new yeah, direction. Rook g2, it's still the same direction. <laughs> yeah, the same story, but a different, <laughs> different plot, yeah? <laughs> Mir mirroring the position. However, I think Sotin is mentioned that the DGT board is fine, only we are not getting the the move. So the arbiter might ah, have okay, the, but if we're not getting it, why does the arbiter get it? If the file is messed up, then it's messed up front. Wow! What's he doing? Now he's trying to, to push his luck a little bit, but he's still in time, yeah? <laughs> still, he broke broke his setup. Ooh, playing with fire here. Yeah, now for example, rook before check. Yeah, this is dangerous. And this is what often happens, yeah, around move 100, like you break the setup a little bit, and all of a sudden, it's not so easy. Wow, look at this. Manuel Apple what, Manuel took back a move? Bishop. He Touch wanted piece. to put it on b4, but he understands this is not the right move, so he will move the bishop to d2. No, bishop b4 played anyway. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I guess you go rook h8 and then get ready for some side checks, but he had to give up his his solid construction. And now rook h8, bishop, I don't know the squares. Like, it's very hard from this angle <laughs> to look at. <laughs> yeah, but I understand are. your point. Yeah, rook h8 and then start giving checks. Yeah, that's a good idea. What square is that? e7? Yeah, rook g8, so you don't have bishop e7 stopping rook h4. Bishop c5, so we're gonna see rook g4 check, yeah. king d5. He's still in time now. The typical defense method, hang on, is that true actually? I mean, you can, I think, just yes. make a move like rook h4 as well. Yeah, no, it's ah, uh, then yeah, then bishop d4. Be careful, yeah. No, this is still, still a draw, bishop d4, king. A3, you yeah, run Yeah, but to down the to three side. seconds. Do you want to move yeah, yeah. King A5? King A5? It feels like he's drifting into lost territory now. He went to the side opposite the king. I think this is a winning position. Bishop D4. <laughs> exactly. This feels like a winning position now. But it should also be move 170 of this game. <clears throat> Bishop That's seven. amazing how often that happens. Yeah, like white doesn't threaten anything, and still somehow you play yourself into trouble. A king c6. A king c6 threatening checkmate. Rook a2 checkmate is a threat. Yeah, it's coming. King a4, rook b4 check should be winning. <clears throat> yes. And time is ticking. Bishop d6. It's, it's time to claim a draw. Yeah, it's the last chance. Also, I'm sure they made 50 moves. We've covered 50 moves. Yeah, this is winning. Yeah, <clears throat> that's it. I mean, if, if there is no interference from Arbiter, then I believe Manuel Petrosan is just winning this game now. Black should claim. They must have made 50 moves. Well, now Bishop C7. Checkmate? Check. Okay, last chance to check. Last chance to claim. He resigns. Why don't you claim? You gotta claim. You have to claim. Have yeah. Moves. Wow, this is shocking. Oof. But yeah, a lot of action. We still don't know who the player on the black side was. But it's such a typical story. No, he defends confidently and well for thirty moves. Then you lose focus for a second. Looks like white pieces are in random squares, and all of a sudden you end up in one of these losing positions. 
I should really have claimed that's maybe lack of experience playing these events. Yeah, the, too much, too much sportsmanship. Yeah, that he also cared about designing instead of just trying the, his luck. Yeah, that because it yeah. it did fail like there were a bunch of moves. Yeah, maybe even more than fifty. Sure. Anyway, that was exciting. We will. Let's see if we have pairings already for the second round. No, it doesn't look like they're on the screen yet. I mean, okay, we'll... they just finished, yeah? yeah? Yeah, fair enough. We'll take a little breather and be back with the action once we have the pairings here. Do you know what the rhythm is? I know from being there, usually it took a while till the pairings are out. Usually there's like half an hour break between between the rounds is that is that accurate well i mean i think around 20 minutes break i mean the the runs usually start in every 75 minutes in theory mm -hmm. of course uh, if there is a very long game like for example this one then it might mess up the schedule a bit yeah and if you have finished your game for example like 20 minutes before the this final game finished then you actually end up having some 40 45 minutes break as well it's a tricky rhythm because the breaks aren't stable and as a player you never know do i go for a walk do i eat do i wait do i stay close so yeah it's not so easy to find routines but it is still one event that most players love we love it as commentators and we'll be back with round two with magnus carlson richard rapport hikaru nakamura grishuk duda mvl abdu satorov nepomnashik fabian karana mamed yarov Yu Yang Yi, what a field this is. Can't wait. In the meantime, go buy my chessable course. It's a great course. And if you don't like mine, first of all, you're wrong, but there might be others that you will like. See you then.
life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. Sam Shacklin. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Linus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. Hare Krishna Pentala. Mm -hmm. the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Seriously? Checkmate! Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew! Welcome everybody! My name is Yanni Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. It's so much happiness.
Welcome back, everybody, to the World Rapid Championship that is being played in Kazakhstan, in Almaty. The second round is about to start. And Peter Leko, no easy pairings for the favorites in this one either. Absolutely. I mean, when, when you look at it, Magnus Carlsen against Eric Hansen, Zyugilov against Laporte. I mean, Zyugilov is now a player who has reached 2700, I think he's 2700 plus for the very first time in his life, but he was always very close to 2700. It, it was just a matter of time. Not an easy pairing as well. Aravin Chithamblan against Jan Nepomniashi won't be an easy pairing there as well on Jan. Uh, Mamedov Duda, the very experienced Ralf Mamedov, also very dangerous. And and all the others, Marty Rossian, Fabiano Caruana, Harsha Balatakoti against Yuyanji. And and so on. There is also the Indian prodigy duel between Ali Gaishi and Sadvani. Special attention on that board. Also super interesting. And what about Abdul Satulov? Abdul Satulov has won his first game and he's playing against Puranik from India. Yeah, also not a weak player. You can tell by this. Second half of the field, so many of the guys just don't have established rapid ratings. Like almost all of them, where you see someone with 2-5 something, it's probably a much stronger player. Yakuboyev against Fedoseyev. I don't think Yakuboyev is 2-5-73. Another Uzbek star who played a great chess Olympiad on the second board, gaining rapid rating very, very quickly. It's It's going to be fun. But of course, on the top board, we have Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, against Eric Hansen, the chess bra, the chess wrestling world champion. Although, I guess his colleague at the chess bras, Arman Hamilton, now that he's defeated Lawrence Trent in chess boxing, is an even bigger fighting authority there on Team Chess Bras. Do you follow the chess boxing that you think, Peter? Well, usually I haven't really been following, but of course uh, the the Lawrence Trent Hamilton match was something special, yeah. and in in a sense that uh, of course big expectations. We are very big friends with Lawrence. I was looking for him. However, what I have seen from Aman Hamilton was very impressive in the box ring. Just so determined and and so straightforward. Poor Lawrence didn't really get the chance to show his his skills. I'm I'm hoping that if we, we did see the tweet from uh, Lawrence that he, he takes it very seriously and he wants to continue. I hope that next time he will have much better luck. Yeah, it's would be a pity if we didn't get another chance to see Lawrence get punched in the face. I, I'm very much hoping for a new edition. Um, there we see Eric Hansen with the black pieces against Magnus Carlsen. Hmm. They've played quite a bit recently. They also faced in the Champions Chess Tour, where Eric, and I think this is quite impressive because he's also not very active in classical chess, mainly focusing on his streaming and <clears throat> business. But he's still extremely competitive with the world top in these uh, Champions Chess Tour events. Didn't look like a target, really. Played some good games there. So this is a serious pairing. Well, there was a game when he upset Magnus uh, with, with uh, Chigor in uh, Spanish. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I remember because I was commenting on the event and also on the game. He did beat Magnus in one of the games with the black pieces. So uh, it's, it's something that Magnus definitely has in his mind. Yeah, now we see Goryachkina on, I guess, the second board of the women's event. Game's about to begin there. I mean, on, honestly, I believe that now that Goryachkina is participating, she is the heavy favorite. I mean, in my mind, I can't really imagine the, the tournament not being won by Goryachkina. He's just, in my opinion, like a 2600 uh, super grandmaster. And uh, it, it looks, of course, there are all these uh, rapid specialists and, and there are many very strong women players there. But I do believe that she is, she is stronger than the rest. What is your take on this? I'm not sure. I can't quite evaluate the strength of the Chinese players who've looked tremendous in the candidate cycle. Tan Chong Ji, I'm not sure if we have Lei Ting Zhe in this field as well. I actually haven't seen her name. I'm not sure if she's playing. Other than that, I don't know. I agree. Goryashkina seemed stronger 
in in classical slightly stronger than the others, but the experienced ones, Lachno and Costenio, they're always near the top. And <clears throat> I'm not sure if there's a clear if there's a clear favorite. We will we will see. Very hard for me to predict. But yeah, Goyashkina has of course looked impressive playing in this Russian super final and also just with the classical rating. Gonna be interesting. We have liftoff in the open section. Magnus Carlsen plays 1b3, as you do nowadays, following the great Adiban course, 1b3. Is <laughs> and f3, <laughs> move, right? <laughs> and f3. This is actually a normal move against Bishop G4. Bishop G4 is clever, just trying to fight against knight f3 or e3, which he could take. But f3 looks very, very ugly. But there's some method to the madness. The pawn can still go to f4. If bishop h5, then white could think about some knight h3, knight f4. It's, yeah, quote unquote theory in as much as it can call b3 openings theory. I think that we retreat the bishop to f5. Yeah, bishop f5 is uh, playing some because. Some people like. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, exactly. There was a game between Eli Gaishi and Vincent Kaimel, I think, with e4, d takes e4 in uh, one of these uh, champion chess tours. Yeah. It's not winning exactly, but it's, it can lead to very interesting games if White sacrifices the spawn. It's not Magnus's style, typically. I wouldn't be surprised if he transposed to some sort of bird opening now with f4, not f3. Curious. Yeah, I mean, sacrificing the pawn with e4 yeah, on one side, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Pe people are claiming that, okay, we play rapid and blitz games to have fun on the other hand. Yeah, and e4 on the board. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, Magnus wants to have fun, wants to entertain the public. Let's see, d takes e4 has to be played, basically. No, if, uh, if already white is ready to give the pawn, then let's take it. Yeah. And the point should be knight to c3. And then after knight f6, I can't recall how the game went some queen e2 or something, you know, like... Uh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this queen e2 is the typical stuff. I mean, it does feel very risky for black, but on the other hand, okay, one could also claim that pawn is a pawn. Yeah. And black but... could also think about a good way to to give it back. I can't recall what Vincent did. I think he took it pawn. And computer was happy for a while, but the position was very hard to, to keep under control. Yeah, it was a complex fight in any case we can see that eric hansen is not that familiar yeah he's taking his time is he considering just to retreat the bishop to g6 it feels feels wrong i'm not sure if it's terrible but it does feel slightly wrong. is it how do you react to bishop g6 i don't know nine is three and then i take the pawn already <laughs> And then, because the, the bishop on f5 is kind of loose, like you also uh, told this knight cc queen e2, and then this bishop on f5 was always hanging in the air. I mean, now maybe I can just take on f3 and go c6, yeah, play the Karakhan spirit. And then c6, e6, knight f6, or you're gonna go knight f4, h4, and target my bishop like this, yeah? I might do that. Yeah. Yeah, not easy. And he's played bishop g6. Whoa. Let's see what Magnus does. He takes Re d5, respect. also move on c 3 I mean, I think it shows respect to Magnus, yeah? That, okay, so Magnus wants to sacrifice the pawn. Let me show high class and, and just hit the bishop to g6. I'm not sure this high class. Take the pawn. <laughs> yeah, but at least it signals high class, yeah? I, I don't claim that it's a high class, but... It signals uh, fear. It's, it's a psychological battle, after all. That's out of book after bishop g6. Let's see how he reacts. He could also go knight c3, just protect the pawn. Wow, but, but I also feel that we, we should suddenly jump to the Mamedov against Yashishtov Duda game because take a look what kind of what kind of position is this? Do you know this position? Looks like they finally refuted the Berlin. Well, at least created something that we also call fun, yeah? It's uh Bishop this F1, I've Bishop seen a bit of a sideline. Of course, usually the pawn gets taken. Should be seven, knight c3. And f6, very ambitious. I think usually people do something like castles. Yeah, but if black would castle, we would not be commenting on this game at all. We would just ignore Never. it. Yeah. However, after knight c3, black protected the pawn on f 
on, on e5 with f6, and then after d4, knight f7, we get this position, which immediately hit me that, okay, we have to come and at least talk about it for, for a few minutes. b4, <laughs> what an anti-Berlin position. I have never seen it before, at least not in a tournament game. Yeah, why is the pawn down? But it looks uh, somewhat scary. Black can't easily free himself. e4 is not there. e takes d, you never want to do. b5 could happen. Very weird position. A6, rook B1. Ralph seems to be in book. He studied this. Um, I have no idea what's going on. Let's say we castle. Yeah, castle, then probably just A4, yeah? Yeah. Gain more space. Castle's on the board. Jan Shishtov Duda. Also no stranger to rapid time controls. Has had some very strong results in the Champion Chess Tour. Also won the World Cup, where you usually need some rapid skills along the way. Yeah, such a sharp tactician, great defender, very great counter-attacking player, very, very resourceful. And let's not forget, when was this? They had this year where in the World Blitz Championship, basically it felt like him and Magnus were winning every game for a stretch. They were. Uh, Magnus was half a point ahead and Duda kept winning and Magnus kept winning. It was, yeah, very, it was in very St. exciting. St. Petersburg, 2018. 2018 already, yeah, like it's exactly four years ago. Yeah, time goes by. Yeah. All right. I mean, we don't have to cover now this game. We can go back to my. I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah. What an interesting uh, anti-Berlin we see there. This is and fun enough. Magnus went h4, threatening h5, h5 played, but that of course loosens up the bishop a little exactly. bit. Exactly. He takes d now. Queen d5, knight c3, and queen to d6. Not sure I'm in love with this ed, knight c3. But there is queen g3, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This still feels in the spirit. <laughs> Maybe it was bad for knight c3. Wow, but then after queen d6, how will Magnus react to this queen g3 check? Yeah, it's awkward. I mean, he can play something dull like queen e2, queen f2, but that's not exactly what he wants. Definitely not. Maybe put the king on d1. YOLO. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. I mean, some knight c6 long castles. You're not a fan? 94. No. <laughs> okay, who knows? Yeah, because it's such a crazy position. You can play knight g2, but that really impedes the development of all your pieces because you really want the queen there as well to go long castles. No, maybe underestimate this queen d6 a little bit. This looks... Eh. And yeah, he's played queen e2. What else? The big question is, does he pull the trigger on king d1? Or does he say, I'll play queen f2? But it doesn't look like white is better than black. It's a very stable structure. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. I mean, I have no idea. Usually I always uh, have some feeling, yeah, that what might happen in a certain game. But here that after queen g3 check, let's just put this queen on g3. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the point is, no, and, and there he is. He didn't do it. Well, knight c6, also logical, preparing knight e4 and long castles. Yeah, and long castles runs into bishop takes c2 tactic. No, bishop c2, we have knight b5 or not? Yeah, maybe knight e4. <laughs> there is this trick. And this is check. So there is a lot to jump, calculate. Hmm. Queen somewhere. I don't know. Feels like black is fine. We're not even obliged to take. Maybe we can. But exactly. Play some yeah, move for e5. What's not to like? Wow, that that was an incredible moment. Yeah, it looked like black wants to go queen g3 check, and white is the one who is thinking. I mean, do how do I want to react to it? And after queen e2, knight c6 banged out by Eric. New problems. What else could he do? Knight b5? Yeah, but okay, then queen g3 really comes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, this whole h4, e5 operation maybe wasn't, wasn't ideal from the world champion. Black pieces look well placed for, for this turn of events. Yeah, just a technical question, Jan. Did you open the life engine bar or not? Because I see that it's completely zeros. Is it true or not? See, here it is. All right, 
All right. And and long yeah, castle play. Confirms our feeling. Black slightly, slightly to be preferred. Yeah, long castle play. Then now I I mean black has all these tempting options, but knight d4 is, is clearly the most tempting one. However, let's calculate because now we, we know that long castle happened. What happens after bishop takes c2? Knight b5. Yeah, because that's the only move. And then queen c5. Do you have this move? Queen c5 or not? Oh, so violent. D4, bishop d1. Yes. It just I wanted to highlight, you know, for, for the fact that the players have to calculate this. For us, it's very easy to say something that it's a, it's a mess or whatever, but they really have to work out the, all the details before making up their mind. Hmm. It is a mess. It's a total mess, yeah. So how Magnus wants to react to Bishop takes c2? Because he can't say that it's a mess. He has to make a move. Yeah. What else is there? We can't take rookie one. Looks ridiculous for many reasons. Um, so this feels like the only move. Yes, exactly. It would be also queen slow, C5. but there is this queen c5, and the game gets out of control. What can white do? We could take king goes somewhere, let's say here. d4, there's still bishop takes, tc5, bishop e2, black wins. Exactly. d4 directly, bishop d1, tc, bishop e2. Black wins again. So what can he do? That's why I'm asking. Yeah, it's uh, it's such a puzzling question. You have a move like Queen C4, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe Queen C4 is queen the move. Three. Or queen is <laughs> three. Yeah. And Eric doesn't go for it. Goes knight D4 directly instead of Bishop takes C2. The quote -unquote yeah, it, it was move. just so difficult to understand, and people in rapid time control don't want to. Be bothered with all these questions. Yeah, let's just get over with it. It's a healthy approach. Black has all everything under control. No reason to go for this craziness, which might be strong. Might uh, You might blunder something and then you lose. Then again, as the outsider playing Black against Magnus, if you have a tactical shot, even if you're not sure it works, it's good to increase variance like that a bit because you might just be winning. And would have been interesting to see because now they'll just play a chess game. In long castles and knight to e4 blocking this bishop off of course black doesn't want to give it goes queen b6 honestly it feels much more like a fisher random chess game than a than the classical one no yes i know what we do 92 i guess get rid of this knight yeah 92 is logical and i believe that we would love to keep this knight no somehow do do we go e5? Let's go e5. This looks normal as well. I don't know what this is. Very random position. Yeah, this queen white queen on c4 is, is a bit weird, but also black screen on b6. Yeah, we special. attack. Ale. Yeah, and then also bishop d3. It might be very good for white. Yep. Yeah, 92 on the board. Maybe black has to be humble. I don't know. Take a play knight f6 or something. <laughs> Yeah, because I would love to keep the knights, but the white is also setting to go knight f4, yeah? yeah? So just something like knight f5 is met by knight f4. We can't allow that. Okay, we have to trade, and then the question, do we go knight f6 or knight h6, knight f5? That would be the other route. I go towards the center. I'd be worried here. I get stuck after g4 or something. But... <laughs> yeah. Of course, knight f6 is more more natural, yeah? Yeah. Also fighting for the e4 square so that white won't be able to occupy the center with d4 and whatsoever. Yeah, black still looks like uh, he has a healthy position, but of course, not punishing white for the liberties Magnus took. Eric's thinking about it. I think psychologically it's difficult because it looked like uh, the position is so nice for black. Yeah, so easy. Everything is under control. And suddenly you are 
uh, facing some questions and it, it's not easy yeah that uh, you you suddenly have to switch that ah there is after all some problem that i have to solve yeah yeah by the way rapport plays a very interesting uh benoni because i wonder whether it's interesting or bad what is your thing? terrible everything's wrong bishop is wrong the knight on eight is wrong i mean it's interesting in a sense that they'll get a complicated game but it looks horrible you're not getting b5 white has all the pieces where he wants them to be this bishop doesn't really have a role i don't know what this knight is doing here not a big fan yeah that, that's why i wanted to lure you into this position because i understood that this one you would be so much more happier to explain what's going on okay this is much more standard of course rapport is also trying trying to mix it but it really looks bad we have three rook ad1 bishop f2 bishop h4 e5 is always looming the only good thing i goes queen b3 goes the other way the only good thing about black setup is that he's making it tough for white to play e5 because all his pieces are are ready to put pressure on the d5 pawn but i don't like it one bit queen b3 also looks nice targeting this pawn i guess he will go rook knight 67 that's so passive Yeah, basically, I, as I see, Richard has this strategy of trying to play as quickly as possible. Yeah, he's six minutes up on the clock. On the other hand, White has such a dominating position and all his pieces are placed perfectly that I'm not sure that the clock situation will mean so much here. I'd be tempted to start thinking about G5. Like, it's uh, it's probably horrible. But at least the pieces will make some sense if White takes my G6 with some squares. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and after G5, can we go E5 or that's too much? Probably that's the punishment, but at least it becomes a mess. But no, Richard's not interested. Goes Bishop to A8. Maybe preparing another regrouping. But also one thing he once told me about chess that I thought was very interesting is he's always very worried that his pieces are on protected squares. If the position opens up, he doesn't want any tactics against hanging pieces. So he's following a strategy, puts the Bishop on a protected square preparing for a potential opening of the position and yeah according to that strategy he's doing well all his pieces are covered Bishop yeah too but, typical but i much more believe in what you have said at the start of uh, discussing this position yeah when you highlighted all these ideas of bishop going to h4 exactly i mean this is a dream come true for white yeah <laughs> And usually in Benoni's in these structures, black has too many pieces, which is why he's always eager to exchange this bishop either for the knight or sometimes b6, bishop a6, get rid of it. Well, now it sits there. It helps a little to protect against e5, but it's really not doing much. Rook b8, he's hinting at b5 at least. I mean, I mean, even this uh, strange little move like knight c4 back to a3, attacking the pawn on a6, making sure that b5 will never come makes yeah. sense on the other hand knight on c4 is so nice and you are tempted to calculate e4 e5 break but maybe e5 break is not not the right that's what he wants why it's spending all this time on thinking about e5 and then it becomes a mess where if it's not winning directly here i guess it's not then he can he can fight back but of course this is always a big big question in any of these positions too e5 if it takes d6 yeah, you just removed the queen somewhere. Maybe went to a7, yeah, to... Yeah, queen somewhere. And Say after, F5. yeah, yeah, f5. This is the typical break. No, like but, but White opted for knight a3, yeah. He just wants yeah. to... I mean, he knows that he plays against Laporte, yeah, and, and Richie is so tricky in all this uh, double h position. You want to keep things under control. Yep. No b5 for you. c4, just queen c4 doesn't do much. So I guess bishop back to b7. Exactly. But then you don't have any active plan at all with the black pieces. Yeah, maybe why just retreats the bishop to f1. I mean, just slowly stabilizing everything. Yeah, king h1 is often a move you want to play just to get out of any potential. Bishop t4 checks, so c4, knight c5, and there's a check later on. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I have to mention, Jan, that I'm so impressed with your speed of the mouse. Yeah, you seemingly in like two, three seconds, you are able to to hit all the 64 squares. I'm not sure if that's true. I've seen 
somewhat quicker players than me out there on the internet. I, I don't think Andrew Tank would be very impressed with my mouse speed, <laughs> but thank you. And yeah, Bishop back to B7. What else? Got to cover the pawn. All right, it's kind of set position. We can move on. I just wanted to yep. to highlight that. Yeah, there, Vichy is taking immense risks with yep. the black pieces. And what is Magnus doing? A4. <laughs> He's playing all over the board. Eric correctly took on E2 after some thinking and went E6. He wants to go knight E7, apparently. King B1, knight E7. Pawn to A4. Magnus just messing around. Also, this is not a structure where he can draw on his incredible knowledge of chess because this is nothing where pattern recognition really helps. <laughs> you don't see this in a lot of classical games. Um, I don't know what this is. Looks like black just has a good position, no? Knight d5, f6. Exactly, or knight f5. I don't know. Knight Somehow I'm also too, tempted yeah. for this knight f5, knight d4, or knight f5, whatever. Ah, knight, knight c6, c6 on a different square. That wow. looks, I don't know, that looks like... can't put my finger on it, but I don't like it. At least it's a surprise. I mean, I have, yeah. haven't had it on my radar at all, this move. No. Well, it could go d4 now. That's potential queen b5. But maybe after d4, he goes knight b4. He wants to provoke this d4. Then, then the bishop on b2 is, is closed. Okay. And look at this. Bishop g6, knight b4 combination, combo, hitting the c2 pawn. What a sneaky little provocation, knight c6. Weird position. Yeah, I, I actually still like black. I mean, I just feel like uh, with black, it's maybe a little bit easier because we don't play for advantage. We are just happy by stabilizing and uh, and Magnus is taking his time. I tried to get the queen, so of queen b5. That's... Yeah, okay. knight <laughs> b5, knight d5, let's play a Karo Khan. Yeah, it takes, takes. And whatever, move fun. But yeah, black, black is stable. Okay, yeah, say. bishop e7, whatever. I mean, just mm. comfortably sitting there. The world champion, almost down to five minutes here. And Eric, very impressive. I mean, how he handles the situation. You mentioned, yeah, he it's not his main profession uh, right now, but he's very impressive whenever he plays. Yeah, Agnes goes queen b5 directly. <clears throat> I was trying to get rid of the queen, so I thought now black at knight d4, but maybe it doesn't. Doesn't impress him much, takes and... Bishop c4, yeah? Bishop c4, yeah, that's on the board. Bishop d3 he couldn't do because of knight takes b3. So he goes to c4. Yeah, black is fine, no? Bishop e7. Bishop e7, yeah, it's a super solid uh, Karo Khan, yeah, let's, let's call it like this. Even the pawn is on c7, it's maybe a, more like a Scandinavian or what, but maybe also this, numbers, yeah. This ab6 is not a weakening, of course, you have double pawns, but they control more squares. The a pawn only controls one square, this guy controls two, so this is a very compact formation. Yeah, black is absolutely fine here, and will be a lot of work for Magnus to, to mix this. Yeah, somehow one also has the feeling that easy, simple moves are much more coming much more naturally from the black side. Yeah, and in rapid play with five minutes, it's even already not a rapid, it's a blitz game with five minutes each. Yeah, it will be very interesting to see if Magnus will be able to generate some play. Of course, we have seen Magnus hmm. handling different situations much more tougher than these ones, but will he create winning chances for himself? That's a big question. Yeah, I still bet on him. But what does he do now? And bishop c3, king b2, nothing looks obvious. Rook d1, yeah, he couldn't move the other rook because h4 was hanging. So he takes this rook here. And at least now the obvious moves have come to an end for Eric as well. And Eric has to, has to start thinking what he wants to do next. Okay, if you want to stick to the standard moves, then some rook d7, rook hd8 would make sense. Yep. Just doubling the rooks, bringing that rook from h8 into the play, and eventually also some c6, king c7, maybe also potential b6, b5 break at some point, kicking this bishop from 
Yeah, Magnus goes bishop c3, cements the position. Rook d7, bishop c3 on the board. Got a cemented rook h d8, looks normal. I guess king b2. Yeah, king just b2. To slightly improve, maybe one day the a file could open. Yeah, also, once move. the bishop is on c3, then already the, the plan that I mentioned with eventual c6, b5 is, is already not that good because white is ready for that break. I mean, I feel that the bishop will come maybe to a5. The, the look from e1 can go to a1 onto the open file. Yeah, so this bishop cc king b2 was a very nice, classy way of handling the situation. Besides Once the again. little tactic, yeah, you wanted to put the yeah, c6 on the board. You wanted to put that c4 bishop, in fact, on, on d3. Now there is no more knight takes b3 trick as well. So a lot of finesse is here. It's typical small improvement like this. Kramnik quote. If you can, you should go g3, king g2. It's always good. And yeah, it just gives you some more control over the position. Still, what's next? Yeah, what, what b4? Yeah, Magnus Whoa. goes b4. Uh, what I find a little bit difficult for white that his pawn on h4 is kind of an eternal weakness. Yeah, yeah? the so bishop annoying. on e7 is hitting it. You sometimes you have to think about this, but mainly the rook is stuck here, just staring at the pawn. Exactly, and the knight on d4 kind of hits the pawn on fc, so you can't really just protect it with g3. Still, Magnus determined to make something happen here. Goes pawn to b4. Not sure if he has a follow-up in mind or if it's just general space grabbing and then see what happens. Black then seven. let's go king c7 seven. with yeah. the same idea then. Yep, hinting at rook a8 and just waiting. Somehow this is seemingly a typical position where if you can make a nice little useful move and pass the move to your opponent, that, that's the ideal scenario. Hmm. Kings is complete. Your move, sir. Exactly. Not so easy. Because you, you don't really want to touch the d2 pawn, yeah, because this d2 pawn is the soul of white's uh, stableness. Yeah, if you play d3, then maybe b6, b5, the bishop on c4 will be very vulnerable. It's a compact structure. What do you do? I don't know. b5 looks like it's weakening as well. a5, b5, certainly not helping. Or even B8, but B5 looks fine. Yeah, I have I have no idea. Basically, it also feels to me like B3, B4 was played because Magnus didn't know what to do next. Yeah, yeah. But now he's faced with the same question again. I don't know. I mean, th that's why I said, yeah, he goes yeah, Rook A1. A1. Just hinting at some A5, A6 business. But even if Black played Rook A8, saying, okay. Still unclear what's next. Yeah, there is also now this idea. I wasn't really sure if white can play the move rook a1 if you can take on e4 now and put bishop f6, eventually bishop e5. That you can try to also set up this dark square blockade. I don't know exactly how to evaluate it, but certainly something that you also have to consider. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I'd be... I'd be scared on general terms, but if white can't do anything, it could be a very good idea. I still go okay to do something. You just want to be as solid as possible, yeah? Of course. But I have too much respect for Magnus. Yeah, I always feel like if he is solid enough, then just playing solidly might also not be the um, the, the right strategy. I, I would be tempted also to, to change something. But maybe that's also completely wrong. There is just no need to, to change anything. But to my eyes, this take on e4, bishop f6 looks just too You're tempting. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I don't see a move. I mean, they don't see a way how white really gets out with this king b2, bishop c3 construction. I mean, you can never play c3. Yeah? If you could play c3, you just win the game. But I, I don't see it happen. All right, in any case, Eric is taking his time. How's Richie doing? Yeah, let's let's uh, jump there. Still not uh, great. 
He complicated things further by going knight h5, allowing bishop takes h5 eventually. And e4, e5 on the board, knight c4 is a threat. Wow. This could end badly. Should end badly, frankly. I think yeah. It's such a classic Benoni getting crushed in the center. All white pieces are ready position. He was hoping to gain some counterplay here, but it just doesn't look in time at all. Yeah, the bishop on h2 is also a monster bishop. Yeah, protecting the f4 pawn, the king on h1, and the e5 supporting the e5 break. Yeah, Richie needs to do some magic. Yeah, b5 played. He needs to generate counterplay. He sacrifices Oops, the pawn. <laughs> yeah, he sacrifices the pawn with b5, but I believe white can simply take it. Probably will. Knight c3 takes b5, yeah, or c5, eh? uh -huh. maybe. Yeah, we need one more move, queen f3, and we win basically. But okay, mm -hmm. bishop a6, yeah, trying so to use to the pin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was thinking oh, that like maybe white can play queen a4, exactly, yeah, yeah like this. Takes, takes. Before so queen d7, like... knight c3, and even the end game doesn't look so good for black, yeah, because takes, takes. Looks totally lost. <laughs> yeah, d6 pawn, and, and then the stupid knight on a4 isn't stupid because it put, puts pressure on the c5 pawn. Anyway, he did take with the other knight. Yeah, I was curious which knight to choose. Knight ab5 also looks fine. It might even lead to the same position after bishop a6, probably queen a4 has to be played anyway, yeah? Yeah, tough spot for Rapport. And once again, Sugirov, don't be fooled by the rapid rating. This is a top, top player who will not like back for a draw or try to play it safe here. He just thinks, what's this guy doing? Yeah, not at all. That's not his kind of style. Yeah, he's very confident and he never shies away from complications. Yeah. Has defeated Magnus Carlsen in a classical game. And we see Ralph Mamedov on screen playing Jan Shishtof Duda. I'm always happy to see Ralph. I don't know him well, but it always cheers me up to see him. Just from a distance, he always looks relaxed in a good mood. And it calms me down to see Mamedov anywhere. Yeah, and he's also always looking for these tricky lines. Yeah, it's a lot of fun seeing him in action. Yeah, he's this typical blitz rapid specialist who has a set repertoire that maybe... Doesn't hit so hard in classical if people can prepare for it. But since he's already played 300 Blitz games in all of his lines, he knows them well, he knows the little tricks, and he can really surprise you, particularly in a form of way you can't prepare for him. Yeah. And now I also see that uh, Jan Japomiach is in a lot of trouble. I mean, can you just jump quickly there if, if you finish this game? Because yep. I think that the game might end pretty soon. Yeah, this position, Duda seems to be fine, has kept his extra pawn, hasn't run into any trouble. Has a pawn on d3, and let's jump to Nepomnesi against Aravind, who I also just saw play in the Sieges Open. There's this, I don't know what you want to call it, second row of Indian youngsters who are not Erigaisi, Prague, Gukesh, Nihal, but are still extremely strong, confident 2600 player Aravind. He's a little older than these guys. He's been around for a while, was a prodigy, I think, around 2014. Um, then his career slowed down a little, but he's a very, very strong player, 2600 classical and climbing. Plays a lot of slightly shady but tricky opening lines here. He chose the London system, which is, of course, a good line. And yeah, he's crushing he the just, here. Yeah, just winning a piece, and there is not, not much to talk about it. I mean, Jan in a lot of trouble. Looks like a marshal, but we're missing a piece, which is not good in marshals. Exactly. All right. So we can we can move back to maybe Magnus or Otto's. Yeah. Yeah. Things happened here, and I didn't like what Eric did. He went e5. Yeah. No. E5 is opening yeah. a structure, and this gives white targets to play d3. I don't know. F4, f6, b5. Now Magnus' position looks a lot nicer all of a sudden. Rook hf1, also he had to block his the view of his bishop towards h4. Knight f5 and a5. Looks like Carlsen 
made some progress here. Made huge progress and in fact uh, so just probably winning. So a5, king b5, c4 wins an exchange, but maybe black gets some compensation. But also with bishop c4, you are already winning the exchange, yeah? And this wins it without compensation, yeah? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, there is some knight e3 business, but doesn't seem to work. It's taken. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, we have, one, we have a check. Yeah, that's it. I mean, basically from a seemingly nothing position, Magnus wins in uh, five, six moves. But Eric contributed. This e5, yes. f6 didn't look right. And yeah. You were advocating for this idea, bishop e4. And bishop then bishop f6. f6. Yeah. Also, rook a8. Uh, I like just sitting. Computer is actually saying b5 was a good move here. Just not allowing white to do anything there. Yeah, and saying black is a bit better. Yeah, interesting. But but yeah, now the, the situation changed completely. Magnus is also up on the clock, Eric, down to his last 30 seconds. And now White can choose between all kinds of winning moves. Look, GB1 looks good enough because I don't think that you have to care about the G2 pawn, but maybe if you play... Yeah, it's played. Yeah, look, GB1. Yeah, this is just winning. Because King C1 check and then the Luke enters to A7, hits the B7 pawn and uh, it's it's probably game over. Siphony. Let's see if Rapport does some Rapport magic here. Maybe he does, yeah? There he is, yeah. End game. Still look terrible. Had to make some ugly moves, but he's hanging in there. Rook e7, knight f8, and all of a sudden there's no win. d7, rook takes d5. c pawn moves. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. You play, you play such a nice game, it looks like you're completely crushing, but your opponent's resourceful, tricky. You maybe miss one one key move, and all of a sudden there's nothing there, which could very well be the case here. Exactly. G4. And, uh, G4, yeah, it's it's a good move because you have to create Luft for the king. Yeah, Luft takes D5, F5. F5. I like this, restricting the knight and waking up the bishop. But it might not be enough to win the game. It's three pawns versus three. Exactly. Black has some H5 ideas. Know that we, we can try to trade everything. Yeah takes we can take and we're still in time it looks like to control the depot yeah but in worst case scenario i could have also taken on d7 and then take on h5 and liquidate into this right look look versus bishop position by the way also important Ouch. to mention that the f7 pawn gives a automatic draw yeah that this is a fortress that black can i mean the the stronger side can never break just you mean again, rock bishop yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah this is famous that you can never touch this pawn on f7 and you just sit and there is no way to make any progress. You just sit. You never move the pawn from f7. Which has other ideas. He goes h5, g, h, c4. Trying to provide some more distraction here. But it should end in draw now. Rook c7. Take stuff. Yeah, Richie is holding this comfortably. Yep. What else? Do we have going on? So many games here. For example, Fabi against Marty Rossian. How is that game going on? Because Marty Rossian is such an expert also in the rapid time control. We have a bunch of pawns for the piece. Yeah, computer seems to say black is completely winning. It's not obvious to me at first sight why it's so good. You have three pawns. Yeah, the clock situation. 1.30 for Marty Dossian and still one minute for Fabi. It will be a very interesting and very dramatic time scramble. The problem is White can't keep the rook active because then Queen C1 check, Queen F4 check, Rook C1 check would, would give a checkmate. Yeah. Yeah, Magnus has won his game. Okay, that's no surprise. I mean, Magnus was completely winning already. So, yeah, tough spot, tough spot for Haik where to put his his rook. Duda also seems on the way to victory against Mamedov. Kamli kept his extra pawn, has this monster on d3. Yeah, no, rook b1, bishop c4. Yeah, this is maybe the most interesting game at the moment.
What's the situation in Armenian chess now? You're much closer to it than me. Levon Aronian, of course, left to play for the United States. But it looks like they still have a deep bench of very, very strong players. Of course, Sagisian, I think recently at age 40, however old he is, he had his highest ever rating. Shows no signs of slowing down. And then there's a bunch of guys where I can't quite evaluate the strength. They all look very promising, like Matthew Rosian, Saxian, um, Petrosian, many others. What's what's the success quo there? Well, I think that now this incredible success at the Olympiad, nobody has expected it. I mean, uh, taking second place and having a real chance of, of taking gold. That yeah. that I think will give an incredible boost. Yeah, that uh, the, the players will get the confidence that yes, wow, yes, Levon did leave the United States, but uh, we, we can fight because after all, the Armenians have this fighting spirit. They are never afraid, never shy away from complications. And and this success will, I think, contribute big time for, for all the development. Roxy one plate. He's dreaming of A4, getting rid of these pawns. But even A4, you always have to watch out. There's not B A, Queen C4, Rook D1. Trick that every chess player, I think, has blundered. Hundreds of times in that chess career, somehow it keeps happening. Yeah, mm. also the question that can you go queen f2, rook d2? I mean, something like, okay, Fabi goes rook d4. Bit strange. Yeah, blocking his own queen. But he wants to protect the bishop so that he stops a4. Okay, understandable. Yeah, still, it looks slightly clumsy. Maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, queen c runs into rook d1 tr trick, yeah? I keep blundering the queen, I should stop him. No, okay, I mean, you are trying to draw some arrows. It's not a blunder. <laughs> it was a blunder. Um, yeah, the hike one. down to 20 seconds. Yeah, very tough. Yeah, That's rookie okay, one, one trying to prepare queen e3, I believe. Makes sense, yeah. But this, yeah, this bishop on c4 pawn on b5 construction is just so powerful, restricting white's activity. Queen f6, queen g5. Nice move, keeping control of things on the king side. And the end game is probably just winning for black. The white pawns are way too slow to get anything done. Exactly, and this pawn on g5 would, uh, would do such an incredible job protecting all, all the king side. Yeah, queen g5, the hike down to 10 seconds. Probably he will retreat with the queen to b2. But no, queen b2, rook d2. Queen b6 only move. He's keeping... Yeah, queen b2, rook d2 would be a terrible blunder. Queen b6. Yeah, looks passive, but still has to be broken down. Rook d2, rook g1, I guess. Yeah, or some checks. But how do you give checks? Mm. No, rook g1 first, correct? Yeah. Now, once again, a4 could be a topic. B8, so. Yeah, the big question that there is this trick of bishop f1, yeah, that you can try to attack the g2 pawn. However, then white will start giving millions of checks. Yeah, that's the problem. Hang on, rook d7, I can't go a4. I really want to go a4. I right, go queen then, 6 first. But then b and bishop b5 was there, yeah? Ah, bishop b5 was there. That's why it starts with queen c6, preparing it. Yeah, if white gets a4 in and breaks this construction, then he will be absolutely yeah, fine because then lose. any queen trade will be okay. Yeah. Queen e7, no, a4, you have to calculate rook c7. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hike wants no piece of it, goes queen c8. Looks like he's gonna save this. No, it's not so easy for Fabi to. Yeah, down to, to 10 progress. seconds as well. Now a4 is possible. Now it's possible. Yeah. We have a check. Wow, and with few seconds on the clock, this could be also a game changer. Also, black could lose this. If he loses a little control, the white rook gets activated. This isn't, isn't even a draw exactly. yet. And, and, this, and this end game is very rough. I mean, takes, takes, takes on b5. I mean, white has a risk free try for, for a win. Ideal for a rapid nice. game. I'm not even sure if he's going to take queen c5. Was lots interesting. Yeah, also possible. But, but I mean, I'm just so tempted to, to get rid of this construction and then just. Enjoy your disc free try. Understand. He goes queen c5. That's the young generation, right? Fearless. Yeah, they don't think about playing for two results. They just think about how 
How can I crush? Queen c7 and queen b4. Wow, keeping the queens, yeah? Yeah, white is out of danger once these pawns disappear here. Fabi keeps offering. Queen b2, queen d4. He will insist. Maybe we get to this one way or another. <laughs> queen c3, queen d4, rook c1, whatever. <laughs> Looks hard to avoid the queen chart. Yeah, rook b1, same idea. Should d3. Guess yeah, he just needs to watch out, not that he tricks himself with 10 seconds of clock. Yeah. Very easy to blunder something. Yeah, but okay, it's... takes, takes, look before. Finally, it will anyway get to this end game. Yep, here we are. Black should hold, but if anybody's better, it's white. <laughs> exactly. I mean, what a turn of events. Yeah, now, for example, King g1, King f2, King e3. If the king gets to e3, supports the pawns. If white could trade the rooks, I believe that it would be kind of winning, yeah, with, without the rooks. I think, yeah, four versus one is better than three versus zero, even often. <laughs> um, okay, two. I'm wondering if black should go h5. I'd be a bit tempted to go h5. Yeah, because if you get pawn to h4, you, you are blocking. And ah, and Fabi disagrees. Offers what? the exchange of rooks. Okay, six. Ah, because of this h5 idea. Okay, let's see. Whatever. I mean, and if h4, then we can no yeah, longer break yeah, easily. Not, yeah, yeah, this is the key. Yeah, this h5, h4 idea, and then g3, then you start attacking, and you might be able to block the pawns. Something. Okay, yeah. still still living on the edge, but might hold. And yeah, yeah he, he holds. Hike gives the rooks. Yeah, looks it too. Looks like another game that could last a while, no? Like, for sure, yeah, de definitely. Let's see what else we have. And Nippon well, Shugil of Rapport is another rook, bishop versus rook. Oh, finally another one! Wow. At least now we know when it started. Can can we just check out the the move number? Ah, uh, they've been at this for a while. <laughs> Let's see when uh, the move gets 51. captured. Move 51, they're already at move 73. That other game must have been like 70 moves. I'm not buying it all. That, that, that wasn't a 50 move thing. Definite, for, for sure. I mean, okay, Black should have claimed the draw. Yeah. yeah. Rook H3. I have a feeling Richie is well educated on these things. And I don't think he's going to get in trouble here. Yeah. He, by the way, he won against Gukash, uh, Rook Bishop, versus Rook. In the Champions Chess Tour in, in October, in the AIM Chess. I think at the AIM Chess event. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if white goes king d5, yeah, one typical technique is to just keep this bishop pinned. Now, finally, I'm happy that you have the board. Yeah, you want to mm. ask, but, but maybe we can still move on to something else before we get into I don't know. I want to spend the whole show on rook bishop versus rook <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting, yeah? yeah. It's great stuff. But uh, yeah. Nepomnishi. No, here's something happened. I mean, we, we had this position for, for quite some time already. Oh, it's frozen, yeah. Okay. And this here, is the big question. This is what I asked you earlier, no? Because usually three pawns versus bishop, I think it's supposed to be dropped. But this is a better situation for white. There's no wrong H pawn to worry about. But the problem yes, is that not. if I think that if you get king e3 and f4, you have real chances. But king e3, bishop e6, yeah? Yeah. Always you stop the advance of the pawn. Yeah, Far is getting ready to target them depending on where the white king goes. Yeah, maybe it's just a draw. Yeah, could easily be. Even here, bishop e6. <laughs> king g3 played. Yeah, now you cover the e4 pawn. Okay, yeah, e5, I mean, yeah. Yeah, or bishop c2. Yeah. Yeah, maybe because bishop c2 is easier, not worrying about g5. Exactly, maybe not not to bother. Yeah, king yeah, e5, g5. King five. It's also fine, bishop f7. Yeah. It's it's no problem at all. Yep, played bishop g6. And it looks like they're, they're done. <laughs> Hike in a hurry to give up all the pawns. 
I wouldn't do this. If you, you started, you, had, you were on the better side. You shouldn't give up all your three pawns and finish on the worst <laughs> side. At least capture the bishop with your pawns. Exactly. That's how I feel as well about such situations. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Let's move on. I did see. I mean, Dubo's game is broken. It's also frozen. stuck. Yeah, yeah. We've I mean, Ganguly. We have a chance to look at Sudia. Let's take a look. Whom is he fighting against? Kuparadze, the Georgian blitz rapid expert. Hmm. Kupanadze, Giga, Giga Kupanadze, and Sudia in a lot of trouble. Winner of the prestigious Thailand Open 2022, Suya Ganguly. But this is not the Thailand Open. Giga Kuparadze. Yeah, I mean... Just winning, no? Yeah, I mean, this construction is just hopeless, so we can move on. What about Manuel Petrosian loses to Sam Shankland? And here I would like to apologize for all the US fans. When, when I mentioned that Hikaru and Fabiano are the only players, no. Sam Shankland, Hans Niemann, and also Christophe Ayo are here to present the United States. And yeah. Sam Shankland is winning or has won his game against Petrosian. We can move on. Yeah, and I'm not sure if we should root for or be afraid of a Magnus Carlsen-Hans Niemann pairing. Anything could happen. Magnus might just not play. It's yeah, it's going to be going to be tense. It's the first time they're in the same event. Over the board since the Sinkfield Cup. So, all kinds of intrigue there. But I guess odds are it's not going to happen. Yeah, there are so many players, and I, I also don't like to speculate about the, this kind of things. I understand it's now a very hot topic and so on, but I prefer to focus on chess. <laughs> no, it's not happening, Peter. <laughs> 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 All uh, right. Look, look at this. Go go to Chapalinov, Christopher. You, I want to see Christopher in action. Also, uh, 2463. I mean, no. Might finish. not be his real rating, but White just wins here. Bishop G5, Knight F3 is good enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like he's so gifted. I, I I want to see as much as possible from Christopher, but yeah, this didn't work well against the very experienced Ivan Chapalinov. What else do we have? How's our boy Alexander Grishuk doing against Nikita Petrov, another strong, solid Russian player? Whose rapid rating might be a little low. Yeah, Grishuk is not winning this one, is he? No, no. And and then uh, this is a very tricky spot, yeah, because the first game ended the draw, then you draw another game, and you get into this mix of players who are very happy to make a draw against uh, the great Sasha Grishuk, and then it's so difficult to to start winning and get out of this uh, out of this mix. Yeah. Jordan, my dear friend Jordan, fun for raced. Didn't have a great event in Sitges recently. His classical rating went down a bit from his peak, which was around 2730. He is the winner of the Vikanze A group in 2021, after all. But he recently struggled a little over the board. He's been mocked plenty for his lack of rapid skills, mainly by Laurent Fresinet. But I think he showed us last year already that it's not true. That he's good at rapid as well. And is he winning here? I guess he's winning. And yeah, but it's tricky because you have to sacrifice the bishop for the pawn. Take, take, and then now you have to win by force. Seven, rook b2 might still be a draw. Ugh. Where's my new new phone rook and knowledge we need? Yeah, you start with rook a8. And black is not in time, yeah? Yeah, because now you can't get usually black so should you go this, to but himself. Then e2. Yeah. yeah. But then e seven, so you don't have time to create any tracking distance. Yeah, it's and it's the sh too short uh, side, yeah. Actually this pawn on a six is the is a big problem, but anyway, white got the rook to a eight. You don't need to collect the pawn, just push oh, it. Oh sorry, yeah, e seven. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's just winning. Good job, Jordan. Rook d two checking e seven. Also a winning position. Good old Lucena in the making. Yeah, now King E8, E7, and, and so on. Yeah, often this pawn doesn't really help you. It actually stands in the way sometimes of getting the maximum checking distance. But how do we convert? I think it's he's in time to go King E8 already, no? Yeah, I think you can just go King E8 and then push E7. There's always this check. 
There's no last ditch defense. Yeah, he goes king d8. Similar idea. Check is going to go king e8. Yeah, Dutch player is normally quite well educated about the rook end games. And yeah, he's going to win this one against a player. I have to admit, I'm not very familiar with. No, CP, CP, Cdipov uh, was doing very well also in the St. Petersburg 2018 uh, Blitz event. Ah, so he's been around. <clears throat> yeah, he has been around. Back then I didn't know him, but since he was playing against Magnus Carlsen on board one after, I don't know, round 11 or 12. Right, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, I recall yeah. it. Yeah, and I think it was some London, the Magnus one with the black pieces in some double pawn G takes F3 construction. I even have this game in my mind still. Oops. I mean, usually when, when there is a player who I don't know so much, if I see his game against, for example, Magnus, then, then the whole game stays in my head, yeah? Because it just, uh, my, my brain connects Cipido with, with that position, yeah? That's how it functions. Hang on, is your blundering? Computer wow, is not look impressed at with what he's doing. And we and get this King last leg defense, which is a draw. E7, now we get a check and we sit here. And this is a draw. Exactly, because without oh. the pawn on A6, look A1 would just win, but now the pawn on A6 saves the game. Look, B8. Barely. That's a draw. Wow, what a miss by, by Fun Forest and Cipipo is alive. Could just take here. No, this, I think, is just winning. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he stepped into the only position where the pawn on A6 actually does, does have black. He got careless. Can't be happy. Cipipo nodding there. And yeah, Rook B8 on the board. Jorn's bungled it. He's shaking his head. He knows what he's done. Yeah, I mean, spoiling this with two minutes, uh, 30 seconds on the clock, this will hurt Jordan. Yeah, because if he blunders in this kind of defense, when he only has like a few seconds on the clock, you can forgive yourself. But like this, it will hurt big time. Yes. <laughs> Deep thoughts trying to find a way. But I don't think the game even continues from here. Like Rook A7, Rook E8. King d6, king f6, there's no further progress to be made. Or, or hang on, am I blundering? Okay, one minute. Uh -huh. Rook b6 rook b8, played yeah. by Jordan, yeah. but okay, black plays rook a8, he's very happy with this. Of course, he loves to have the rook as far away as possible. Okay, he can of course correct with rook a6 anyway, it does not really matter. Yeah. It's just nothing to do. Yeah, well, I mean, rook a7 has to be tried in that position. And then black goes rook e8, king d6, and moves back with the rook to b8. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at, at least you have to test your opponent once once like this. Yeah, the problem is here, you get too far away from the pawn. Also, there after rook a1, you can, could have highlighted king e8. You can finally uh, sit with the king in front of the All pawn. Right, yeah? awesome. That's also nice. Yeah, I just want to win it, but we get some luck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bad luck for Jordan. And that's it. Do we have some? Because this Yasipenko game is frozen as well. So many games are frozen. Yeah, I know. Let's switch to the women's section for. A moment, there are still two games running, as far as I can see. Wow, Daniel and Elena is still there and, and winning a game now. And then she will mm -hmm. be probably two out of two. Yeah, now the legend. She has been around for a very long time. Yep. And Bela Kotinashvili, one of the many strong Georgian players here, winning her game against... Irina Mikhailova. No, it looks like the round is also coming to an end. So let's see here. Unfortunately, there seem to be some problems with the DGT boards. Many positions haven't changed for um, what feels like half an hour, which is unlikely in rep events. So the boards are probably yeah, frozen. Yeah. Definitely, there are some technical issues here. That does happen. We'll watch the end of this game. Then see if the pieces move anywhere, and if not, hope. We have even more. But now round. White is winning again. Because what happened? Is, uh, exactly. This is how I won against Caruana in uh, Dresden 2008. Olympiad.
Well, he this king f6. six. He should have went should back in rook a8. eight. Of course, yeah. Of oh, course. Wow, and he plundered this rook b1, rook f1. And then check and look a1 back, and that's it. You Oof. are winning the, you the lose file. You the tracking distance. Wow. wow. How does this king go? C7? King I d7 mean, king... or king c7? Yeah, yeah it hmm. doesn't matter, yeah, basically. Look d7, king e8, and then you always have a check already. Oof. Now let's see if you're, but okay, with this time situation, black will also simply you always win the rook. rook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against the computer, you don't win this, or <laughs> I think you you might win it if you practice, especially like how he tries to defend and you remember this triangulation and all the good stuff. But normally you don't win it, but against a human, you pretty much always win. Against wow, Peter Swindler, you'll of course win by resignation. But <laughs> actually, no, I've seen many top players resign this, which I'm always surprised by. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Joran's gonna win. I have no doubt. Wow, here we have witnessed that how tricky chess is. Yeah, that that this kind of look and games. First, it looked like this is completely winning. Then it looked like wow, this this will be a draw for sure. And then a few seconds later, White is already in a winning position. Oh, yeah, what a mistake, King F6, <laughs> allowing this. When yeah, the hard work was done. As you pointed out, even Rook A8 is a threat. Now you don't have to rely on. King eight is a threat now. You don't have to rely on checks. Exactly, uh, yeah. and then you just sit. Yeah. Very comfortable, okay. but a very big victory for Jordan. It it makes a difference if, of course, he succeeds to win it. We finally, Luke got to have some, but this is a hopelessly lost position. And normally, it doesn't matter psychologically if you mess it up and then you win. It also gives you a boost, like oh, maybe maybe I'm lucky this one, and yeah, it can. It can help as well. Queen d4. I think there are some suits from positions somewhere around here. Exactly. This is the, this is hopelessly rook lost. Yeah. Yeah. And and what a big uh, difference uh, does it make? Yeah. If if you win this game, you forget about this game automatically. While if you draw it, you will never forget about it uh, so, for the rest of your life. City Puff doesn't look happy with the overall situation, understandably. Goes rookie seven. Yeah, this is the hopeless position. King comes now. Your rook will just disappear eventually. Yeah, I mean rook g7, then queen h4 and queen h5. Ah, Jordan knows. Yeah, here he's he's back in book. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not so difficult. Yeah, forcing resignation. Yeah. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. Now the rook has to go far away. And blitzed out. Queen G1. Dutch players, they memorize this kind of stuff. Well, memory or just over the board, you can't. No, no, no. no. He yes. knew. He clearly knew the final maneuver. Good job by Jordan, or bad job by Jordan, but happy ending for Jordan. And there's Anish Giri trying to talk some sense into his countrymen. Um, but Jordan, this, this position was a draw, yeah? Like, <clears throat> no, no, no. <laughs> it was winning all the time. <clears throat> yeah, let's take a look at some results, yeah? Because I don't think that we have any interesting games running. The problem is it's very hard to approach the results because all the games are in one giant ah, they file are here. Frozen, so yes, they will be hard to find. But we do know that... Magnus Carlsen won his game. Jan Nepomnesi lost. No, sorry, this is mission impossible to find anything in this file. Um, no, I give up. Maybe Sotiris can put it on the yeah, yeah. screen. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have them in. And we do hope that somehow this uh, transmission will stabilize, yeah, because there are too many frozen boards. Yeah, we still get enough action that. The show will be fun, but of course, would be would be nice if we could follow them all. But hang on, we do see some results here. Let's take a look. What did Vashi Lagrav do? <laughs> I'm not sure. No, because here suddenly I see, from. yeah, for example, Mamed Yalov drew with uh, Yilmaz Mustafa. Vashi Lagrav drew, drew with Tabata Bayi. Mm -hmm. Nakamura, another draw. Slow start. 
against Vladislav Kobayov. Yeah, but this is the problem, and I think we have to talk about this because very important for the audience that they might not be familiar with this Swiss pairing system. Yeah, that Hikaru draw his game against Taba Tabay, which was a very tough pairing. Then in the second game, he gets Kovalov, who is also a very strong player. And Taba Tabay was paired with Vashi Lagraf. Yeah, that basically as a strong player, if you draw your game, it means that you will keep on getting very strong opposition, no matter how many points you have. It's a very tricky situation. Yeah, you need to score as many points as possible. It doesn't mean you'll get much weaker opponents if you have fewer points, which, yeah, not surprising since only yeah, strong for example, players Vincent, play, Vincent, look at this. Vincent won his first game and in the second round, he got paired against someone clearly weaker. Yeah, so he's not two out of two, but he haven't played against any strong player while the, these guys, they already played against two very strong players. Yeah, it's, it's the Swiss system. Yeah, but next round, Vincent will probably be in the second half and he'll play someone, someone very, very high. But rated. he already has Should the momentum. Yeah, he has two out of two. Yeah, it's uh, psychologically very important to get a good start. And I would also imagine he might be mildly underrated with this 2590 rapid rating. <laughs> well, when I saw the list, there were so many players over underrated with, with less than 2600. It's really shocking. Vincent Keimer. The German number one. Can't even call him a talent anymore. He's 2700 and he's knocking on the door. I know he works a lot with you, has finished his school now and had a fantastic 2022. We'll see how he fares in this event, of course. Yeah, and, and of we'll course, I would like to add, you know, that I'm very happy that he started with two out of two. So I'm not complaining. I just wanted to highlight that, yeah, this Swiss system is, is always sticky with the pairings. Sounded like you weren't happy. That he gets uh, gets all these putzers. It's very unfair. <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding. I'm yeah, now he will get Magnus probably. Yeah, just as a yeah. reward. That could be fun. Yeah, looks like at least there aren't many pieces moving on my screen. A number of the games are frozen. They will hopefully sort it out until round number three. We'll go on a brief break and come back once we have pairings and no. What's going to happen in round number three should be some fantastic pairings coming up now. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck and your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker, look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Linus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakhwari. Hare Krishna Pentala. to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.
Hi there. It's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... Look, it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just... Come on, literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go, alright? Jesus Christ. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. And so much happiness. John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.
Welcome back, everybody. The round number three of the World Rapid Championship is about to kick off. And Peter, my countrymen, have snuck onto the top boards. Looks like the Germans, Keimer, Bluebaum and Donchenko are all up there. This is going to be an exciting round. We're still working on getting the live games here. It should be fun. Exactly. Yeah. I checked out the pairings and when I saw that Bluebaum faces Jan Shishtov Duda on board two, on board five, Artyamiev plays against Vincent Keimer, and board six, Alexander Donchenko plays against Anish Giri. So really a lot of things to look forward for all the German fans. Yeah, all these three guys play some incredible opposition. Yeah. Uh, of course, for me, special eye on, on Vincent against Artyamiev. I have tremendous respect on, on Artyamiev, knowing him since he's 14 years old. And uh, we'll face now Vincent. Very interesting. Should be a great pairing. Artemiev, yeah, looked at some point like he was breaking through into the top 10 in classical chess a couple of years ago. He had some amazing results, took him to like 2760. Slowed down a bit since then, but especially in Blitz and Rapid, he's always a tremendous force to be reckoned with. Tough challenge for Vincent Keimer. Absolutely. And also we have uh, Yevgeny Tomashevsky facing Magnus Carlsen on board one. It's going to be a super tough uh, game for Magnus to win with the black pieces. If he wants to create chances against Yevgeny Tomashevsky, he really needs to take immense risk. But if he taking uh, so much risk against such an incredibly strong and uh, positionally, strategically sound player like Yevgeny, might be very risky. I'm curious to see his strategy. He might just play normal chess and then wait and see how Yevgeny will react. Uh, an eye, a game to keep an eye on, that's that's for sure. I mean, it, it will be very tough for Magnus to win. Yeah. Give us the games. Looks like some pieces are moving on some boards, at least. But it's... Uh, the, uh, yes, uh, I do see some, some action there. Let me scroll up. Maybe we have them already. Uh, Very confusing, yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. These big events with many live games are always. And you know, the big sensation is that Jan Yapomashi managed to draw that game in the second round, being pissed down against uh, Aravind. Ah, he held that together. Magnus is going for the, the Hippo time trusted weapon, but I'm not sure. Yevgeny will be all that confused by it. Although I'm a little surprised by his move, Bishop C4. I guess it's normal, but <laughs> usually, as Black has already more or less announced, the willingness to go E6, you don't have to have to ask for it, but maybe wants to sh make sure this happens. Yeah, and he wants to put Queen on E2. Yeah, kind of, uh, we already get the answer to my question, yeah, that Magnus is willing to take immense risk. Yeah, he's uh, giving free hand to Yevgeny. And, uh, well, it's, it's interesting. It's an ambitious strategy, but also a very risky one. Yeah. It's, it's a setup it's, that's easy to fall in love with. You go bishop b7, knight d7, knight e7, h6, and then have a look around. But after playing it sometimes against strong players, it's also not that much fun. Yeah, often you get some knight e2, knight g3, c3, bishop d3. And they say, yeah, congratulations, you played all these moves. I also play some moves. Castles rookie one. Why just has more space? And usually it's a bit better. Exactly. Yeah, this uh, this hippo is this kind of always very intriguing. Usually people love to play it in bullet or in a very fast time control, but in a rapid game with 15 minutes on the on the clock and with 10 seconds increment, if if you get a bad position, it might be very difficult to get out of it. Uh, maybe we can go back to the start to see the move order because how did Magnus actually trick Yevgeny into E4 structures because Yevgeny <laughs> is a D4, C4, Knight FC type of player. Well, so trick is strong. It looked fairly voluntary. Um, D4, G6, E4, D6. And yeah, if White wants, he can still play C4 here, of course. But I chose not to. Many principal guys do this. They say, okay, I'm a D4 player, but if you allow me to play against the Pirates, that's too good a proposition to pass up. A6, A4, typical Tomaszewski being very solid. Obviously, other moves are there, like bishop E3. And Magnus goes pop to B6. Not forced. Uh, you can play more classically as well with knight F6 or whatever. But he wants to mix it. 
And now b6, bishop c4, and that's the move which no Magnus haven't answered yet. Yeah, Magnus is yeah. thinking for three minutes already. Bishop c4, the move that you a little bit criticized shows a lot of strengths. The one thing you shouldn't do is knight d7 here. You'll you'll end up in some textbook normally. <laughs> <clears throat> That's but probably he won't. Yeah, and now we understand exactly that uh, Yevgeny would be very happy if Magnus goes for the hippo. But for the moment, Magnus is actually trying to play some kind of a peer. And that's why the move bishop c4 has such an effect on Magnus, because he might not be happy to go for the hippo at all. Yeah, and he's contemplating movers. We can start with bishop b7, or if bad things happen to him already. Or if he should just go e6. That f6 feels strange in combination with b6. Looks like you can get hit very quickly with queen e2, e5. Um, so what's he what's he thinking about? Well, th th that's the big question. Yeah, that finally he will have to play e6, but he doesn't want to. Seems like it, yeah. Or the board got stuck. That's the other option. Because here in blue bomb against Duda. Would Blue Bomb really think for five minutes after yeah, Pontiac yeah, is free? No, no, it's... I have my doubts. Uh -huh. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Well, since things are stuck, then let's just very quickly go through the openings of, of the games. For example, Vincent, Artyom against Vincent. Let's take a look. What happened there? Yeah, sort of typical Artemiev not looking for a theoretical battle. And he's played a lot of these now, 3b3 and then e3 or g3. Vincent also likes to do it, but usually he doesn't like to do it when there's, the bishop can still come out that early. Exactly. Um, he goes for yeah. different move orders like c4, e6, knight f3, d5, e3, or whatever. Knight f3, d5, e3, keeping his options a little more open. Yeah, then we see that Alexander Donchenko against Anish Giri, they play a very classical Catalan. Yeah, the, the board is stuck in the most... Uh, I mean, in the in the main line of of the Catalan, with I don't know, hundred thousands of games. Yep, you must have played thousands of those yourself. I I have contributed, yeah, exactly, <laughs> from both sides, mainly from black, but also from the white side. What else do we have? What kind of pairings do you at least? Let's have a lot of fun pairings. Demchenko. What was that here? Uh -huh. Abdul Sotov against Demchenko. I think Ademchenko was the one who has just beaten Yesipenko, yeah? So he mm, had a very good start. Yeah. He's part of the many players that were playing the Sieges Open, where I was last week doing commentary, that traveled straight from Sieges to Kazakhstan and are now here, just like Gilles Moussard was also playing there and is now part of the, the French contingent at the World Rap Championship. We should mention the one big name that's missing, or one of the big names, is, of course, Ali Reza Firuja, who has not played much chess recently, had a great outing in St. Louis, in the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz in the Sinkfield Cup. But we haven't seen him since. Where's Ali Reza? What's he up to? Yeah, it's a big surprise because it's always such a pleasure to see him in action and also in the Rapid and Blitz uh... Events. I, I do recall that St. Petersburg event 2018, that was his absolute breakthrough. Yeah, he almost won the event. He he took a medal. Then in 2019, he took another medal, I believe. I mean, uh, thanks to these events, actually, he became such a superstar. And then now not seeing him in action is somehow weird. Why not play it? It's good prices, it's five days, it's great competition, it's his time controls. It's surprising. I'm not sure what's happening now. I think we all, we all miss Ali Reza. Very much so. For sure. And let's take a look at some other pairings. I do see Eddie Gaishi is on two out of two because I, I have seen his name, which means that he has beaten Sadwani. There was a big, uh, big clash of, of the Indian prodigies in the previous round. I can't see him. Maybe I missed his... Uh, no, no. You already missed. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. not two out of two. He's up there. He He's... Right behind Abdul Satarov. Ah, here we are. Yeah, yes. playing against Bab Shanal, also just arrived from Sitges. Strong Turkish player, and yeah, got stuck in a very theoretical position of the Tarash French defense. 
the line that's supposed to be pretty rock solid for black. We'll find out. And Nihal Sadin plays against the Rapid Blitz specialist Kuparadze, one board below. Nihal Sadin also had a tremendous uh, speed chess championship and also global chess championship. Incredible what kind of results he has produced recently. Yeah, Magnus said from all the Indian projects, Nihal is the one with the most elite skill that he is already world class in Blitz. He's a little behind the others when it comes to results in classical. Um, or to some extent, even rapid where yeah, Pragnanda, Gukesh, Erugaisi have shown. But let's not write off our boy Nihal. He's he's a very very special talent as well. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, I, I believe that also doing so well in uh, in rapid chess and in blitz chess against the elite guys, top guys will give him an immense boost for for his classical chess skills as well. Yeah, because it's often connected with uh, with belief that you can fight on equal terms against the top guys, and if you feel that you can do it in rapid and blitz, then why wouldn't you be able to do it in classical? It's I think it helped also Ali Reza's this incredible rise so quickly to the absolute top was connected with this um, phenomenal results in, in the World Blitz and Rapid. Very much so. Sort of a strange opening here. This G3, it's gaining a lot of momentum. No? More and more people are doing this. Even Wesley, we've seen play it. Wow, and the games basis. are updated. Good. So maybe we can also go back to the Magnus' game and see what happened there and, and all the others. Yeah. Nihal already looks in great shape here as the two bishops is softening up the black king. And the light squares, yeah, that's Oof. that's the key. Rushing. He basically outclassed his opponent, yeah? Yeah, whooped. Effortless. So let's jump back to the top boards where Magnus Carlsen did indeed play pawn to e6 and doesn't look like it took him five minutes as we thought. <laughs> exactly. He is still 40 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, this is all the standard stuff. <laughs> Rook AD1, Magnus saying, okay, you didn't play H4, you didn't make any attempts to bring a knight over here. So I'll grab a little space, go G5, knight G6. Now the game really becoming very interesting. I mean, the big question, when white will include D4, D5, uh, closing down this uh, bishop from, from B7, and then clearly now in this structure, black would keep the pawn on e6, somehow queen e7, knight d5, and then sit on the e5 square as well. Yeah, the alternative is usually to take on c3, then block it with the e5. But here, where the knight is already ready to jump, it's probably not the moment. Can starts with king h7. Hints at f5, maybe. It could be an idea. Now bishop e6 is f4. Yeah, and now if e5, then you can, then you can play queen e7. This is exactly what I had in mind, yeah? That you just keep your structure and then knight d5, rook a8, and, and you are bringing your pieces and white might regret his d4, d5 decision. Yeah. Not sure what the move is. Is knight h2 in a way was already quite committal because you have to make sure f5 doesn't, doesn't hit you harder than you would, you would like to. Yeah, f5 is a threat. So Magnus already three minutes up on the clock. And he got a double-edged tricky position. And, and also we can see that this is very much uh, out of the usual ordinary D4 structures. Knight F1 played. Yeah, Tomaszewski keeps maneuvering. Also, now F5 doesn't work anymore because the bishop has this little thing squared on H2. Hmm. Of course, white is still extremely solid. But I guess he's just going to play with his own rook a8. But, but then you can't Fish never here. go f5 anymore, yeah? What to do? And you also might step into knight e3, knight f5 uh, tactic mm. with queen e7. I don't know what it gives, but not sure if you want to even give the possibility. Okay, where do we put the queen then? Queen That's six. the big question. Or just knight f6, knight h5, I don't know. Actually, Evgeny's handling of the situation is, is very interesting. He says, like, you know what? I don't want to refute the hippo, but I placed all my pieces in the center. Everything is fine. Let me maneuver the knight on FC, which was not doing anything. And it's it's a very interesting approach. 
It looks slightly strange on E3 as well. But yeah, it fights against F5 and T5 as well. Yeah, he basically asked Magnus that, okay, come on, show me your next move. Or maybe it's not going to e3. Maybe he thinks he has time for bishop h2, knight g3, but nah, it also looks clumsy. <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit. Okay, in any case, very interesting. What about the German boys? Bluebaum in a theory debate here in the Ragozin. Matthias Bluebaum, the European champion. No, but hang on. The knight is not committed to fc, so it's not a clean Ragozin. That's true, actually. It's. <clears throat> It's a hybrid, this bishop b4. This has become a thing recently, or maybe not so recently. I'm a bit surprised by queen a4 check. I think the critical move was supposed to play pawn to a3 here. And you mean you just go for the Botvinnik structure, yeah, the famous yeah. Botvinnik yeah. structure, knight f6, that just show what we have in mind. C takes d5. Yeah, whatever, move order. Like, yeah, easily, uh, whatever. C3, yeah. castle, cd. E D bishop, bishop d3, d3, c5, knight e2, b6. I won a nice game in this recently in Bundesliga. I was very happy with myself. And it's considered to be strategically quite risky for black. So sometimes when they do this, they try to mix it up a little here. Instead of playing knight f6, they play some other moves, some b6 directly or knight e7. But that, I think, was supposed to be the critical critical question against the bishop b4. But Duda is treating it like a Ragozin without knight on f3. And now uses that to put the knight to e2. Exactly. Because I when when we saw the final position, I thought like I don't recall white ever getting this uh, nice uh, little advantage in this line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Still still doesn't look like that much. But okay, you slowly start putting putting some pressure. Yeah. But okay, it's also not the most exciting game, so we can move on to something different. What else we have? Keimer. Yeah, still not much happening. Typical Artemia stuff, slowing down the game a bit. But here, e4 was played, and e5 by Vincent. Looks very sound for Black. Now he has a center, piece of good squares, c6, rook e8, a lot of easy moves to make. I wouldn't be too concerned. Was white to knight h4? Yeah, knight h4 idea take. is typical, but yeah, the question if this knight e4 will work. Yeah, they should be fine. Yeah, they should be fine. Yeah, looks fine for black. And Artemiev just went rook f1, rook e1. Oh, black can play. Yeah, probably rook e8. Yeah, look at c6. It's it's a fairly standard. Of course, the, the big question is bishop on h5 is always a double-edged piece, yeah, that it's seemingly is, is already actively developed, but it gives white this chance, like uh, often happens in e4, e5 structures when white goes bishop g5, yeah, that the black has these different ways to, to handle the position. Still no particular trouble just yet. Let's see if we have any excitement down the stretch. The next German player, Alexander Donchenko, against the Dutch number one, Anish Giri. Yeah, some opening debate here. Rook D1 is a sideline, but not enough of a sideline to surprise anybody. How about Rook, yeah, Rook D1, Bishop C6, and Bishop G5? Yeah, this is slightly rare. Knight C3 is well known here. Knight BD7. I think this is still fairly known. Was this the line where they go knight c3, queen e8 or some strange move? I can never remember. Huh. Suddenly I'm also completely unsure of... Uh, but what happened in the game? White played what? He took on c4, which I think is rare in this very move order. h6 takes, knight takes. And yeah, fairly standard for these structures. Yeah, they kind of transpose to some classical stuff. Yep, rook c8. Preparing bishop somewhere in c5, maybe. Queen c2, sidestepping. Yeah, Anish, of course, knows the subtleties of these positions. Now creates a square for his queen on e7, bishop b4. Was fighting against e4 when he could not take on d2. 
<laughs> so it yes, look at d eight ninety five and yeah, now bishop somewhere. Bishop e eight, bishop b five. Yeah, any of this looks very solid for black. Yeah, I guess you don't take on d four. Allowing knight c6, although maybe you can think about them. <laughs> yeah, there are so many options now that uh, I feel that black definitely has solved the opening problems. But do you want to trade, I mean, change the character of the position, or you just are happy that, that you got everything and then you just sit on your squares? What else do we have? I mean, one very sharp position is Abdul Satur against. Demchenko, because there Black has sacrificed an exchange for some active play, but is it enough? Ah, this knight, knight b7, knight b6 line, yeah? Not an expert on this at all. Demchenko has a repertoire of a lot of tricky sidelines. <clears throat> but will Abdus Satorov let him get away with this? Doesn't look I, like I believe that this queen b6 is a very strong move because uh, black wanted to go bishop c5 and create some counterplay against the f2 pawn and now uh, queen b6 covers the dark squares, even some queen d or rook d4, rook h4, whatever. I mean, there are now all kinds of ideas. Yeah. And not easy to see how black is really developing the initiative. I'm not buying it. Try this. <laughs> even the end game. Exactly. But uh, even this looks fine. I mean, okay, we are exchange up and uh, we're going to open up the center at, at some point. So, all right. Some gamble and Eriga Ishii. What is uh, Arjun doing? He's doing well. Not sure. <laughs> Chanel's pieces ended up on the best squares here. Also playing the French. Yeah, everybody plays the French. How it is. It's way rook g8. Some very confusing moves here, but it looks like Arjun knew what he was doing. Yeah, looks very comfortable. And what about uh, Sam Shanklin against Amin Basem just next to it? It's an you tell me, ambulance. did Black win a pawn? Yeah, but somehow this knight e7, pawn f6, g6, bishop g7 construction is a bit weird. I feel that there is some tension here. How did he get that pawn? E4, okay. <laughs> Some very radical measures here by Bassem. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, one can simply see that he really believes that he has a strong initiative. I mean, let's forget about computer's evolution. It also, to my eyes, uh, looked like uh, it, it's a bit weird, but Queen D5 might be the move. Because you are starting also Rook D8 and then pinning the Rook on D1 if, if Black White keeps the queens, which clearly he would like to do. but And also the knight on f is attack. So what to do now? I don't see it at all. Looks like black's just much better to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this queen d5 was the move that I mean had clearly missed in his pre -pre I mean, pre-calculation. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Okay. We can move on. We can go anywhere you like. Mr. Magnus, yeah. what's going on? Knight f1. He went knight f6. Queen e2, queen d7, and Tomaszewski sprung into action. e5, now that the knight doesn't have this square, takes, takes, queen c6. What's happening here? Let's find out. So checkmate is a threat. We don't oh. want to go fc because that would allow knight h5. So this case, we remain with knight e3 as an option, I believe. Yep. Now knight h5. Well, knight we can D5 just play, either. yeah. So, I mean, knight d5 is also covered. Knight e4 is an option. That's a question. Yeah, knight e3 is on the board. Knight f4 doesn't seem to work. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, because also there is then some bishop d3 check after taking on f6 and bishop e4's uh, problem. Exactly. So yeah, Magnus goes knight d7, the most natural, but also here bishop d3 might come. This might be very strong, followed by bishop e4. Yeah, so pleasant. Wow, yeah, because the knight, knight e5 loses a piece, so you have to do something strange. Yeah, now you have knight c5. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, this is very important. Lucky, lucky toss, yeah? Lucky toss. Knight c5. Wow, I, I already yes. felt like, wow, Bishop d almost wins the game, but yeah, Knight c5 cools down the emotions. And, well, one has to say that black is very flexible. So if white won't be able to use the momentum to his advantage, then black will be very happy. The pawn on e5 is loose. There is very nice harmony behind uh, between black pieces. The only question is, does white have a very strong move here using the fact that this queen on c6 is a little bit uh, very special construction? Yeah, I can't see it. Knight d5 doesn't really threaten anything. Um... The queen, the queen is quite stable on this square. If need be, like we're not winning by pushing the b pawn. I don't know. I don't see it. Computer seems happy for white. But why? Yeah, I mean, also you are setting just knight d takes e five. Yeah, so I have yeah. to, I have to do something. That's my bishop. Okay, let's let's go back to bishop d three. After I don't see any other move, knight c five is strong, but maybe I just take this uh, knight on g six. And then I put something like rook d4. Yeah, I, I cement the d4 square so that the knight on c5 won't be able to trade on e4, for example. And I go rook ed1. What is this structure? Solid know. stuff. Using. Looks like black is doing well, but it's not so easy to touch anything, you know? <laughs> exactly. And also, if I play f3, then basically both bishops, bishop on b7 and bishop on g7 are shot down. And eventually, I can also think about strategical ideas like knight g4, knight f6, uh, check, just sacrifice this pawn and then get the dark squares, uh, get the bishop to e5. I mean, it's a very special construction. Let's see what computer wants to do. Ah, we missed bishop b5. Well, I mean, I have seen the move bishop b I just did not believe in it. And because e5 pawn looked to me just too weak and I did not understand. But computer is too strong. Here is a fan. Wow, giving up both bishops. No, okay. Humanly, you cannot really even consider things like this. I mean, See. it looks like black is almost winning strategically, but the computer says you have concrete problems, sir. Tomaszewski agrees. Goes bishop b5. Wow. And this might happen. Takes takes queen c5 was forced, rook takes d7. Yeah, knight takes e5 looks like the most normal move in the world. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we know that computer agreed. However, the Afghan is done to less than four minutes and the position is very special. It might not be so easy to keep everything under control, but he might, if he really believes what he's doing, then, then he's, he's doing fine. Yeah. It's not a solid Tomaszewski type of position where he keeps everything under control, but he's being principled, went for the best line. Wonder if it's going to pay off for him. Well, hang on. I mean, a part of taking the pawn, you can also include something like rook ad8, trading down this very powerful rook. Does this change anything? You you probably go rook ed1. Hmm. And then rook d7, rook d7. I'm wondering that who benefits from this trade. Takes, takes, and still queen c4. Yeah, that was computer's big point. That's the queen e5, queen c4. And we can't protect the c7 pawn. That's the problem. Not without dropping f7. Yeah, wow. curious position. But apparently good for it. Yeah, very special. I have never seen, like, the two knights, and even the two knights look completely stupid, yeah, because this pawn on e6... <laughs> basically kills both knights but uh, the heavy pieces are very active and the pawn on c7 is the problem Magnus Carlsen thinking about it has a little more time on the clock but not endless reserves what's gonna be wow yeah, very interesting. I mean, Yevgeny is not being the typical Yevgeny at all, and it might surprise us or might shock Magnus because I know that he very much likes to, to play against the psychology of the opponents, and he might have not foreseen this that Yevgeny is ready to play like this. Yeah. If you take the bishop, what happens? 
good question. I mean, everything is so mysterious, yeah. But computer says that this is good, so we have to believe. We believe, but can we understand why? No, we actually don't believe, and we also don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not Bishop e5? Where is the trick? Think of some moves, but I'm not sure. Wow. What, what it does. I can ask. No, no just Queen C4. Just okay, Queen come C4. on. Doesn't this is care. incredible. I mean, I keep on seeing the moves, but I just don't feel that they are so strong because I don't believe in the position. That's the problem. That's why I said it's very important if Yevgeny goes for this position by believing and understanding why he has done for it. I, I believe it, it should be the case because his moves were too committal. Look at this, Rook C7. That's that's Compi's big point. Gives an exchange. That's saying. Now my B pawn is a monster. Exactly. This we can already believe. Very Finally, much so. something that we can believe on. Magnus seems to smell that things aren't so easy. Taking his time here, down to five minutes. Well, Queen C4 is the brutal threat. Yeah, this is the threat. All about the pawn on C7. Wow. I have never seen anyone confronting the hippo the way how Yevgeny has done it. Yeah, Bishop takes five five played after all. And let's see if Tomaszewski comes up with this move. Well, Queen C4 is already very much Tomaszewski style, yeah, because he's a fine endgame player. Yeah, you have to commit to this exchange sacrifice. But once you see it, that's not so hard to evaluate. The, the B5 pawn will give you at least good compensation over time. Yeah, sure. But he hasn't blitzed it out, yeah? So uh, it a little bit confuses me because after bishop takes e5, yeah, queen c4 on the board. Yeah. Uh oh. That was well, some trouble here. Yeah, I, will, I wanted to mention that if some uh, people who just look at Yevgeny's rating, they might not understand what we are talking about. But Yevgeny Tomaszewski, Used to be a 2750 player. He was very successful in 2014 15 in the FIDE Grand Prix series with almost qualifying to the candidates tournament. A super strong player, and uh, he doesn't play too much recently, but he's, he, he's, he's class demand, of course. And uh, whenever you take risk against such player, then it can backfire. Or it can work. We don't know yet, but for now. Tomaszewski playing very, very strong chess, not just spotting this bishop b5, but also evaluating that his pressure against c7 is worth more than giving up the center, potentially the two bishops. Yeah, Magnus c4. Magnus thinking. Yeah, I think Magnus is shocked, yeah, because uh, he's such a positive... I mean, Magnus has this incredible feeling for strategical finesses and everything, and especially in a rapid play, you rely on it, and it, your, your instincts say that it's I have a wonderful position, and you don't understand why I can't find what I should be doing, yeah? Why, why is it working for White? Right. He's now behind on the clock. Probably just realized how nasty these exchange sacrifices were. Down to three minutes, the world champion. Yevgeny Tomaszewski, they call him the professor. Apparently, he's incredibly good at trivia, like any quiz questions. He knows everything. Yeah, Yevgeny usually knows everything, that's for sure. I mean, Must I have be been nice. uh, been working together with him for Team Nepo against Magnus Carlsen last year, and no. I I got to know him even better than than before because we had incredible mutual respect earlier on. But now we also had been working together quite a lot. Ah, okay, so your respect for him grew, yeah? Because I was working a lot with Jorn van Forest, and opposite effect, opposite effect. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Wow, it's a very tense moment. I mean, Magnus Carlsen has spent like six minutes for the last uh, two, three moves showing how complex this position is. Yeah, he's unhappy. 
I mean, he's facing a computer, yeah, a monster Tomaszewski. The professor, like in La Casa de Papel. Do you watch Money Heist? I know you watch some TV shows secretly sometimes, but you've been too busy. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm watching, but no, this one I missed, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and, and also, we don't know what to suggest. What else could we do? We could go Rook 88. Rook 88, but then you take and go Knight C4. Is that the idea? Ah, no, hang on, sorry, pardon me. Yeah, no. Okay, Magnus. Ah, you just play Bishop C8, yeah, which is. Yeah, also e6 pawn was hanging. Maybe queen takes e6 was possible as well oh, after okay. rook a d8. You know, so by the way, <laughs> hang on. Let's just show one time this that after rook a d8, yeah, queen e6 might have been the problem because of the pin. But I also pin you. And then rook f7 check. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I keep on. I'm yeah, it's, it's so confusing. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, so the, the, the problem is that since we know already that computer has showed them with bishop c8 as, as the main line, it's the, the brain stops working. Right. Never started here to begin with, but yeah, now <laughs> rook c7 <laughs> is what he has to do. Yeah, rook c7, he needs to do it and he will do I it. I think he will, yeah, I agree. Also, the position nicely clarifies after this. I think you understand. No, he, oh! he took on e5. Okay, it's the same idea. It's exactly the same idea in a different... I mean, he wanted to lure the bishop to d7 so that it does not block it on b7. Huh. But Magnus immediately grabs his chance. Yeah, jumps knight f4 and tries to target the b5 pawn with some knight d5 or... Uh, what, what, what is it? How does this know. work? I can still stabilize. No, you go b6. I guess we have to go here. Yeah, bishop c6. Yeah. No, whatever move. Hmm. F3. But in fact, it feels like the bishop on c6 is stronger than on b7, maybe. Yeah. Also, why well, had to go b6? Well, with the bishop on b7, maybe you do it on b5, go knight c4, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, because I don't want to push b6 early. I mean, after knight f4, I would like to. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's. Uh... But that's the point. It's a very nice illustration. Yeah, that Yevgeny find the right ideas. He he senses the moment, but he can't be as precise as the computer. Yeah, that's that's the point. Computers are just mercilessly brutal. No one can be, but it's still better. Knight c4. This knight c4 played. Now is this possible? What's going on? Yeah, knight d5 is the big question. Uh, is Yevgeny already in bailout mode? Because uh, here, I guess, black takes and probably survives. Yeah, should be. yeah, knight d5 played. Magnus using, uses his momentum. Of course. And yeah, how do we keep the construction? That's the problem. Yeah, now you hit the knight on c3, hit the bishop on c7, and the bishop hits the pawn on b5. We might have to go for this uh, line, which which is just, I mean, it might just be a complete draw. Looks like it. Looks like Magnus touched the bullet there. That's also the thing with these top guys and Magnus in particular. So hard to win a game. It's not enough to outplay them, make some deep decisions. You have to be precise every single move. Yeah, and what are the options? We don't have too much uh, choice, yeah, because we, we can't allow knight takes e7, we, we can't go b6, because then takes and the pawn is getting lost after rook a7 or rook c8 or whatever. Looks pretty forced, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, but hang on, after knight b6, strange. you might have some rook a8 to e8 or not? Knight e7? Ah, it's check. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's check. But okay, it's maybe check. actually this is good for white. Yeah, the takes king h2 and then b6 and the, the two pieces. No, I saw actually that knight d7 might be a move. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, knight d7 takes. takes and then king h2 go for the brill and then b6 and uh, the two pieces and the pawn is it's very powerful. <laughs> Funny position. Yeah, because rook c8, b6, rook e7, b7. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So actually, but okay, Magnus is anyway very happy that he will draw the game because he was under pressure. So after knight b6, he will be happy to just liquidate. No need to play rook a8. I'm not sure if he smells as a chance. Yeah, Yevgeny is down to 20 seconds. Is it true? He's down to 20 seconds. Looks like it. Wow. So bishop b5 is the, the natural move we were talking about. Rook a8 is an alternative. Rook a7, knight d7 doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, basically, rook a8 is the alternative, which, however, might uh, might lead to some trouble for black. Yeah. No, I think he's going to go bishop b5. What the psychologist of uh, Yevgeny is, yeah, that if he has foreseen that rook a8 is bad because of knight d7, and then he goes down to 10 seconds in order to lure Magnus into it, yeah? <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> the professor, yeah? Calculates everything. Because if if uh, Magnus would know that Yevgeny... Oh, oh, oh! Magnus went for the rook. What? He, I don't think he touched it yet, but his hand was over it. Wow. Then we might be some incredible dramatic uh, stuff. There we go. Rook A8 played. Uh oh. Doesn't want wow. the draw, which was there for the taking with Bishop B5. Okay, but then Knight takes D7. No, and Yevgeny takes on E8. Didn't happen. No. There was a chance for, for Knight takes this, and I don't know if it's true or not. Let's I just confirm. Maybe it's not true. Knight D7, Rookie 1. And H2, Rook H8. Wow. Rook H8. And then D6. Going to the corner, and it just says, okay, you oh do. Oh my God. Yeah. You computers, do your thing. Yeah. I'll wait for this. Mm. Computers. All right. So, what do we have in the game? So, Yevgeny goes for the. Takes for the pawn. Six rook g eight. Carson's trying to win this. Rook g six. Bishop takes. Bishop takes b five. Should be a draw, but with opposite card bishops and the rook, like you could see things going. Yeah, going we need time on the clock. It's confusing, yeah. But these uh, three already feels wrong, like giving these squares. <laughs> Yeah, the point is that black has the a, a file, yeah? So some rook a6, black will be able to activate the rook. Maybe wants to block it. On the but board. the rook should find a way. Yeah, now it's, uh, now it's very tough for Yevgeny. Wow, Magnus. So being happy that he survived. He found that this looks risky, but isn't it playable? The game continues. Yeah, B4 played. Okay, White is trying to set up a fortress. The bishop on C5 protects the F2 pawn. Yeah, if White is able to put the bishop on D4, uh, protecting the C3 pawn and the F2 pawn. But Magnus goes F5. Exactly. Black wants to put that pawn on F4 and bring the king. Let's see. 7 forces a check. But also, the knight is a little far away. No, bishop C4. I want B5. Or knight 8 knight D6. Uh-huh. Yeah, knight is four ninety eight plate. Yeah, knight is coming to d six, disbalancing this powerful bishop on c four, and also the knight on d six will be beautiful. Knight on d six, bishop d four, it stops the black king of uh, getting closer to the center. Yeah, f four king g six, and then you don't have this. Yeah, nice construction, but plate. still. Still, the pawns are not going anywhere. Black can try to just play on forever and uh, squeeze white. Tuxwang problems. Rook B1, making sure none of these guys move. Exactly. Yeah, in practical terms, I don't believe that white can save this. Interesting. Let's Rook very quickly switch some of the other games Vincent Keimer is he in trouble he's a pawn down against Artemiev he's probably yeah, he in some is. trouble yeah a395 Jules Moussard piece down against Fedoseev and so right h pawn so he's lost is a blue bomb hanging in there probably d6 D6, rook G7, rook C7 looks, it it's should fine. be fine for black. 
Okay. And in Donchenko Giri. Alex in a lot of trouble. He lost a pawn. And he will lose the game. Yeah. So back to the top board. Tomaszewski versus Carlsen. Bishop to e5, stopping g4 for now. But yeah, Magnus will keep keep asking questions. Yeah, he needs to retreat probably with the king to g1, but then he will be in Zugzwang, yeah? So what was the next move? Yes, bishop d4, but then he lost g4, yeah? Ah, king uh, g1, bishop, I mean, rook e2, okay, and two, then g4 is right. coming. No need for Zugzwang, just going for the mating attack. Yeah. That should probably win the game, yeah? Once the pawn shows up on g3, king is mm -hmm. too weak. Yeah, that rook e1 checkmate is coming. Yeah, so king h2 was played immediately. Ah, fg fc, what a stylish way of finishing the game. Magnus play doing Magnus things. Play that tempo. He's in shape. No slow starts, no messing around. Taking his chances, taking risks, getting away with it. And if Magnus, sometimes he has a weak day, but typically it's the first day in these events. But if he doesn't, he's so hard to stop. Yeah, and also we see that uh, Yevgeny played a nearly perfect game, one mistake, and then things turned and Magnus is collecting f2, king takes g2, f1, queen, that's it. Yep. Magnus wins the game. Tomaszewski resigns. Big clash there. Where do you want to go? Well, wherever it's interesting. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan's in trouble against Sindarov, another Uzbek Olympian gold medalist. Another very young player. And, and a very strong one. Very, very strong. And he's much better here. Both sides have three passes, but the whites are further advanced. And he's also probably checkmating the Black King while pushing them. Exactly, yeah, Jordan is in a lot of trouble and I just feel whenever I look at these uh, Uzbek kids that they play so fearless chess. They have zero respect, they believe in themselves. Uh, well, basically the chess Olympiad has also proven them absolutely right. Why not to believe in yourself if you can win the Olympics? Must be nice. Yeah, Jordan looks more or less lost here, B5. I guess why it doesn't even bother taking this pawn when his rock could get well. Also, some up. knight g4, knight f6 check is very tempting because, as you say, yeah, also there are mating nets. Okay, yeah. knight f5, knight f5 as well, rook f7, maybe a check and bishop f6. It yeah. looks close to disaster. That's it. So, basically, Sindaro will win his game. Huh? What about Abdusat Abdusatov is winning his game against Damchenko as well? So, also winning. The Uzbeks are cruising. And what about Nyapu against Zyugirov? Because that's a big pairing as well. Jan is squeezing. Okay. Okay, this is a long game. Uh -huh. Slightly better. And Fabi have... is winning opponent game. Look at this. Uh, Fabi is winning opponent game. So I'm going to be queen end game. Well, or resigns. <laughs> it's going to be. Probably resigns. The clock has ticked down as well. Yeah. yeah, can can we actually catch up with Hikaru or MVL or Grishchuk because they are all stuck on one point. Do we have their games or not? Not, yeah, probably. I'm looking. Apparently not. Or, uh, no. Maybe they're not on the first 40. Yeah, exactly. Boards. I mean, we talked about it. They keep on getting very strong oppositions, uh, very solid guys, very difficult to win, uh, win a game. Well, now Hikaru actually did win against Petrov. All right, so you beat Petrov. Yep, that's a, that's a very important win for Hikaru. He will be climbing closer and closer. Another E three Nimzo debate. This time it went better for Hikaru. This is all. Ah, this is a very theory. fashionable stuff. Yeah, this is the Sarana line. Yes, the Sarana exactly. line. But yeah, Hikaru knew what he was doing. And At least he pretended it. that he knew, yeah? No, but he sort of knew. 
Let's check in. Yeah, Grishchuk against Grishuk. Kovalev. Yeah, okay. He's also winning. Also winning. Can't keep him down. Yeah, but how angry Kovalev should be that it's round three. He has faced uh, now Grishchuk in the first round. He faced MVL. In the second round, he faced Hikaru. I mean, what is it? Yeah, is he playing uh, the, the World Championship final or what? He's probably thrilled when you get to play all these guys. Yeah, but he comes there to, to earn some money. Yeah, this is not the best way of getting a good result. Fair enough. Yeah. Maxim is on his way to two and a half out of three, so no disaster there either. No, two One out of three. three. I mean, they both had uh, two no, draws no, no. already. Yeah, no, no, no. Maxim won second round. Ah, Maxim won. Ah, okay, then Maxim is doing fine. Yeah, then yeah. it's then it's all under control. Let's get to Giri versus. Donchenko, which I saw on camera there. Are there drawing chances for White here? Well, with this A5, A4 pawns, uh, somehow figs, I don't believe. But I Looks mean, we go knight D4 check, we go king E5, F4, and then we march with the king there. Isn't it just an element of win? Don't ask me. But okay, yeah. White will run with the king to this, this, c4, and then try to sacrifice the bishop. So I understand why Anish does not want to commit anything yet. King d6, we, we might be seeing that king heading back to e5, and maybe it's some psychological battle. Maybe it's about, yeah, I don't think that it's about Sukhswang, it's more about psychology. Right, c5, five. and sooner or later, we're going to see f4 check happen. Yeah, gotta make progress, but he doesn't want to do it yet. 94. And king comes. Okay, bishop d7. What changes? Really nothing. <clears throat> ah, but okay, bishop d7, knight d6, and you, you, you got the d4 square for your king. Does it help though? What's next? I don't know, but it's impressive stuff for Manish. Bishop d7, knight d6 played. Bishop 6 is waiting. Yeah, keeping an eye on the f5 pawn. And if the king runs, then you also give these squares for the white king again. I don't know if he's making progress. Yeah, finally he will have to get back probably with king to e5, push this f4, get the knight to d4, yeah? I mean, first, of course, before I push f4, I will put the knight on d4 and then push f4 and then see where it will lead us. Yeah, apparently there are drawing chances if Donchenko just stays calm. He doesn't really have a choice either way. And he tries to go wow, with all the Hang on, hang on. Farm Forest is winning or what? Jordan is winning against Sindarov. How did this How did happen? That? Wow. My God, what a turn of events. Jordan was completely busted. Scoring two out of two out of one dead drawn and one dead lost position. This might be Jordan's event. Anish got his king here. And Donchenko doesn't even seem concerned about counterplay. He's just waiting. Which is also fair enough. Once the knight moves, he takes on f5. Um... But yeah, ah, but now with the fork. He stepped into this uh, fork. Yeah, he might lose a very vital tempo. Yes. Might still be in time, king f2, but yeah. Tough. I mean, very tough to defend like this. No choice for Mr. Donchenko. Who's been very up and down? He he was he reached almost twenty seven hundred in classical, like two years ago, or I don't know, maybe it was even a year ago. Then lost a lot of rating, went below twenty six hundred again. Then scored seven out of seven at some point in the French league, and now yeah, he's back up, but his ceiling is very high. Yeah, I also have the same feeling that uh, when he's doing fine or, or good, then, then you think like, wow, what, what Alex is doing, it's amazing. And then suddenly, what? This is the same Alex. Yeah, If he somehow mm -hmm. manages to stabilize himself and uh, we might be seeing much more of his, his ups and, and limits the downside, then he definitely has serious potential.
but he has to somehow get this uh, sort these things out. Here looks like he's sorted out that he can wait and tough for Anish to make progress. Anish can grab the a4 pawn, but usually very hard to stop a bishop from sacrificing itself for such a pawn. Then, yeah, well, why it's, it's, it's a move by move mm -hmm. business, yeah? Yeah, it looks like it, true. For example, king fc, knight c5, yeah? And then king c3, thank you for ah, the tempo. Ah, sorry, sorry, the diagonal is too short. Yeah, this I can't do. Ah. Exactly. And this is on the board. Mm -hmm. We might be seeing this knight takes a4, so Anish goes for it. Mm -hmm. You will have to find the diagonal for your... How's this? Is this actually winning? Well, king b3, I felt that if this is not winning, yeah, then what? you're on time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, so ju just in the station, Alex is done to few seconds on the clock. He needs to make up his mind. He definitely has played something. Yeah, knight c5, beautiful square for the knight because it covers the e6 square. That, that would be the ideal scenario for white. Yeah, white went king e3, didn't correctly, didn't go after the g5 pawn, apparently. How do you hold this now? King d2. Well, no, he's not going to hold. It says, computer says king d2 is the losing mistake. I'm, I'm not sure I understand anything. Let's just No, see. I mean, okay, if you, you can hold it maybe in correspondence chess, but uh, in none yeah. of, even not in a classical game, I believe. It says this is still a draw. Okay. I well. mean, usually you would think that you have to design here already. No, he might have to resign. G4. I have to count. A4 takes, takes, king comes. No, no, but yeah, there is no reason to calculate anything. Yeah. yeah. Just knight beastly check and then you push and that's it. That is literally it. Anish Giri wins against Donchenko. Nice game by Anish. We didn't see all of it, but. Looked like a good squeeze. What else do we have? Are some of the games stuck? This Grisha position looks very familiar once again. Yeah, okay. This this was designs already here. Here there's something moving. My friend Francisco Vallejo Pons. Wow, Paco Still in business. a lot of trouble. Paco traveled all the way to Kazakhstan. I never know where in the world Paco resides. It's always exciting to, to hear from him because you have no idea. It could literally be any any place in the world. <laughs> yes. But yeah, here he is now. And he's completely lost against Nesterov. Nesterov is the poor guy they sort of teamed up against at the Russian Super Finals. No, like there were a lot of quick draws and then everybody was playing against Nesterov. I actually missed, missed that uh, Super Final. I wasn't following. Fair enough. And it was I in September, yeah, in something like in September. Yeah. yeah, and he does win here against Francisco Vallejo. A long time, Spanish number one. I think all the other games that are on my screen are stuck. No pieces have been moving there for a while. So what do we have in the results department? We know Magnus Carlsen is on three points out of three. Um, Studa did grind down. Bluebaum also on three out of three. So Svidoseyev. Vincent lost to Artemiev, meaning both Artemiev and Anish Giri also joined team three out of three, as is Jorn van Forest, miraculously. The defending champion, Nordia back up to Satorov as well. Looks like some fun pairings of the 100 percenters in the next round. There we see Erigaisi also up there. Nihal. Action should stay good, Peter. That's for sure. Uh, that's always guaranteed in a rapid section. Five games. But this is the only day when the players will play five games. Uh, in the second and third day, we're only going to have four runs. And finally, I just saw that Lilith Mikhachan managed to stop Goryachkina. Yeah, that's uh, that's the first draw that Goryachkina conceded. Lilith is also stopping the whole tournament every time the last game played. Seems to be by Lilith Mikhachan here. 
the Armenian star. This time she's facing Harika, who is trying to win with Rook and Knight versus Rook. Now that's a tough proposition. Like Rook Bishop, as we've seen, has its issues. But Rook and Knight, you need something special to happen usually. Mm -hmm. Any defense will work. Just try not to get too far into the corner with the king. Keeping yeah, the whenever the rook uh, pins the knight, yeah, then uh, it's it's so difficult, yeah, to create any ideas. Yeah, you can just wait, give a check. <clears throat> Bring the king back, whatever. <clears throat> yeah, wow, okay. So I, I also heard that Goryachkin apparently drew again. So my prediction of Goryachkin dominating the women's section doesn't <laughs> seems to to be going its its logical course. Could still happen, could still happen, but not yet. But also maybe feeling like you are the favorite. Yeah, there is all the pressure in, in yourself and Kuryachkin is not used to this uh, fast time control so much. Yeah, we, we haven't seen her in action. Yeah. Gunina, if Gunina goes on a good, a good run in these events, she can be unstoppable. If we remember this London chess classic rapid, she destroyed the entire composition. Always exciting to see Gunina doing well. All right. Looks like we're out of out of games in the open section. I can see one playing out there on my screen, but I'm not sure where, where that is. Let me see, maybe here. Ah, oh, yeah, it's here. It's... Shant Sarksyan, another incredibly strong Armenian player against Valentin Dragnev. And Sarksyan is winning. Best case scenario is Bishop and Knight versus King. Can you checkmate with Bishop and Knight versus King, Peter? <laughs> Somehow, with some luck, I think I would manage, yeah. You, you know the W maneuver? What's your technique? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the W yeah. maneuver, I, I knew when I was seven years old. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I didn't forget it, yeah. But look at this knight d5. Knight the, d5 the question is that will there be a way to yeah to to harmonize that now rook e6? Knight d5 was strange, no? Like support. Ah, but bishop f3, wrong. bishop f3 protects everything. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, bishop f3 protects things, and the point is now you can't break king b5 because of knight c7 fork. It's a nice setup. Ah, but he okay. Bishop g6 was played. Rook d6 back. It would bring the knight to help, no? Yeah, but these are the typically typical positions that you when you don't play it, you claim that okay, it's easily winning off the board. It's why am I not winning? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. King also, before. after the move, I suggest you can see the computer dropping saying no, no, no. Exactly. King before so, now king c2. Yeah, king c2. I mean, hang Let's on, win. there is also the scenario if Black King gets close enough, then, then it's the wrong corner, yeah? So there are some drawing chances. Mm -hmm. King c5 played. So then all of a sudden the Knight can get captured, yeah? Exactly, if the King will be close enough. Ah, that's why it's a draw, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why now with the Bishop on six. g6 stuck, yeah, you can play King d5, King e5, and then you might be starting to sacrifice on f5 and King f6. Mm -hmm. Dragnev surviving this once again. Rapid rating is a bit low, I think, in classical. It's 2550 or maybe even higher. Strong Austrian player. And looks like he might get away here. Yeah, unbelievable. Of course, this, these are the saves which, uh, if you are on the saving side, you are extremely happy. If you are from the stronger side, you go crazy. You go H6. Yeah, I was just going to say there was a fork, but. Yeah, now the rook gets behind the pawn. Mm -hmm. The king comes and draw, yeah? Yeah, king e5, king f6, and... Wow. He's so stupid, the king on f6. We just... Hit the bishop. Completely break it up. But hang on, king f2, if king f6, king g2, aren't we in time to trap the rook? King g6. Ah, king g6, I'm blind. Yeah, exactly. And then you take the pawn. 
When knight g3, king f6. Hoping for knight h5 check, but rook h5 is a fairly solid response. <laughs> yeah, and then king to the corner. Should have five. Okay, just five. to check and king g7. Check. And we're done. What an escape. Unbelievable escape. It, it looked hopeless. It might have been lost at some point, but yeah, due to the fact that there were these defensive resources, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Good job by Dragnev. That takes us to the end of our third round coverage, where we've seen many of the favorites on three out of three. Should be a fantastic fourth round here in a little while. Thank you so much for watching the World Rapid Championship here on Chess24. We'll be back with round number four. See you then. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. I'm Shaikun. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Marinus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakura. Hare Krishna Pentala. loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hi there. It's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented Aim Chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not! That's because you're not using AIM Chess. AIM Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, AIM Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs>
That's so fucking dumb. Aim chess for when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's look, it, just sign up for aim chess, okay? Just come on. Literally, why not? All right, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. All right? Jesus Christ. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. First of all, I think white goes queen f4, here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. And so much happiness. to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. I'm Shaquan. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Linus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. Hare Krishna Pentala.
Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. Seriously? Checkmate! Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Welcome everybody! My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Our starting a new course here for Chessable, a very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. It's so much happiness.
Welcome back, everybody. The fourth round of the World Rapid Championship 2022 is about to start. And we have some big, big clashes coming up. The Battle of the World Champions. Classical World Champion Magnus Carlsen against the defending champion, the World Rapid Champion, Nodi Beck, up to Satorov, also the Olympic gold medalist. Peter, this is a big one. Absolutely. I remember that last year when Magnus was actually pressing Abdul Satlov with the black pieces, but they finally went on to lose that game, which was so yeah. crucial in Abdul Satlov finally clinching the title and Magnus dropping out of the contest. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Magnus is burning with, with all the revenge. He also now has the white pieces, but Abdul Satlov is on fire. He has gained a lot of confidence. But the big question, will he be able to get out of the openings? Yeah, that's uh, against Magnus. It, it's a very difficult task. Yeah, also very unclear what mood Magnus is in, if he's just trying to get a game, play some random stuff, or if he has some place he feels he can hit up to Satorov. Going to be very interesting, up to Satorov. This is just for what I recall from the Olympiad. Magnus has been doing a lot of knight of 3, g3. Up to Satorov has been playing this knight c6 there, which maybe. Maybe he's a potential target. I don't know. We will see. Yeah, he has played it against Vincent. Yeah, this nice yeah. six business. Yeah. And I was just looking at the players on three out of three. What a collection we have there. The two Dutchmen, Anish Giri and Jorn van Verreist, on 100%. Then some of the Indian stars are up there. Nihal Sarin, Eric Aisi, the reigning champion up to Satorov. Artemiev, another world-class rapper player. Fedoseev, always to be reckoned with. Jan Shishtov Duda, the World Cup winner. It's not all luck, this chess. These are some pretty good players on 3 out of 3. Absolutely, and they are paired against each other. I mean, for example, Bortu, Anish Gide against Jan Shishtov Duda. That's a really big one. Uh, but basically, all the pairings are sensational. Of course, we will focus on Karlsson up to Satorov. But yeah. Plenty, plenty good stuff. Eric Aisi, Rapport. Wow. There we see Gunina on the top board in the women's section. She started already collecting all the points. Yes, three out of three then. And you see, if she starts collecting, then how to stop her, yeah? right? She can be unstoppable. Yeah? If she gets her positions, usually it's some wild games and the computer is not always on her side, but she's so tricky and resourceful. That, yeah. I wouldn't bet against Gunina on a good day. <clears throat> and okay, guys. We have? For example, Nihal Sadin plays against who? Against Fedoseev. Yeah, Fedoseyev. both three. Yeah. Jorn versus Artemiev. Here we go. See Rapport. Salem, your boy, against your other boy, Nepomnesi. Wow. That's, uh, that, that's a very special game for me. And we have liftoff in the Carlson game. Looks like one B3 it is, so no no big theory debate. Or maybe a big theory debate within B3. That's a surprising choice to me. I thought he would try to hit him a little harder. No offense to one B3. Yeah, I also had the same feeling because the one, one thing I still don't really remember that what is Nodi's back uh, very stable black repetitor after E4? So, somehow it doesn't come to my mind immediately. Sure, I'm sure I've seen him play some Berlins, but I'm not sure what his main thing is right now. And yeah, here we get b3 action. The main move used to be bishop b5 here, but both bishop d6 and pawn to e4 have proved themselves to be very, very solid systems. So Carlson goes knight f3, luring this pawn to e4 where he wants to go knight d4 or knight e5. Can't say I'm very booked up on this line. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a sideline. I have never really seen it. But the spirit is uh, the same, yeah? That, okay, if E4, then you want to play on the dark squares, then you eventually blow, I mean, break with F3, yeah, potentially. Yeah, let's just make some moves. For example, E4, Knight D4. Yeah, For already a choice. You can bring the bishop out or you can take and play D5. Both yeah, let's moves. just show now if, if black plays the most logical. I mean, no, hang on. He played bishop D6, no? No e4, he doesn't want to be provoked, but also legal. But now white is not going to commit to bishop b5. Exactly. Play either d4 or c4. And argue this a little slow, but probably possible. 
D4 looks normal to me. What does black do then? <laughs> yeah, probably I have to take, yeah? ED? Yeah. Once again, a choice. I'm not sure. Yeah, slightly, slightly strange, this bishop d6, but OK. For example, yeah, if d4, ed, and then knight d4, I keep on trading everything. And we, yeah, I just take on d4. If you play queen d4, I play queen e7, followed by bishop c5 or something. I yeah. potentially also have some bishop a3 trade if you move the knight to c3. Yeah, still a bit strategically risky, but interesting how it's going to yeah. play out. And Carlson goes c4, not d4. Also normal, short castles. I guess the knight will come here. Black will play rook e8, bishop f8, and we get a more standard type of game. Yeah, but I think Magnus should be very happy, yeah, because this is some kind of a reversed uh, Sicilian Rostolimo type of this uh, stuff, which suits him so well. Mm -hmm. uh, strategical middle game with all the pieces, uh, the bishop on d6, yeah, rook e8, bishop f8, two more tempi, then black has to try to break d5, which white will never let happen. Probably white will put the knight on d5 or something at, at the right moment. I'm really believing in, in Magnus' strategy here. Knight c3 would be the first move that comes to mind, no? Yeah. Knight c3, then even maybe the pause and system with queen b1, knight g5, h4. I mean, there are all kinds of ideas. But t3. Okay. d3 is really trying to slow it down. Okay, that's a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, now you're going to get your setup. Yeah, rookie at bishop f8 and d5. Yeah, maybe knight c3, some e4 pushes bothered him, although they look like they're losing a pawn, but <laughs> maybe something didn't like you. Yeah, it was confusing. Yeah, queen b1 and then rook e8. Okay, eight. Maybe this. Maybe it isn't Very so risky. simple. Yeah. yeah. So d3, rook e8 on the board. Hmm. Now the most normal setup would just to to be to play a Sreveling and non be to actually two a three. Decent version. Exactly. I mean, first of all, black is not attacking anything. The knight is not committed to c3. Yeah, this knight on bd2 is is lovely. When as we discussed, bishop f8 d5 are black's next moves most probably, and then white has this very harmonious setup. Yeah, I'm not sure black even wants to go d5. Let's say I don't know. Here, here. I could imagine just slowing things down and saying, okay, how but bad okay, can it's be? Very with passive, the yeah? yeah, yeah, I agree. It's not great. I mean, uh, usually black can do this with uh, c4, e5, knight c6, g6, bishop g7, d6, knight f6, whatsoever. Yeah. E even then, I'm not a fan of it. But yeah, white's bishop is on e2 on the other hand. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, many finesses. Magnus starts with a3. Move you need anyway. Probably asking Nordi back to decide already if he wants to play a5 or not. Maybe after a5 he could change his mind and the knight goes here, although I doubt it. Yeah, because once you switch to knight cc, then black will probably go for bishop f8 d5. Exactly. Yeah, yeah then, then it makes sense. Yeah, against this d5 plan, it's so important to keep all the pieces with knight b2 being flexible. All right, it's a slow game. Yep. But I see that also on the other boards we have quite uh, slow action. Yeah, it's uh, more yeah, of a is, theory debate, but this it's is a, very a theoretical line. battle. This is a line I know well, which Anish actually pioneered with the black pieces when he started playing it in the candidates tournament against Ding a while back. And yeah, White has struggled to find anything in the main lines here after short castles. So now they're trying this very small ball approach. Go for this. And it's not so easy to completely extinguish it with black. This position where I've had the computer run, I think it goes it gives h5 at some depth. But uh, yeah, Anish, of course, knows what he's doing here. Yeah, it's a small little torture. Yeah. Yep. Jordan against Artemiev. Artemiev, not the biggest theoretician. And yeah, he once again chooses kind of a sideline with bishop e7, d6, a4, a5. 
But do they play a5 with black? Usually black doesn't do a5, no? a5 strikes me as rare, yeah. I'm not yeah. very well informed on these bishop e7 systems, but I think usually you allow a5 and then you go a6. Exactly. Because the position that we have already looks quite nice for white. Yeah. It's not like some Philidor, yeah? Yeah, I don't know how bad it is if we take everything and go bishop e6, but I wouldn't do this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even, even takes, takes, takes e5 is yeah, nice, yeah. yeah. No, no, this is a dream dream for white in modern chess, yeah? And you, you can't really be hoping for more. What's Richie up to? <clears throat> this topical line. And yeah, I've seen some people go CB5 here, which wasn't really a thing re until recently. Looks very risky strategically for white, but... Oh, well, yes, but Lamport is blitzing, yeah? Kind of, he sends this uh, happening. Did some homework. Yeah. Hang on, what was the move order? So it was... Ah, okay, but Black has saved the D6 stuff. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. 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 And White took... They've tried every move here. Bishop D2, Bishop D3, A3, Knight E2. Nothing too promising for White. So it looks like we're back to... Simple greed. The 10,000s E3 Sicilian. Oh, let's see your deep work in these lines. For Mr. Nepomneshi. Well, this F4 is a relatively new stuff. Okay, so what? You went deep? You missed F4? Okay, I can't reveal <laughs> the secrets, but... <laughs> I mean, deep. now the big question is, yeah, who, who is better prepared, yeah? I believe probably Salem because he's the one who picked the F4 line, yeah? Yes, F4 has become a thing. Duda played it twice in the, I think, Champions Chess Tour recently. Should be 7, Knight G3. And yeah, it's, it's very, very ambitious because White is trying to stop E5 and build a giant center. And if Black doesn't know the details, which I think Nepomneshi isn't showing here, or he's also taking some time, then you can end up in a very tricky situation. Very exactly, quickly. yeah. These, these are very sharp. I mean, recently White has been uh, crushing Black in quite a lot of games. In this yeah. Round. Somehow, people don't seem to have a computer to switch on to show <laughs> rook d8, 97, 95. But maybe they'll find one. Um, here we are. Mm. Yeah, dangerous position for Nepomneshi. It also looks like he's mixing all of the plants a little bit with the rook c8, a6, and so on. And Salem, as you know better than me, if he gets an attacking position, he's hard to he's hard to stop. He's very dangerous. Exactly. I mean, he's very dangerous. He loves the initiative, so this line fits him perfectly. Mm -hmm. So okay, let's go back to Magnus, yeah, because I see that there is the change of structure here. And we talked about this, that with the knight on d2, we are welcoming this d5 break, yeah? That white has nice prospects. Yeah, the black pieces are still solidly developed, but in these very slow Sicilians, if you're not, if you don't have any initiative with black, then yeah, normally it's pleasant to play with black. You think he's going to go all Fisher and go king h1, rook g1? Well, uh, he loves who his knows? Classics. Yeah, who who knows? Yeah, it's uh, it's Magnus. Yeah, he likes those things. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah. knows the old classics, but he also likes to use them. Yeah. I find that this last move from Black, this Bishop C8 to F5, a bit strange. Yeah, that that it's strange looking because it steps into East the four fork. But mm -hmm. let's just show that, uh, of course, Black is basing basing his play on Knight F4, counterattacking the Bishop on E2. And he probably didn't want to allow D4 and. Or I'm not sure if it's a good move directly. But maybe he wanted to stop this. That's why he put the bishop here. Yeah, and Magnus goes for rook e1. Yeah, black goes bishop g6. So both players play this stabilizing move. Yeah, now e4 was a threat because the bishop was covered. <clears throat> here we are. If knight h4, bishop f7, d4 is no longer an issue. I guess he'll just play quote unquote normally here. Rook c1, maybe put the queen somewhere, see what happens. Maybe knight e4. Yeah, depends if Magnus wants to play routinely or he wants to 
to somehow be very precise. But I mean, okay, rook c1, queen b1 is so tempting, yeah? But okay, yeah, that's the trick of these type of positions that when you get it from the black side in the CC, then you are super happy because you are comfortable. When you are white and having the same position, then you are fighting for advantage. It's so much, uh, so much more difficult to, to, to be happy yeah? because many times you would love to play a move with which you would easily equalize, but with white, it's not an option. Yeah. But given that Magnus chose 1b3, I think a position like that is, is welcome to him. A lot of pieces on the board. A lot of scope for mistakes from both sides, even if he's not better. And, and g4, there you well, have it. I did mention the idea, but this is in, a, in an extreme version, even without king h1. Uh, yeah, the idea is to control the light squares on the king side. And then eventually launch an attack with g5. Very ambitious. Computer doesn't like it, but that Magnus also knows. He, he likes his classics. Yeah, now we know that we're going to get a very uncompromising, exciting game. That's exactly what we have been expecting and hoping for. Mm -hmm. So how do we do? I mean, the most natural move would be queen d7. Yeah, then knight h4 will come. Knight h4. Do you put the knight on h4? Okay, bishop f7. Where else do I put it? <laughs> I mean, because now you force my bishop back to e6, which no, or to f7 first. You you don't have any clever way, yeah, like king h1 or something. Knight takes e5. Hmm. I take your bishop. True. I don't know. Yeah, what, what... it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, queen d7, king h1 played. King yeah, h1 yeah. played. You were right. Nice. Hmm. No, I mean, somehow I feel like uh, Magnus doesn't want to move this knight from f3. He wants to keep it there. Yeah. And also the bishop on g6 is vulnerable, while on, on f7 it will be so harmonious. Rook d8, after Satorov just makes normal moves. And look at this. The computer already believes in white, yeah? So basically, strategically speaking, computer actually appreciates white's plan. And there was some very specific... Uh, move that that bothered him. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. A4 was what the computer didn't like, and B4 just take. Sacrifice. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, I mean, in a rapid game or in a blitz game, whatever people can't even consider things like this. Yeah, this is on the board. Ninety four. Now, usually, you want the slowish build up on the king side. See if you can get anywhere. Yeah, okay, d8, knight, e4. That's the problem for black, that now suddenly he's stuck, everything is developed, but black has no plan and white is coming. Yeah, And then it's so much nicer to be white because you know what you are doing and with black you are just sitting and waiting. I did see that computer was mentioning some move like h6 at some point. It's humanly such a difficult move. You don't want to move that pawn from h7 at all. Yeah, He doesn't, king h8. Also preparing for the events to come. Well, now the question is that do you threaten knight before because you sidestep from, from any kind of fancy for checks? I'm not sure. I don't believe in it, but who knows? You, you need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. For example, rook g1, knight before is the first thing that I would like to check. Yeah, takes, takes. Queen moves to square. 60, and then I take on d3. Where does this lead? Because if you have to give up your light square bishop, then of course we are happy with black. Interesting. I believe Magnus will avoid this. Maybe he might just play some rook ad1 or whatever. I mean, if he can. Mm -hmm. Or the g4 pawn is hanging already. At some point it should be hanging. But okay, still I have knight takes e5, yeah? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you know that that's the point that this knight d b four was the first thing that I was keeping an eye on all the time. But that black plays a five and then b four knight is, did not cross my mind <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's interesting how the human brain works. Her direction, you were right again. Wow, rook eighty one, stopping all shenanigans, impressive stuff, yeah. Mr. Leko. 
Yeah, Magnus wants to keep and okay, if next move he gets Luke G1, he will be the happiest person in, in the in the world right now. At least in Kazakhstan. I mean, then he gets all this stability and he knows that he's slowly coming and Black has no counterplay. I mean, usually in the Marotti structures, because there we also see this idea from Black, but then the pawn is on c5, it's so much more easier from Black side to generate counterplay. But with pawn on c7, knight on c6, nothing really moves. Yeah, it's surprising because the Black army is fully developed to the middle, Black even has some central control, but there's just no way to make progress. Yeah, tough. I I would hate to be with the with the black pieces here. I mean, just no plan. White is the one who is coming up with the healthy approach and looks at you. Yeah, every single move he makes with pleasure. Yeah, nicely, you know, improving the position, and you are like a sitting duck there with black. To Satorov goes bishop f seven, bring the bishop around to e six. Rook g1, ah, knight b6, he spotted potential target at least on b3. Yeah, he's trying something. I mean, maybe now already a4 is a threat, yeah, because a4, b4, bishop b3, and if b takes, then then immediately rook a8 switching back to the weakness. It's a good practical choice. Yeah, he's still stable enough. I guess g5, he can just meet with f5. Yeah, the sacrifices don't seem to, to break through. So what does Magnus do? Ignore it, go rook g3? Or... Well, but then you have to calculate, yeah, that the rook g3, a4, now you have to make a decision. Yeah, rook g3 on the board. So he's ready to go for it. It's exciting. Both sides playing quickly. Very aware of potential time trouble. A4 also blitzed out more or less by Abdusatorov. B4, Bishop B3. It's probably too much. Although it looks pretty, but not nah, too much. <laughs> so I guess he has to take. Yep. Yeah, it takes, of course, yeah, because Black will come, but okay, now it will be razor sharp. Yes, yeah? strategically, white is burning bridges on the queen side, but uh, is basically basing on the fact that he believes that the attack will be strong enough on the king side. But okay, how do you mate me after rook eight? Let me go rook eight. Mate me, please. I went ah, knight five. a5. Okay, but I don't like knight a5 because you remove the defense of, of the e5 pawn. And and you remember you wanted to your question was what happens after g5 and eventually at some point something like this maybe even the sacrifice with knight f6 who knows I mean this is also some kind of a motive gf gf and the g file is opening up the long diagonal pressure on e5 many questions maybe exactly here it still doesn't work but definitely something that you need to keep an eye on. Cousin goes rook tg1 further indicating. That such things are on his on his to-do list. Exactly. I guess Queen takes a four, he will sidestep. Or maybe he can take c7. So. Yeah, he can take. Yeah, no, Queen oh, takes is helps. probably not yeah. possible. So knight takes, and once again, we go g5. Or we just go bishop a1. It's a tough, tough call. Yeah, but still gets chased down, not a poor bishop. And look at this. Abdul Satlov goes bishop to d5 and already computed jumps that now I love white. It shows how difficult, complex this is. But hang on. Can white play move like bishop c3 or not? No, that's stupid because queen c6 might be a move after bishop c3. No, not the end of the story, no? Queen b2. But then knight c4, yeah? You, you come up oh, you yeah, come you with start. all this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else is there? Could, could go not F2. But after Bishop D5, no, 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 no. No, some sacrifices, something should come. We have these different plans, yeah, like Rook HD or G5, but G5 doesn't feel right, of course, with Bishop on D5. We should somehow touch this Knight on A5. 
is queen we go c3 queen c3 yeah yeah okay knight takes a4 all kinds of tactics takes mm. on a5 takes on b2 i don't know usually i'm very happy if i can take one of your bishops no no mating ideas anymore why is computer so happy i mean is there some sensational stuff yeah g5 yeah, might have six go not for, going for it for okay but i told you that it's typical but exactly that to find yes. the right time with bishop on d5 eyeing the king on h1 and queen c6 met by queen b1 okay this is completely different planet i mean no human can think like this let's see Computer also likes this is maybe a more human choice. Knight c3, although it's also tough. Which yeah, it's strange. Down. No, no, mm. I mean, you have bishop bc tempo to start with already. It bothers you as, as a human. No, no, it's very interesting that how Magnus will react because mm. this piece sacrifice, clearly that's in Magnus's mind after playing rook dg1. Yeah, rook dg1, but after bishop d5 exactly, you might feel like knight, it shouldn't work, yeah? It's also not his style, like he will do it if he thinks it's good, of course, but to burn the bridges and sacrifice so much here. I, he will look for a quieter way, I think, if it exists. Yeah, g5, f5, knight f6 takes, takes queen c6 and then queen b1. That this, you can even consider that this is possible. I mean, if you ask any top player, I believe that he says that, yes, the sacrifice is typical, but... It shouldn't work in this case because of queen c6. Takes, takes queen c6. And then computer says just queen b1 back. I mean, how on earth? <laughs> there is all this pressure and f3 king on h1 is also kind of checkmated. You Seemingly, you are not able to use the long diagonal yet. However, computer was saying that it's almost winning. Let's see what happens. I have seen some moves made. Yeah, g5, g5 on, f5 the board. on the board. I was well, will Magnus go knight f6 again? no no he goes knight c3 yeah okay he doesn't give his pieces okay but it makes some sense yeah because he wants to kick this bishop away from d5 he loses on the sure. e5 square this is a human approach this is a high class human approach because playing knight c3 with a pawn on g4 and pawn on f6 I think it's an absolutely no go for for humans but g5 f5 knight c3 makes sense how will up to sort of react? Should b3, of course, comes to mind. Queen c6, possibly. Well, the problem with queen c6 is that it's very tempting. However, then white removes the queen to b1, and the bishop has to move. And then it already, the, the queen c6 move loses its attraction. I mean, attraction. You can't go crazy here? Well, you might try, but... I mean, somehow hard to believe, but yeah, justified question. Can we can we go? No, look H for look H is too much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Then also, Queen C six is a move. Humanly speaking, after so there are still seven minutes played fairly quickly until here. Now he will take some time to try to figure out what goes where. Yeah, that's one of the very big strengths of Abdul Satov. Yeah, that he's also capable of playing very fast and good moves. And usually he's uh, always up on the clock. Bishop c6 played. Fast again. Bishop c6, e4. And e4. This is a yeah, very classy. Classy, yeah. Blocking, blocking the bishop. Now we, we can't talk about mating ideas whatsoever, but now everything moved. The, the, the bishop on c6. There is no more nothing eyeing the BC square. The knight on A5 is kind of stuck. And Magnus very nicely combining now all the ideas. Knight, knight takes A4 four on the board. Consistent. Yeah, how do we react? Yeah, because knight a4, bishop a4 is a big tempo, so we might not, and then black might get the chance to bring back the knight to c6. <clears throat> this is maybe not so, ah, but Magnus anyway takes on a4. All right. Here we are. We might see that. 
Bishop takes a four, queen c3 on the board, so knight c6. Magnus pays like you. Mm -hmm. Knight c6. How about g6? H6 and G6. would make sense to include it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... Now I see why it is so difficult to fight against you, yeah? Because you play like Magnus. I've heard that many times. <laughs> Yeah, g6, okay, h6. Yeah, we have to keep it closed. Can we start going crazy? <clears throat> yeah. You could. Yeah, g6 is a very well-timed move, yeah, because h6, knight g5, let's just show this. It's very important. Takes, and then some check. And then queen e6, queen takes a4. I mean, without the light square, bishop, bishop d1, bishop b is a... Beautiful threat, and I don't believe in black's construction here at all. Mm. All right, so g6. But what else? Knight g5 is still a threat. Yeah, well, Change. knight d4. I could then maybe try to play knight d4 here. Directly? Yeah, yeah directly. Mm. And played. Yeah. Okay, I have to. If knight g5 is a threat, what can I do? I hope that you, you are not able to play knight g5 nevertheless. But... Yeah, I was wondering. This I mean, 92 should be too much, but... Yeah. I mean, queen c4, it continues. Yeah, knight takes g3, check, rook takes g3. I mean, it started as a joke, but... <laughs> but uh, is it a joke? Many great things started as a joke. <laughs> wow, what a position. <laughs> what a position. Knight f7 is a checkmating threat. I don't see a defense. Feels like there yeah, should be seven. one. Yeah, rookie seven. I mean, rookie seven. We have always no, rookie seven. Good. And now the question, how do you mate me? Do you have time to take on h7 or rook h3 or whatever? Let's try it. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe. Yeah, we, I feel that it should be now fine. Four, yeah, f4. F yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah many enough, tempting yeah. options, but if it backfires, then why just lose it? So not easy for Magnus to make up his mind. All right, so what's in store for us? Knight d4 on the board. Magnus has still four minutes left. He can take, of course. <laughs> but okay, then there are no more making slats, yeah? Knight d4, ed, tempo. And I think black should be happy. Mm -hmm. So... What else? Rook h3? Yeah, rook h3, is, but then knight e2 and then queen e6. How does this work? Rook h7, king g8. Check queen e6. Maybe it doesn't work. Yeah, and, and then the g6 pawn is... Knight g5 on the board. Let's on go. the board. Wow, that's it. I mean, that was the spirit. Let's go back to knight g5. Trying, I'm trying. The board refuses. Here we are. Knight g5. Ah, uh, yes, I feel that your mouse is not able sometimes to make the move, yeah? It's fine, just sometimes it takes a while to get back to the current position. Okay, so uh, let's deal with knight takes e2. So we are expecting queen c4. <clears throat> there is nothing else. No, I felt like you're also take... using this psychological trick, yeah? Like you are about to deal with some checkmate and uh, how do you react, sir, to my 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 movement, yeah? Rook is seven. And so rookie seven, have... that's the big question. How There's also we... GH, is this a move? We want oh, wow, check. GH, Queen G8. I mean, it looks so stupid, yeah? Usually <laughs> GH helps always black, but... Not here. Oh my God, this is sensational stuff. <laughs> So easy to blunder. Yeah, <laughs> just check it in next move. That's beautiful. Wow. So this, this is, is real. This is real. Just to illustrate this construction, you will have seen before, we don't even need to sacrifice the queen here. It's just checkmate because of the double check. Wow. I mean, this game is about to become a modern legend or classic, whatever. I mean, because if not for rook e7 defense, I haven't seen any defense. I was completely sure that knight g5 is, is strong. Hang on, let's ask the all-seeing eye. Yeah, it gives this a no. Exactly, agrees. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow, but Magnus, but Magnus won like 97. Seven. Yeah, but okay. <clears throat> takes, takes, and now, boo, he's just going for an exchange up, but black has some compensation. Yeah, Instead but okay, the pawn on glory. E5 and pawn on G7 are vulnerable, so yeah, probably it's nice for white. Mm, very I'm, I'm pretty sure Magnus has also missed G takes H7. It was so easy to miss yeah. this. Here he's winning. Um, he wanted to stop this rookie seven defense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this on the board. Bishop G6. It looks like white is breaking through. Takes, yeah, takes. Ex exactly. I mean, okay, black will defend with rook D7. We can just close the engine because, okay, engine's uh, evaluation doesn't... I don't think that it's... Uh, has too much with, with reality in practical play because yeah, white is better, but rook d7, black goes king g8, then uh, the white's pawn structure is vulnerable. I mean, black will try to sit here, but of course, it should be just a matter of time till white slowly grinds yeah, this there down. Are enough targets. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this d4 was a very nice move. Yeah, you solved two problems at the same time. All the problems save this pawn, this pawn, cover the bishop. That's useful. And EF bishop f5 on the board. What a game by Mr. Carlson so far. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And I can already imagine in my mind the, the press conference afterwards when they will say that you missed the mate or something. And I was like, what? How? And then after Ruki said, I ah, gh7. Okay. Mm. And bishop d3 play, does this allow a wow. finish? His point is takes, takes, bishop e4, and he wins material back. Exactly. So what is that? Rook g7 exists? Rook g7, yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, and, just, ah, and you just take with the bishop and go bishop f6, of course. Ah, this is just over. Yeah, and bishop e4, bishop e4 check e4, that rook 7 to g2. Back, and we win. <laughs> checkmate. It's just over. Rook g8 is a checkmate threat, and this... Picks up enough material. Black wins some back with bishop e4, but it's not enough to survive. Not enough, yeah. I mean, this is the this is the typical game when you feel like up loss is uh, absolutely justified. That's it. Abu Sato of designs, brilliant play by Magnus Carlson. Ooh, amazing game of the day so far. I might have to do a game of the day video. This is it, no? Absolutely. Also, it doesn't get any better from sorry. From the names, the world rapid champion against the world champion. What a performance! By it's a modern Mr. classic, Carson. immediate, immediate modern classic. That we see the players debating some lines. Yeah, up to Satorov doesn't look so upset. I think he also feels this was some special play from Magnus. This was very special play, and they froze literally. Let's see what else is still happening. Well, probably plenty of action. Yeah, now we have chance to catch up with with someone else because it's usually a bit hard to figure out what games are still going, what's frozen, and so on. But let's see. I mean, for example, what about Jordan against RTMF? Double exchange sacrifice, but probably it wasn't a sacrifice. It, it was two exchanges up. So we've seen. It's some strange knight of structure. Strange stuff. And yeah, knight a6 looks like he blundered. Knight takes a5, frankly, no? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah. And then it was a miracle that the game was progressing, yeah, and then... Because this, this final position wasn't so clear already. Where we are, no, some, some magic from Artemiev here to prolong the game. It's we see the evolution, but does not agree with the compensation. But humanly, ah, but Jordan has seven minutes on the clock. This is crucial. Yeah, that's why the evaluation bar is so high. Yeah, I, I wanted to say <laughs> that if, if he's done to 20, 30 seconds, then this is a very tricky position, but... Yeah. How do we maintain control? Well, I mean, nothing is threatening yet, yeah? So maybe just 
Okay, no, we have to think. It's not like just, yeah, maybe Rook yeah. db one Rook b 5 Yeah, that's also what I want. <laughs> yeah. Bishop c5. Not Rook b5, Queen b5, cb is 3 Might still win, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe overreacting to give a whole Rook to get rid of the Queens. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Still looks tempting. <laughs> yeah, looks tempting, yeah. Because well, just so to we highlight, just if away. we remove the queen, then we might think that maybe long-term black has compensation, yeah? True. Ah, white played the move queen d2. Hmm. Stopping bishop c5 because of check. Yeah, looks like he's in control. Just queen c2, some rook comes. Yeah, he wants to keep it simple, yeah? Yeah. Okay, king h7, rook f1. Black needs to include the knight into the game, but uh, yeah, rook f1 is also eyeing the f7 pawn. Yeah, looks bad. Yeah, white can always give back one exchange if he feels like, like knight h5, queen d5, or whatever. No. Jorn should win, which would put him on four out of four after. Yeah. Some bumpy spots in his previous games but who cares queen a7 i don't know a5 plate yeah e3 queen c2 check with this pawn here yes yeah i also believe that jordan after this Terrible performance in Sitges is very upset and he wants to really prove that I'm much better than that, right? Yeah. He didn't seem very upset. He's normally a happy, happy go lucky kind of guy. But of course, he is much better than that. And he will will be eager to show it here. And in Vikanze, where he's he's usually done very well the last three years. Exactly. I think now all the participants of Vikans are very angry that why did uh, Jordan lost 15, 20 points in Sitges? I don't know exactly. I'm just guessing. Yeah, it might have been 15 points. Why didn't he gain 15? Everybody wants him with a higher rating. Yeah, I'm not sure it was that much. He won his last two games, but yeah, he lost. He lost some rating for sure. But this Vike tournament, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough anyway. It's I'm not sure if by rating, but it feels like it's one of the strongest fields we've ever seen because um all the quote unquote lower rated guys are now like 18 year olds or 17 year old super talents. Like they have Pragnan and Da, they have Gukesh, I think, Eric Aisi, all the guys. Yeah, Abdul um, Satoru, Vincent, yeah, everybody. Vincent, there. it's it's not gonna be much fun for. And the part of them, you have the, the best players in the world, yeah. Yeah, and then you also have those guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. wow, but uh, it looks like white maybe seven. Be... I would play, yeah. White should be completely winning now. A queen b7 e2, what does he want? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, e2, we can just trade on, on a7 and yeah, then collect take the rookie one and exactly. <laughs> Even if we lose a rook, which I probably will. Ah, yes. <laughs> Actually, yes. That's ah queen and... c8 check. What's it doing? Ah, queen f5 check, yeah. Queen f5, and he wants to take on h5. Yeah, looks good enough. G6, queen f7, so king h8 takes here. Does this continue? No, not really, because f7, e5, I mean, probably you just take on the e5. I mean, you take on h5, e1, you take and take queen takes e5, and you wait for designation. I mean, no more, no more tricks. Sir, yeah. Still have these plans. Yeah. All right. So, okay, here the Jordan is winning. Uh, Nihal is squeezing an endgame. What about Rapport? I see that Eliga is two pawns up. Rich is in a lot of trouble. Mm, yeah, and that's then one too many. Structure. It's finished. Yeah, this is this is hopelessly finished. Jan Yapomyashi managed to survive that incredible attack. How do we win here? Rook H six. So what's the way? Ah, Rook H six and then G four. Yeah. Yes, Rook H six. Yes, the still wins. Yeah, King E five. If Rook before that, Rook H five. 
Yeah, Rook H6 played. Now oh, these guys are too good. Yeah, unfortunate. Swan is losing to Corona, or is he? Oh, maybe not. It's a very special position. Yeah, the bishop on d8 is brilliant. Yeah. Unbelievable. The, the, if the pawn would be on g7, it would be a win. Yeah, then Black's king could march probably towards the queen side. But like this, the pawn is always vulnerable on f6. Only construction. Yeah, hard for Black to do anything. Yeah? King e5, you get a check. <clears throat> yeah, kind of strange. Seems like a draw, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even not so many ideas for yeah, bishop e8. Let's try the, the Tsuk song. Okay, king f3, f5, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop so, a5. Yeah, he waits. just moves yeah. back and forth. And it's important to note that black is once again the wrong bishop. So such a position is always just an immediate draw. We just bring the king. And give our bishop for the g pawn whenever we want. So yeah, it seems like it's just a draw. Yeah, it's a draw. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is a good chance to jump to the female section because it's the last round for, for the females, for the women's section. Just to see if we catch some dramatic. Wow, Gunina is unstoppable. Gunina. Four out of four. Can't stop Gunina, as mentioned. Stenyuk. Yeah, cross Stenyuk against Dalian. Classic French defense. And Elina is Black going to settle for a draw here? Yeah. Because they've been repeating for, for a couple. Yeah, but there, she's been repeating for like five moves. So I think she's taking the draw. Ah, okay, draw. Yeah, too, too much respect. I mean, after all, Alexander Kostanyuk is known to be a monster. So Elena was probably happy to survive. Yeah, maybe left a little on the table there. And Tan Shong Yi against Mamadova. White is a pawn up, but black is very active. Where do you put yeah. this bishop? Yeah. We should see if he runs into a4. Yeah, that's a big problem. This might be a draw then. Mm -hmm. Sure doesn't have any good squares here, just gets hit everywhere. Reminds me of one of the games between uh, Hikaru and Magnus Karsen in the Speed Championship final. There was this martial endgame debate where also Magnus was pawned down, but the knight and look were dominating White's look and Bishop. H3. A3, high class move because just in case for the future, if black ever gets this look c7, look g7 check, then you have more options for, for white's king. Nice little move. And what about right. Elizabeth? Elizabeth is fighting there, but now she's pawned down against Anna Zatonsky. Should be low, but it's a bit tricky position. Oh, well, the board is never simple, like even here. Yeah. Exactly. If you get this. But yeah, black, black should be active enough. Would you start counterplay it directly with g5 or do you wait? Well, you always have to calculate very precisely. If you can, then then it's good. But uh, you have to make Those sure that, that you can. Because who knows, a, g, f, g, then rook, d8, and then some rook, b8, rook, g8 starts to threaten all at once. It's, it's always tricky. Yeah. But okay, so she goes for the uh, the classical one. She opted for giving up the a2 pawn, goes for after the b4 pawn. So we're going to have this b pawn, which is considered to be a better chance than the a pawn. And even with the a pawn, we have been seeing some games that uh, the stronger side managed to win. Yeah, especially with little time. It feels always easier to be the attacker than the defender in these. Of course, now g5, classy. Yep. Elizabeth knows That's correct, now. looking for counterplay. Exactly. This is also against the A pawn. Many times people just sit and wait. No, if you can go for F6, G5 counterplay, it's much more practical. Yeah. Rook C4 trying to use that the black rook did not go behind the rook. However, my experience is that this rook on C4 is, is over. A... It's just as stupid as on B8. Exactly. Isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. I never, I'm never happy with that super rook on the side. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, people overestimate. Yeah, I was uh, trying to find find the word. Yeah, that the, this rook is heavily overestimated. If yeah. if it can sidestep, actually, how do you make progress now? Nothing moves. Yeah, you don't. I could try this, but it's not. It's not exactly a winning attempt. Uh -huh. No, no, this is this is not. No, of course you can try many things, but yeah, rook c five check played. King g six b five. No, no, she, she went plays back, first. Look back. Okay, shouldn't make a draw just yet. At least try this. But, yeah, b five. Uh, still nothing moves. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can argue it's some sort of suit song. Yeah, you would love to give the option for black to make up the mind because gh4 gh4 is tempting but then white will get this fc king gc little yeah, psychological stuff but then you go look before and nothing is happening anyway mm. but yeah so in the game white actually opted for ag5 fg5 structure this gives black so much counter play now because black can always build this passer when needed yeah no i think it was also very impressive technique by elizabeth and okay we can move on because we we trust her here Let's see. Switching back to the open section. What's going on here? Eric Aisi will win this pawn and Richie can resign here with a clear conscience if he hasn't already made the game. Yeah, so I think that uh, seeing that the particular clock, uh, king on d5 usually finished. means that they put the kings here. <laughs> exactly. So. Zasmos will hold. This is no longer very complicated. Or maybe. Okay, he needs it's tricky. Here. Yeah, it's tricky, but I mean, he no, has to don't. keep an eye. Yeah, on this. Mm. How do you yeah, start? Probably. King d two. Ah, trick. Yeah, that if a five, king c one. No, he just waits. Yeah, bishop d two. He wants to force black's king to a four. And we get the message: Gunina has won her game, so she's four out of, of four. Congratulations. Yeah, and if you go and king, king a4, a4, then white plays king d4. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. the systematic approach. And then you are in time to bring the king to c3. Yeah. Cosmo is very well educated in these endgames in particular. Hamburg School of Chess, Carsten Miller, torturing him with all of those things. Yeah, yeah that's true. I, I recall now Rasmus defending some very ugly... Uh, opposite colored bishop position in one of the German. I don't remember if it was in the Blitz Championship or not. And I was surprised that, wow, what a, what a classy defense. Very impressed by Lasmus' endgame technique. Bishop c3, yeah, he's clearing this way. What's he doing? If I but this is strange because uh, the king can't yeah. get to the... Yeah, the bishop. king is not ready. C1 is not enough with the bishop here. Yeah. So what does he want after e5? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bit strange because bishop on just, d2 was so beautifully placed. He, oh, he just, just waits, yeah? Yeah, and of course. Come. Yeah. Pushing his luck a little, but still on time. Yeah? Uh -huh. As long as he knows what he's doing, it's fine. Fabi seems to acknowledge that normal play doesn't win. But last was down to 15 seconds. Okay, so there is some tension. King d4 played. Yeah, he can still sit. Bishop d2 next move. Wow, there is a, there is a player. Yeah, Sam Shankland is facing Alistair back Udazayev. I have to. Not familiar, I must to, to honestly acknowledge that I have never heard of this player, but he's doing so well, and also Nagan Shankland with the black pieces is pushing. Is he, is he winning? Sorry, the game just... Oh, that's a different game. I think the game just disappeared because probably ah, Shankland resigned yeah. after B2. Yeah. Exactly, so beating, beating Sam Shankland. Incredible. Mm. And yeah, Rasmus now with king on c4 should easily hold. Hang on, we can also play king c4 and we just win. Now we like try this, to win or... the pawn, no? No, he doesn't. Why, does, no. why doesn't he go king c5? Win the pawn. Go back. Yeah, he will go back, but. Hmm. Very strange, Jim. Yeah? King c5 was literally picking it up, no? 
Okay, now he gets another Next chance. chance. No, but if Fabio is repeating, it's not the end of the world either. Ah, so King C4 will be C4 for the petition. Yeah. He's an expert claiming it. Yeah, the game is already over. Draw. Good job defending by Rasmus Swanidar. I was curious, that's just the computer being stupid here, because it dropped here after King D3 for a second. Yeah, okay. So just yeah, no, of course. No, no, it's all the dead draw, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's so hard to imagine yeah, anything yeah, yeah. going wrong here. Yep. A Christopher, you against yu just finished. Okay, it, it's a draw. What else do we have? Beat it. Still Beat in it. action yeah. against Shimanov. He's also under been some around. pressure. Shimanov has been a strong player for a long, long time. I once lost to him. I don't know when there was some European Championship. 12 years ago, when he was still young. Very strong player. But it's a draw, yeah? 9 5 You just take and take yeah. here. Not so much to do. Yeah, because I kept an eye on this game earlier on and there was some pressure on, on with it, but yeah, now it's already a draw. Yeah. Will be agreed shortly. This didn't happen. They agreed to a draw. Of course. Whenever we see a move of a king to one of these central squares that doesn't make any sense, means the king's got placed up. <laughs> Ahmed Adli. Not the most exciting of positions. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. it's still a bit unpleasant for Black. Yeah, yeah I was just thinking, how do we make a draw, actually? When G4, F4, F4 rookie seven. Rookie E7, very passive. Very well, passive, on the other hand, uh -huh. it holds, the, holds the structure. Yeah. And just waits with rookie at rookie 7. Yeah, probably a good decision. The white king can't go too crazy with this passer on g4. Yeah, okay, it's a draw. And that, this is it. The other games are just frozen leftovers, like my lunch. So what do we have score-wise? We have Magnus on 4 out of 4. Who else? Exactly. I mean, okay, let's. Jordan let's... and Arjun Ergasi. Three guys, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we get Magnus against Arjun normally by rating, or did Arjun have a lower rapid rating than Jordan? I can't recall. <laughs> no, Magnus think... Jordan would also be fun, of course. I think that uh, Ergasi has quite a lot of uh, rapid rating because in this Calcutta Tata event, he. Has tons of experience and brilliant results all the time. Yeah. Let's see where he is. I think he has just won this. Uh, no, no, he has, event. he has 2628. And that's not that Only, much. yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Give, give 100, 150 more, then it's maybe closer yeah, Jorn, to reality. Jorn has 2693. So if the highest rated player, I guess that's how it works. Not normally, Magnus should play the higher rated of the two. Should play Jorn next round. Also fun, as we know, Jorn worked for Magnus for the last World Championship match, so they know each other well. And yeah, going to be exciting. For sure, yeah. It's uh, I'm suddenly not sure that maybe Arigaishi won the Blitz uh, section of the, the Calcutta Rapid, a Rapid and Blitz event, not, not the Rapid one. Could be, yeah. He's been strong in this champion chess tour events, but they are, aren't are valid for over the board writing. So, yeah, the 2628, we'll have some catching up to do. Exactly, because the point was that Niha won the, won the rapid. So, this is telling me exactly Niha won the rapid and Erigaishi won the blitz. Yeah. There we saw Alexander Injic on camera. Maybe the world's tallest grandmaster. I'm not 100% sure. He's very tall. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, because for a long time we saw like PH is Peter and Nils and a good friend is the the tallest. But well, he's not even that tall. It's the, he's deceptively not tall. <laughs> that's my theory, Peter. He's like one ninety eight. I don't think it's two meters. <laughs> I mean, he was standing for too long next to Vichy and not to Magnus. Yeah, so he looks uh, too tall. Yeah, if you put him next to Kramnik or uh, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Indij then already and no, Indij, I think, is like yeah, solidly above two meters. <laughs> I think uh, we already had this uh, kind of discussion. He, he was two zero three or something like this. It is an important topic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, Magnus against Jordan next round would be a lot of fun. On the other hand, ah, but all all three of them had the white pieces, so the color will not really mean anything. Yeah, Magnus will change as the highest rated, so he should be black against Jordan. According to my calculations, Indrich's position looks very, very drawn. But one side know. is trying. I'm not sure which side. Yeah, the, the Wolf King D5 uh, surprised me because aggressive gesture. Exactly. I would have run out with King B5. I mean, just to make sure that there are no mating nets. Maybe there is nothing anyway. But just King D5 is so funny. Okay, this is a dead draw. So that means for us that we'll be back with. The final round of the day, round number five in, I'm not sure. Depends how long Injured chooses to play this position with. Is he playing for a win? I'm, I'm so confused. Yeah, of course. I mean, okay, the pawn on e4 can never be attacked by the bishop, yeah? So he will just move on king fc, king e2, then move the queen, then try to go king d3, king c4, try to attack this white king. But what's ever going to happen to white? No, nothing. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you can't check like this game. But you see already White is putting the rook to G C. Why? Um, <laughs> yeah, I like, keep the rook here, but okay, it doesn't matter at all, of course. Yeah, of course. He can always go back. Yeah, everything is protected. Everything is cemented. Yeah, this bishop mm -hmm. on F for protecting the E C pawn, the E C pawn protecting the F for pawn. Nothing can ever happen. I was wondering if White is maybe trying to win, like pick up this pawn and then push the E pawn, but it's also a bit of a stretch. Yeah, with King on FC, you can always protect it, yeah. No, no. Come on, guys. There's another round to play. They might just love chess too much. and that's, Yeah, uh... this is excessive chess love. <laughs> Queen 7 King D4, King F3. <laughs> Hanging in there. <laughs> but I'm not sure if this position really is the, <laughs> is the reason why you love chess so much. <laughs> Someone! Do this. Yeah, it, it would be useful. I can imagine that after a certain amount of time, all the players will be starting to gather around the board just to put <laughs> yeah, the that pressure. That would be so yes. annoying. Come on, guys. Yeah, psychological pressure. Enough is enough, yeah. But seriously, it's such a dead draw. <laughs> what is there? Yeah, with 10 seconds increment, White is not running any risk despite being done to 10 seconds. Either is black. Like I don't even think black is better. <laughs> the problem is that there is even not a single move how white can ever blunder anything. That's the other problem. From from black's perspective, in trying to create winning chances, just there is maybe no, yeah. just keep the rook on d4 and then just move. No, the no, king rook to... d4, <laughs> then king fc, queen takes d4, and ah, then king f4 is the go. only way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just if wanted to actually king. highlight this, yeah, that there is this scenario, but let's let's play here king fc and if rook d4, queen d4, and you already lost, yeah. Well, they moved too quickly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they moved away. Yeah, rook d4, queen d4. This is the only thing that one needs to dream. end up. But just don't do this. He won't. I'm feeling he will not do it. Yeah, guys. Move 98. Come on, guys. I think Gadibian is another uh, young Armenian player who is clearly much, much stronger than his rating. Amikon. Can't stop watching. <laughs> it's so intriguing, yeah. It's really not. Even the camera got sick of it. Let's see what's happening in the women's section. Yeah, okay, good news. Queen takes d6 was played, so draw. oh draw. That's it. Oh wow, Elizabeth is still playing this endgame. Mm -hmm. And we also have a good old F and H. Oh, this is a total nightmare. 
I mean, practically speaking, I think that White will win this game. Yeah. I'm just... Yeah, this is Even the last theoretically, game. Theoretically, with the king here, I'm not sure we're in time not to, to get back. But I think we'll... and, and here, this is a completely different scenario because this is the last round in the women's section. They only played four games today. So basically, all the other players don't mind. Please play on as long as you want because we are already leaving back home. Yeah, yeah, we already left. And also here, White has great winning chances. So then, of course, no one really minds. <laughs> Rookie one, that's a strange decision. The rook end games are so complicated. I just looked at a lot of rook end games. I'm still confused all the time. Well, the more rook end games you look, the more confused you get. Yeah, that's yeah. another trick. Mm. But here you could go here and win. No, this black is and, not in and time. Probably you win by four. You switch, because you need to be in time to switch here. That's what I remember, and I don't think you are here. Yeah, you are not because King F6 comes and it's winning. Yeah. So she could just have pushed. But I mean, still, now after Rook E1, Rook H2. Yeah, but Rookie now King H7, is... I think you're in time, no? <laughs> but then King F7. And we switch, no? Then checkmate. Ah, I keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not easy. I mean, the long it... side. But hang on. I this... understand that why she felt like she's doing fine, yeah, with this Rook E1, uh, signaling probably also with body language that, okay, I'm just winning. How do we draw this? Is this a draw now? No, no, we give a check. Okay. And then King G7 and we win, no? Oh, yeah. yeah, right, of course. Yeah. No, no, this is this is a very... Sp I mean, my feeling was after Rook E1 that this is a winning position. Where's the draw? No, just Rook H2. Just lose a tempo and like this. Wait. Okay, Rook G1. Yeah, this happened in the game. Rook G1 played. And now just Rook H4. Okay. Uh -huh. Come yes. on, who has the nerves to, to just sit tight like this? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, now it's apparently yeah, now it's winning. <laughs> yeah, now the king is boxed in, in the corner. You you can never switch with the rook as you explained. I will keep asking why I rook it too for a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. This is easy now. This is for weird. Yeah, this is already something that even we can understand. Finally. And apparently we get the information that around five men in 10 minutes. Could it be true? I mean, the English game just finished a couple of minutes ago. They were quick with the pairings. Why not? It's like they're trying to stick to schedule. Also, time goes by. No, we started at 10 our time. Now it's 3.30 already. There's so much action. One really rarely notices it. But yeah, they've been at it for a while. Exactly, yeah. And apparently the information is absolutely correct. The pairings officer has whispered this big news to Sotiris. Sotiris gave this, passed this news to us and we already all know it. Wow, amazing how quickly news travel in 2022. <laughs> but maybe I should have not revealed this secret truth. Eh? It's <laughs> okay. It's good for people to know. When the next round is coming up, looks like Tanshong Yi is still struggling a bit, making up her mind here. But yeah, this construction now just wins against side checks. You cover, and here rookie eight, and now you just run, run out wherever you want, and then queen the pawn. Yeah. I mean, we know that look and games are tricky, but this one already looks. This really... one, this one, we know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. But I mean, I can't believe that she's going down to five seconds. Something is wrong. With fro the board is frozen or something. Maybe the board froze because I see they're making moves constantly over there. And yeah, she's already up to this winning maneuver. Yeah, it's all on the board. Now, rook a8, rook a8. And then you run out with the king and resigns. Yep, there it is. Rook a8 played. Yeah, she's not hesitating. Mamadova has not yet seen enough. <laughs> and there we are. King E5 resigns. Tan Chong Yi with a strong performance. As usual, we'll be back with round number five, probably with the world champion Magnus Carlsen on four out of four, facing his former second, Jorn van Forest. 
who also is on 100% the winner of Vikings A 2021. See you then. Full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. I'm Shaikun. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Marinus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Dakwari. Hare Krishna Pentala. loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hi there. It's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not! That's because you're not using AIM Chess. AIM Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, AIM Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... Look, just sign up for AIM Chess, okay? Just... 
Come on, literally, why not? All right, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. All right? Jesus Christ. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. It's so much happiness. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.
full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. Welcome back, everybody. We are awaiting the final round of the day with another big clash on the top board. Arjun Erigaisi, one of the big newcomers, rising stars in the chess world, will face the world champion Magnus Carlsen. A pairing we've seen in the finals of champion chess tours recently. Magnus Carlsen has had the upper hand, but he has also lost games to Arjun during this champion's chess tour. Should be exciting, Peter. For sure, and it's very important for Arjun that he plays with the white pieces. Yeah, that's uh, that's clearly very important for him. Very, very aggressive player, and uh, and basically, okay, we have seen Magnus there playing the Peerts defense a couple of times against Arjun. I, I'm not sure that now. I got being, tougher and tougher. Yeah. Exactly, being four out of four, he might want to play more objective chess. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he played whatever his main opening is, e4, e5, or some c5, knight, c6, and see where it takes him. But you never know with Magnus. He could also play the French, or he could play any first move. <laughs> then we see the players hanging out. Boris Gelfand, Michal Kubalia is there. Mm. Yeah, so many incredible players are participating in the championship. Just sensational stuff. By the way, Nakamura has won two games in a row, so after a little slow start, he's now climbing. He will play against Alexander Donchenko also. Tricky spot for Donchenko. Whenever he jumps back, he, he gets an incredible name. Yeah, after Anish Giri, now he faces Hikaru Nakamura. Vincent has also bounced back after his loss, but, and now he's facing Daniel Dubov. Uh, the also big, interesting. Yeah, big, big clashes continue everywhere. Yeah, hard to avoid with such a star-sudded lineup will focus on the battle on board one, but we'll try to keep an eye on everything that's happening. Yeah, which is nearly impossible. Yeah, with so much action going on, I have seen that some players like uh, Vallejo and uh, Naidic are suffering so far. I think they are way below their expectations. However, Okay, we know this event. Yeah, you start winning and then you, you can come back. It's it's never given that only with a good start you have chances. Yeah. My bum bum teammates suffering against all these young, hungry, motivated kids. But Magnus Carlsen is showing that no matter who's in the field, he's still the man to beat on four out of four playing some impressive chess. Especially the, that last game he won against Abdul Satorov was some very special stuff. And we see a name I'm not too familiar with, Istanbek Urazayev on three and a half out of four. Who's that, Peter? Yeah, he has just beaten Sam Shankland. Yeah, that was the game when uh, we yeah. jumped to it. It, it had just ended because Sam resigned. I don't know him at all. However, I mean, the, it just shows that how many great guys are out there who, who we haven't seen. And this event gives a good chance for all of us to, to catch up. Yeah. The other ones, pretty much household names on this list. Vahab Channel having a good event. Giga Kuparazzi, you mentioned, always strong in Rapid and Blitz. Then, yeah. A lot of top stars. Fabi lurking. Hikaru lurking. After Satorov lost that game to Carlson. Still very much in the race. Anish Giri is up there, Nihal is up there, Tuda is up there, Yu Yang Yi, Nipomnishi. It's going to be fun. It's four more games tomorrow, then four more games the day after tomorrow. Is that correct? 13 rounds? 13 rounds. And I believe that last year we spoke about this, that 13 rounds are maybe not enough because there were like 400 players. It, it was some record number of players in, in Warsaw last year. Now that the field is like uh, down to 170 or something like these players, I think the, the 13 runs give a much more objective uh, picture already. Yeah, We see that right from the very start, we have incredible clashes on the top boards. Um, I, I think it's it's kind of nice now. There we see Magnus Carlsen with the chess brass 
and Jordan Van Forest. People look like they're having a good time. I'm yeah, and it to... doesn't look like the action is about to start, looks right? Strong. No, it looks like <laughs> there's still plenty of time till anything happens. I'm not sure if there's either a longer break now, which would be strange, or tech issues. Looks more like tech issues. Everybody hanging out was getting ready. That we have Anish and Fabi Ganguli. And behind them we see David Anton with Cheparinov. Yeah, usually this is the, the happy moment of the players. Yeah, before the game, with all this gathering, you, you are able to talk to your friends, whom you usually don't really see. Yeah, sometimes only in chess Olympiads or the World Rapid Blitz. <clears throat> yes, you are busy with your own play, but if there is a longer break, then you actually can uh, socialize and get some energy talking to your friends. Yeah. Dubov rocking the Balenciaga sweater, testing the limits of the dress code, but it looks like no one's kicked him out. <laughs> Just yet. Talking to Grishuk there. Yeah, Grishuk is also not yet finding to his rhythm. On the other hand, he has faced very strong opposition. So the plus one score, I believe, that he has um, is, is kind of normal. Yeah, if he wins one more game, then he gets to plus two and then keeps on climbing. No, no drama there. Uh, still early, but yeah, you can see the pace at which the top guys are going. Mm. But both MVL and uh, Hikaru are now on plus two. They both have three points out of four. They are within striking distance. Very much so. And it looks like the players are slowly starting the journey to their tables. I guess this is the TV board. No, that wasn't upon the sheet. Mm. Yeah, now also Jan, after winning that uh, or surviving that uh, game against Salem, uh, now he's, he's very comfortable with three and a half out of four. Always very important. Those kind of games which you could have lost, but you won, they basically can't double. Yeah, They boost your confidence. You you believe that, okay, I survived this scare. Uh, it, it, it helps tremendously. We have seen it in Jordan's performance. Yeah, surviving that game against Sindadov and then winning another game and he's already up there with four out of four. You are not questioning yourself. That's the that's the main point because when you lose, Magnus also said it's so easy to, once you start losing, you, you can go on tilt. You start doubting yourself, asking yourself, how could I miss this or that? You, if, if you win, you don't have those thoughts. Yeah, yeah, and then you are just happy and look forward to the next section. Yeah. It's very hard to get rid of this, like throughout people's chess careers, no? Like uh, it's such a delicate balance at once. Some other thoughts start creeping in very, very hard to keep playing to your level. And it even applies to Magnus. No, we've seen him have tilty days at these, at these events. Often it's just one bad day, and then the next day he's back in action. But it can be enough to, well, put him out of contention if someone else really catches fire. Not so far. There we see Anish Giri and Jan Nepomnesi lining up for another top stars battle. The world champion, also, as usual, one of the later ones to arrive. It makes it to his board, where he will face the Iceman, Arjun Erigaisi. Always looks very disinterested in what's happening. But I'm sure on the inside, he is not at all. For sure, yeah. It's, there was also this incredible announcement, yeah, that he got some fantastic sponsorship, five-year deal. Yeah, one and a half million over five years. So 300k that he can use on training and his career. It's great exactly. to see so much support there for the rising Indian stars. And some games are starting. I don't see them yet. I'm sure we'll get there in a minute. I can see d4, not f6, knight c3 on the board. The very soft opening, as I call it. But I don't guess have we're the games having yet, yeah? Somehow. issues with the PGNs, as we've had all tournament, frankly. But eventually, they should hopefully show up. I mean, somehow it doesn't run so smoothly as it should, yeah. Yeah. It's a big event and so on and so forth. Okay, we can see the position on the board. D4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, bishop f4. 
And Carson's thinking if he's ready for the main line, which I guess is still C5, E3, C, D, E, D, A6, or if he wants to play it more slowly with E6 here. Other moves are But also as well. A6 used to be a big move, yeah? Yeah, C5, E3, and then either C, D, E, D, A6, or A6 directly, no? Or you mean here? No, I think already on move three. Okay. A6, A6 was a move. At, at some point, it used to be the most popular one, but then some development happened and the people moved away again. Yeah, it's it's a fashionable stuff. Yeah. One thing you shouldn't do is knight bd7, then you resign after knight b5, but probably Magnus is aware of that. Um, and yeah, he does play a6. There you go. Yeah, this was the old. I think like in 2016, people were saying that, okay, this knight c bishop f4 Joa variation is refuted by a6. Oh, no one told me. And yeah, they're no, playing b5, h4, like those were the most normal moves in the world. Exactly. Kids I think this days. h4 is the new development. Yeah, it's... Uh, in any position. People are doing this. Arjun doesn't seem surprised. And we do have the games... Here we are. What's the idea? If I go e6, let's say, you just push h5 and then take it from there. Magnus doesn't allow h5. He goes h5 himself. It's really, it's a new world that this h4 and the pot must be stopped at all costs. Black goes h5. Who cares about king position? Yeah, but now the e5 square gets much more vulnerable. Yeah, maybe white can go knight fc, knight e5. Okay, knight fc, bishop g4 nice will bishop be played immediately. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is an argument to start with bishop e2 first. Yeah, that mm -hmm. to make sure that if knight fc, bishop g4, then we can go knight e5 because this knight on e5 could be very annoying. Yeah, it's often the idea also of this. You're not checkmating with this, but once the knight lands on e5 now, it's much harder to shift with with f6 because this square is weakened. So let's see how Arjun handles this. Well, he goes knight f3 anyway. He allows bishop g4. And Magnus says, no, thank you. Interesting. All right. Okay. But this is some kind of an achievement for white. Yeah, now knight e5 and so on. Hmm. Isn't yep. this what white is playing for? I would guess so. Guess Magnus also inviting it just to keep board full of pieces the, the big question is how is black ever gonna castle because short castle after putting the pawn h5 will be very difficult i believe castling is so 2010s he'll just keep his king there ah. okay but i understand you will play bishop b7 you will play c5 bishop e7 knight b7 knight c6 whatever yeah you keep on developing rook c8 but but in the long run at some point you will have to castle I don't think it's queenside, so it will be kingside when the other battles are fought. And this opens my mind that, for example, something like bishop e2, knight e5, rook h3, king f1, king g1, is that a setup that may white could look forward to just not castling at all, uh, bringing the rook to activity? Maybe on the queen side, I'm going to play the small little move a3 just to stabilize my knight on, on c3. I'm not sure how black is then in long run planning to to play this position this is what really excites me right now we'll find out arjun taking a moment here wondering what to start with a5 bishop e2 a3 you mentioned it and the bishop goes to d3 okay yeah bishop d3 also fits yeah it, it keeping the square really for the knight yes exactly so he does not want to jump knight e5 because probably he does not want to let the knight raids happen so easily. Yeah? Maybe he also envision some scenarios where the knight goes here, although that seems less likely. Should be interesting. All pawns, all pieces still on the board. Arjun. Not afraid of the world champion, or at least if he is, it doesn't mean he's trying to play solidly exchange pieces. He's trying to get as full a game as he can. Yeah, also in the champions chess, too, I remember his game against Wesley So, where he played some London system and got a very nice position. We were commenting with uh, Rustam Kasim Janov, and we were both shocked. Like, you know, you just play your, your London stuff and against these incredible players. Yeah, like Wang Liam. In fact, uh, against Liam and uh, also against Wesley, he got a wonderful position. 
92, C5, C3 plate. Striving for some more harmony. Knight BD set up. Knight BD7. White's position looks nicer, no? Okay. Really? I mean, I think Magnus is very unhappy. Or, or let's put it that way, that if he would be white, he would be extremely happy now. Yeah. This knight b7, it's no big deal, but it's standing in the way a little bit. No, no more bishop d6. This other knight can't Yeah, I wonder here. if queen b6 followed by bishop yeah. d6 is Magnus's idea. Yeah. Now knight g5 comes here. Yeah, very logical with the way the pieces are, because you don't have to worry about bishop d6. E5 but what breaks. about the very original and very strange looking queen e7 move with the idea to go e6, e5, and long castles? Oh. Uh, is that a move? Well, no, it's asking me to. Try to open the queen side, maybe no. <laughs> That's true. You, you know, this is what happens if you don't play chess yourself. Yeah, you get excited by all kinds of things. Over the board, it would have maybe crossed my mind, but only for a second and say, no, thank you very much. Okay, queen b6, bishop d6 looks like a solid plan. C. If thing is, then maybe white takes and goes f4. No, no you switch to some sort of stone wall. No allowing yeah. any e5s. Yeah, but there is no easy solution for black. No, doesn't look great. I find it quite intriguing. I haven't really seen Magnus being outplayed in the first uh, 10 moves without any theory. Yeah, that's true. Queen 6 played. But one could argue that, in fact, this is theory that h4 is strong and what's and your move a4 is <laughs> on the board. Yeah, also, also logical, stopping bishop d6 for now. If black has to commit to c4, of course, it becomes a different game. Exactly. Then all this uh, stonewall strategy that you mentioned might even gain in strength. <clears throat> what should he do, though? c4 and b4 looks, looks tempting, but maybe it's bad. Maybe he's not ready for opening this side. I'm not sure. Yeah, a5 first, yeah? yeah. This is very nice. Kicking the queen away. Doesn't have a great square either. And then yeah. We can start business here or bishop a4. Yeah, yeah. It looks Okay, much. let's just show that queen b5 runs into bishop a4, trapping the queen. That's why you have to put the queen in a very unfortunate yeah. spot. Yeah. That's it. So, yeah, Magnus taking his time, pretty sure that he's not feeling comfortable. And in the fifth game of the day, when you are anyway very exhausted, this is very tricky. Yeah, c4, bishop c2, bishop d6. Probably Magnus will... He, he wants to get some stability, even mm -hmm. if he, he knows that he might be worse, but first get stability and then take it from there. Yeah, bishop d6. Yep, you were right. I mean, at least after this, bishop d6, queen d6, f4, this, this position stabilized, yeah, that Maybe black plays g6, then knight g4, and then black starts uh, the grouping. Maybe even closing down everything with f5. I don't know how bad it is. Eventually, at some point. But for the moment, it's up to Arjun to decide how he wants to. Because somehow this takes, takes f4 also takes away from white the, the initiative. Yeah, Then it's a very statical stuff. Very positional. On the other hand, I remember Levon Adonian was mentioning something that Arjun is a very nice uh, strategical player. Yeah, that it's yeah. because sometimes I had the feeling that he's very aggressive, but then when I heard it from from Levon and I paid some attention to Arjun's games, then I understood that yeah, there is this fine touch. Yeah, that, that's why he's very universal. You're thinking about it. Let's do a very quick tour through the other clashes. Duda versus Jörn van Forest. We have whatever you want to call this, Marozzi position. Yeah, it's a Marozzi. But it came from a Zemish uh, King Sindhen, yeah. Yeah. What about this one? Nepomnashigiri. What was this? Uh, some trendy stuff. A3 takes, takes. Bishop D3 is what Ding used to beat Nakamura in the final round of the candidates. Some options here. And Kiri goes for CDED G6, interesting. Yeah, modern chess at its finest, yeah, that you are always able to, you are open minded, switching the ideas. It's probably it's... just equal, right? I mean, rook D6 or something if you. 
yeah, should be fine for black, but I'd be cautious against Jan with the knight. Yeah, rook d5, I'm not happy. Rook d5, I, you take rook c1, preferred, yeah. Yeah, I, I prefer to... rook d6, rook ad, just to hit this d4 pawn as much as I can. Yeah, because this looks like some old typical Borvinic stuff where you can run into trouble yeah. very quickly. Okay. Of course, black is very solid, yeah, but queen e7. Queen e7 is possible. It's not the end of the world, but it feels like some, some yeah. pressure. Queen f4, knight g4, or h4, whatever they yeah. <laughs> I mean, you create some luft, and uh, there is this potential danger with the knight on e5 against the bishop on d5. And now Anish is taking his time. Look at this. I Oof. mean, otherwise, so ED, you would never even consider ed5 unless you are scared a little bit of something. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, rook d5 maybe was a little too rushed because he had 12 and a half minutes. Our new friend. But Ooh, that's Zayef. the trick. Yeah, just let me add this one so that when you play against Jan and Jan keeps on blitzing his moves, you are also feeling tempted to play as fast as you, you can. Sometimes th this exactly uh, brings you to make some mistakes. Yeah, that's what Jan is waiting for. But it's so difficult to calm yourself down when your opponent blitzes everything. Yeah, keeps blitzing. Takes Rook C1. Yeah, some pressure now. And what this about who does I have? I don't know, it seems in trouble against Fedoseev. Some trendy line, this bishop d3 pawn sacrifice, which people used to not take seriously. But recently, there have been developments here. White just leaving the tension, asking black, I'll make all the useful moves. Please take on c3 and develop my pieces. h4, h5, a3. That looks like something's gone wrong for Razayev. I'm not sure where. Maybe after g6, he weren't supposed to play b4. Well, my first feeling is that he picked the wrong guy. I mean, Fedosev is so creative and he loves this type of chess that uh, you should be more conservative against him. Possible. Or you have to know your stuff incredibly well. Yeah, just to... Okay, let me play and confuse. My opponent will not work against Fedosev. He's, he's looking for confusion. Exactly. Donchenko yeah. against Nakamura... This, ah, this fashion another line. trendy line. Somehow it's never so easy for black. It looks like black should be doing great, but somehow it's, it's like an anti martial right? From opposite mm. colors. Yeah. But I mean, when, when I look at the computer evolution, claiming that white is better here, I find it quite hard to believe. Yeah, it is that black yeah, should be active well. enough. Great. H5. Wow, move. what a move. Mm hmm. Stopping knight g6, yeah? I mean, but knight g6 yeah. wasn't really an issue anyway. Yeah, hinting at this, and I can come here. Hinting at this, yeah. Suddenly, after bishop h, that even this move exists, yeah? And then if you get knight d5, there are ideal scenarios for white, how you can be better. Yeah, Donchenko playing well. Let's get back to the clash on the top board. Where after bishop d6, Erigasi just castled. Carlson went knight e4, trying to free himself. Still under oh, some pressure. Oh, yes, exactly. Very suspicious. Very sus, Chad. Very sus. <clears throat> yeah, pawn on h5 is kind of hanging. Yeah. And the knight on g5 is such a monster. Now we see that why this pawn on h5 is so misplaced. Yeah. It <laughs> Gives this incredible outpost for Wine's Knight. Yeah, what's he going to do? Here, here, looks unpleasant. Huh? Well, the position is already unpleasant. The question is, sure. which one is the least unpleasant? Yeah. Exactly. And also very unpleasant in the sense that so difficult to to play fast from the black side. Yeah, you feel like one mistake can cost the game. In, you know, and bishop e7 played wow. This is a master touch. This is a super deep move. I mean, we don't know exactly the objective evaluation, but the feeling is that first of all, you change the character of the game, and you keep some some dynamic that can that feeling wise might eventually work for you. But the pawn on e4 is hanging. How does it work? Knight takes f6. Yeah, that's the idea. Like knight three takes. Yes. But if knight 5 takes e4, then if you take on h4, there is a knight d6 check. 
Hmm? Not ideal. Now he just wants to give the pawn and but okay, move if you on. give the pawn and I will return to g5. I understand. Maybe he just takes on h4 and but knight d6 check, you can't even play king e7 due to knight f5 check. So you have to put the king even then to more awkward spot. Yeah, this can't be it. Yeah, it can't be it, but then what is it? I don't know. We are not Magnus. I mean, it might have been just a desperate idea. Maybe after 94, he believes that, okay, somehow I can play for compensation. Maybe an F6 or something. Yeah, but... yeah, that's what I thought, but it doesn't look very, very tempting either. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, white has some bizarre pieces, yeah? So there is some argument behind it, but still doesn't feel like it should be the way Magnus wants to go. On the other hand, now if, if I don't... Ah, but hang on. There are also some... But okay, we don't want to take the h5 pawn, then we open up the h5 with g6. Look, takes h4 to follow. That is not recommended. It's all about, is white able to capture this pawn on e4 nicely or not? So, okay, let, let me, do you want white or black? Uh, you, you can take the pawn if you want, then I will defend with the black side. Okay, give me the pawn. I go f6. Hmm. Okay, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> I mean, the idea is just to highlight that if knight d2 comes, then g5 suddenly traps white's bishop. Yeah. So you can't remove the knight, and somehow these knights are a bit awkward. Yeah, f3 is tempting me, but then I no longer attack the pawn, which I exactly, would yeah, like to do. Uh, and besides, I still have some e5, then I have some e5 ideas then, because e okay, pawn is hanging, but whether we want to weaken the structure, it's another question. Let's play actively. Okay, takes, takes. Takes, takes. B3, so bishop d5. Take. B3, bishop c4. Mm. And you claim pawn is a pawn, yeah? True. Name pawn is a pawn. Yeah. Not pawn is not. All right. Pawn. So this is one one option. No, and Arjun goes queen c2. He shows respect. He doesn't take the pawn. He wants it though. Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe after knight e4, just bishop takes h4, knight d6, check king f8, and then playing this double h position, uh, he did not like. Yeah, even though be. it looks quite promising for white. He might think that he already has the advantage. Why to go for any complication? Now he's starting to take knight f. Knight three takes e4, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, then f6. He could go back. Yeah. So the question is, if black plays now the move f5, do we get punished? Looks so loose, but maybe it's possible. Yeah, I mean, there is also some a5, queen c6, d5 idea, almost almost hitting, yeah, yeah, yeah. but maybe we can just take the pawn and then go back with the queen to c6. Rook d1, queen c6. There might not be any follow-up. Yeah, this looks, mm -hmm. this looks fine. So this idea does not work. Okay, then after f5, how does white plan to break through? Of course, strategically a very ugly move. On the other hand, okay, we might even be able to take bishop g5 and king f7 and sit. If I try to open here once again, I don't know, b3, let's say. Yeah, this takes takes b3 and yeah, not, not taking on a8 yet is clever. He's very smart. And Magnus taking his time, okay, he's up on the clock because also Arjun invested a lot of time on on this queen c2 business. Very tense. Yeah, both sides taking it very seriously. And it's the fifth round of the day. 
players are exhausted. On the other hand, one one could feel that uh, Magnus's games went quite smoothly. Yeah, he didn't have this incredible ups and downs. Yeah, that game against uh, Tomaszewski was very tough, but uh, still, it was more or less. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that complex. Yeah, it was bad for one or two moments. Part of that, he was under in control. Yeah, and even though he was objectively worse, looked like his game plan. Worked out nicely in that one as well. Keep it complicated. And then when he had this one chance, instead of forcing a draw, he risked it. So, yeah. No, he's been playing very well, practically. And let's see if he finds a way in this game as well. Yeah, no, it's very tough. I mean, of course, I hate moves like F5. But if I'm already suggesting it or, or mentioning it, it means that it's not so easy for Black to... To come up with an idea. Well, you could go F6, at least making this And then transport take to here. this line. Yeah. No, I'll play some move, but... But on FBI, anyway, it felt like Quincy 2 was the strongest move there as well. Once taking the pawn yeah, against F6. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. Yeah, down to seven minutes. Not easy. Is, for example, Bishop take G5 a move? Yeah, maybe this is what Magnus is thinking about that. Then if I want to, or if I will have to take this pawn on uh, this knight on g5, then maybe I should not weaken with f5. You have to take with the bishop, I'm guessing, yeah. Ah, but then f6, bishop f4, g5, a, g, e5, I could win the piece. But where does this lead, yeah? So what, what is after bishop take g5? What an idea, let's just show this, yeah, that f6 hitting the bishop. Bishop f4, g4, hitting the bishop. And after a, g, e5, trapping the bishop. Okay, white will get... It's a, a high price, though, maybe in this position. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, okay, this position is whether you get crushed or it will be fine. Yep. So, yeah, it, it just shows that it, it, it's a very messy position and it's absolutely justified that Magnus takes the time. There's also HG, which... I'm but sure okay, I then know. we get a lot of dynamics, yeah? Okay, first we need to protect the E4 pawn. Yeah. So here, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, then whenever I do this, I'm so worried of all these d files, but maybe this is... I'm worrying too much. Let's try it out. Yeah, queen... I mean, ED knight F5 looks very unpleasant. It's disgusting, yeah. Yeah, so queen d5. Maybe I shouldn't have gone ab. I don't know. Wow. So High this. class. Look at d1. Yeah, avoiding the trade. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because yeah, just trade and rook, other rook to d1. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, and this looks very dangerous. Yeah, this looks. I mean, queen d6 comes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Queen c5, bishop d6 potentially. I mean, of course, I can play queen d3, the stylish queen d3, and it's yeah, not, not a joke. Rook d3 takes and then h4. ED and H4, I'm kicking this knight. Suddenly yeah. that is intrigue. And then knight C1, mm -hmm. whatever. Of course, it's it's more like a joke. Yeah, Magnus opts for mm -hmm. Queen C6, but a beautiful joke. It's a pretty joke. Queen C6 played. Making it tough to take here because of F5 and checkmates. But once again. All these D5 ideas are appearing on the horizon. Exactly, yeah. But uh, as long as we have a bishop on E7, then we are covering the D6 square, yeah? So after queen D5, rook D1, queen C6, we don't have to worry about rook D6. Contrary to the previous position, yeah, this is very important. The bishop on E7. Looks like this still sort of works for F6. Can we play the dumbest possible way? <clears throat> yes, probably can, but... I mean, hang on, Magnus has... Maybe then he wants to tap the bishop. Can he tap the bishop or not? No. How can... I mean, with bishop takes g5. Bishop takes... That if bishop takes then f6 and then this g5, e5. But I have this square. <laughs> ah, now you have this square. So your idea with e5, d, g5, no, no, you can I still do it. e5. Uh -huh. 
Ah, but even here I'm getting counter play. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, this is not so clear. All of a sudden. Let's play. Yeah, there is some play. Definitely there is some play. This, I guess I'll find a square somehow. Yeah, e6, yeah, e6 is, is a move. All right, but it just goes on to show how complex it is. Yeah, queen takes e4 on the board. Yeah, Arjun finally grabs the pawn. And let's see how Magnus is planning to hmm. react. Yeah, I was also wondering about this. And if f6, knight takes e6, looks like it should be better for, better for white, no? Yeah, and, and Magnus just plays knight b6. Wow, so it's a Ooh. completely possession upon sacrifice. Might be born out of necessity. He didn't like any of the more forcing lines, so he goes for this. Also not hopeless. No, he does have bishops. He has some space on the queen side. Exactly, and he claims that the knight on g3 and the knight on g5 now suddenly is quite far away. So a, b, a, b. Knight is heading towards a4 or, or to d5, depending on the situation, because the most tempting option would be from white side to take on c6 and push e4 with the trade or without the trades, but mm -hmm. just to, to grab the, the center. But there is some dynamic. Yeah. Still looks better for white, but this, this knight being able to close the door is very important. Yeah, and then force white. Okay, probably you are not setting yet to take. Maybe you can play that, that you are highlighting knight f3. Yeah, just to come back now, setting knight e5. This. Yeah. We're going to see this. Yeah. Life goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop c6 on the board. And if you don't play e4, then okay, black has different type of compensation. And after e4, some other type. Yeah. e4 on the board. Now, the big question is, does black take on a1 or puts the knight on a4 immediately? This is, I think, very hard to evaluate that which one is better. And also, Magnus doesn't know, yeah? He does not blitz it out. He is still almost a minute up on the clock, but... a tough decision. Do you have any preference, Jan? No, I'm I'm confused. It doesn't look too bad for black, it feels, with the bishops and the space, but it's, it's a, such a non situation. Yeah. yeah, the knight on g5 is kind of annoying, yeah, that we can't play f6 because of e6 hang and we can't play king d7 because the f7 pawn is hanging. Yeah. And castles. Just castles. Whoa. Wow. Amazing. I haven't seen it coming, but once mm. you have it on the board, you are you you start to appreciate that wow, this is a this is a great move. Takes what does he want? Just then take probably here, takes here. and takes on exactly. And this it's is fine. Probably not too bad here. Pawn down, but we choose weak. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I have a feeling Magnus is going to be okay. Nice move. Yeah, I mean, okay, this queen c6, yeah, that finding this way of, uh, because the position was really critical. And knight takes h5, no, no, I'm not a believer in this. Now Magnus is out of the woods. Question is, could there be scenarios where white gets some trouble on this queen side? Probably not yet. <laughs> I mean, these, these type of moves like short castle and this queen c6, knight b6 concept, giving up the the pawn just like this, but trading the queens and opening up the light squares, light squared bishop is, is strategically speaking really impressive. Hmm. But what, yeah, now h takes g5 and then bishop e5. Yeah, Arjun is absolutely right. He, he goes for it. And if I'm 
reading the bar correctly computed and like this knight bishop takes g5 move actually yeah wanted to start with knight a4 and so black was fine well now after hg once again some questions yes i mean bishop e5 will be a very annoying question yeah so he took on four, just... bishop e5 takes takes look a8 he's relying on knight a4 counterplay he's willing to give up the queen the king side here so if takes takes something takes knight a4 is it enough well magnus is indicating that yeah if if i trade all the heavy pieces off then uh then i'm probably fine now the big question is is it justified from white side for example to keep the rooks and go to e1 in order to be able to create some mating net <laughs> against black king, but bishop g6 forcing knight take g7 and then the knight on g7 is trapped yeah it could get very sharp also some knight d5 yeah just controlling every everything and then b4 rook a2 yeah, completely out of control maybe king f8 if we find the time to not allow this interesting even my voice disappears from the excitement Oof. two two minutes for arjun and very tough call yeah because after rookie one it's a very ambitious move but also white is taking immense risk yeah he can eventually even lose the game while after rookie eight it's clear that you can never lose but maybe you might not win Let's see what Arjun goes for. I'm also not sure you can ever lose this. You shouldn't, of course. But no, I mean, you can play Bishop some... D6. I mean, you can play Bishop D6. Ah, yeah, like this. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, okay. That's a good one. But I mean, in this case, you will not win the game. That's the point, yeah. He did take. Knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe Bishop D6, protect the pawn, then play F6, King F2, just very slowly, systematically. Because this pawn on g5 is a monster. Yeah, very unpleasant. But King h7, knight f4, we don't get that. We need there. to protect this b2 pawn. We don't want to give it because then all this b4, knight d1, knight x6 will be too much to handle. Yeah, yeah bishop d6 is a nice move. Yeah, and then, okay, Magnus will definitely activate his bishop with bishop e4 before white gets f in. That's that's clearly the the move, and then okay, F C. You keep the bishop in on the diagonal. Maybe you put the knight on D five. After that, you are controlling uh, controlling the squares. But be careful. Then I <laughs> might return with bishop to E five. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's good. Huh. Yeah, tricky position. Very tricky. But Arjun less has less than a minute. Yeah, he's played bishop D six yeah. though. Okay, he's good. I mean, especially with, with one minute on the clock, you need to keep things under control. And now, you know, okay, I'm going to go FC, King F2. I will get 20, 30 seconds with my next couple of moves. So time is not an issue and I will be torturing my opponent. And this opponent is Magnus Carlsen, which is always very, should be a very pleasant feeling when, when you feel like you are the only one who can win. Yeah, Magnus looking for a way here. There's not so much material left to spice it up once his bishop's here. There's no real targets. Yeah, not, not easy. Yeah, Magnus has a lot of time, so he would love to complicate matters, but after bishop d6, there is no way to complicate. He, he needs to find a good... A uh, king h7, he is threatening king g6. Yeah, I thought about this, but knight f4. Okay, then but then knight d5. Mm -hmm. And if g6 check, we go back king g8, yeah, to be super professional. Gf, king okay, f7, still, okay. Still some mas massage incoming. Huh? Yeah, the massage <laughs> incoming, but we should hold this. Then g5 trying to go g4, yeah, okay. Very interesting. Okay, the bishop first. first. Yeah. Makes a lot yeah. of sense. Makes sense as usual, stopping g6. No, he will hold it, yeah. He will hold it and I will say that he absolutely deserves to hold it because he, he got into a lot of trouble right, right at the start. Yeah, this h4, h5 uh, was clearly benefiting white. However, after in these terrible complications, when things got out of control, 
this whole concept of queen c6, knight b6, and then finally going for short castle deserves to hold the game. Yep. Knowledge five on the board. What does he want? King g6, g4, yeah? Yeah. On the other hand, talking about this, who deserves what? Chess is not about deserving. I mean, how many guys have lost games where they, they would claim afterwards that I deserve so much more? It's brutal. <laughs> yeah. Usually in most games there are some moments where you aren't lost or you could have made a draw or pushed harder for a win. One always deserves a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now Magnus Still also work. taking his time, yeah? Yeah. Because King G6 is very tempting. On the other hand, if it works, it's great, but it can also play into White's hands. Yeah, G4, King G3, Bishop F8 is coming, targeting the G7 pawn. I mean, be careful. Things are not so easy. Hmm. Yeah, there's no clean way, no? Like G6, the knight can escape if it so chooses. <clears throat> yeah, g6, yeah, exactly. If if the nice. knights remain on the board, then we can go the so dark. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. No, we don't want to do that. All right, clock situation is slowly equaling out. Yeah, f6 or something would be kind of natural, yeah, just trying to. But as long as white keeps the f g4 pawns, he has a chance. Yeah, I was also wondering how bad something like this is. Just, just change as many pawns as we can. Yeah, this was the very first uh, line that I considered. It was the most natural as well, yeah. I was wondering if knight e8 and then trying to get the knight to d6, does this make some sense? Magnus goes f5, finally. Directly, yeah. And if g f, he wants g f, I guess. Yeah, and then he probably just wants to sit. Yeah. Sit tight. He has a blockade. Knight on d5, bishop on c2. It <laughs> should be enough to hold. Very confusing to have a position where white can play. G takes f in two different ways. <laughs> yeah, never seen it before. Yeah. Exactly. Is it a unique position? Some some chess historian <laughs> needs to, to check this. I'm sure this has happened. Uh, King g3. He doesn't go for either gf. No, F3, F3, but now his knight is sort of trapped. Knight is Bishop kind of, eight. Exactly. Bishop F8 will be the question. King F7, seven. super clever. It's but Bishop G6 E5. G6 for the draw. Yeah, but then G6. Ah, no, Bishop E5, way. G6. Hmm. Yeah, correct. So you will have to move the king then first. Yeah, King H4 or something. But spare. I mean, anyway, these double pawns are not terrible because you can always dominate this knight even with the bishop. And I know it's, it's yeah. hope. I mean, hopeless to... To win from white side, and all of a sudden, yeah, we have we have enough jumps and counterplay. This looks yeah. fine. <laughs> I mean, uh, white lost his grip with FCG for pawns. Should be a draw, and yeah, I think our German understands he's no longer better. It was knight f four, which is basically a draw for, and it gets accepted. Yeah, there's no dead draw. <laughs> exactly. Now bishop d one, and both sides will just sit. And we, yeah, all right. It it was a scare, but Magnus showed his class. The man does I mean, Jordan also messy position. I mean, but Jordan was under heavy pressure throughout the game. The big question will and look at this. He's very fast. Yeah, he's up on the clock. Do that down to ten seconds. Yeah, how to react? Probably black escapes. Looks like it. <clears throat> Donchenko is, uh, I was going to say, is better against Sicaro, but he's actually not better. He would be seven, just no, regains not, the pawn. Yeah, not at all. I mean, okay, you can take, take, and then go rook d1 and then take on d6, but uh, we all know that this is a dead draw. Yeah, probably. The pragmatic way to do it, though, at least you gain a pawn. You don't risk anything. Yeah. Bishop c6 played. And this on the board. Yeah. 
Even three four here should just be drawn. Yeah, or king h. Yeah, it's it's just a draw. And three four play to h four g three. We probably don't want that. So I guess everything just disappears. Takes takes takes. Well, huh? wow, yeah. Fabi has a very funny bishop on a seven with the white pieces, but it might be a monster bishop because you can't get to the b six pawn and it looks very promising. Knight e5, heading towards c4. Yeah, it's understandable that black wants to block some files. Wow. But okay, let's get back to Duda because uh, I think that he is very low on the clock. He sacrificed the pawn in order to, to play for, in, for the initiative. And look at this, GF, EF, Knight, G4. That's the idea. The Aragaisi Cousin game has officially ended in a draw at this point. So we are moving on to other games. But Knight, G4 here. Yeah, Knight, G4, King, E7, Knight, X, F6, King, F6, Rook, X, D7. It's still tricky. Takes. This could be bad. Or I mean, maybe you call because of Rook, B6. <laughs> Or yeah, G yeah, GF works as well, yeah. And draw barely. So that goes knight g eight. Knight g eight, what a move. Lovely. But how much it changes, yeah, you can still go king f seven. Yeah, sure it does. Takes take, so we get this position. And GF five, very nice. Looks because first I was tempted to calculate all this rook b6, rook takes d6 business, and that that was kind of tricky. But then gf5, of course, is is the simple way. This also draw, but, uh, yeah, should should be, but yeah. And yeah, it's on the board. Gf5, I think rook d6, king e7. E5 only chance, E5 but okay, yeah, look h4. Take on f5, look h4. How simple is this? Oh, we have a check. Yeah. I was say here. Exactly. We can give this check and now we can offer a draw. Uh -huh. Yeah, good defense by Jordan. Found found his play. We'll end this day on four and a half out of five sh in shared first. Job. Hope I didn't jinx him with that little speech, but yeah, he's not losing this. Yeah, and also surviving this tough position against Duda, that, that's very important. E6, rook h5 doesn't really help, so the rook will go somewhere, he'll give this check, and then make a draw. Yep, there we are, draw agreed. Draw agreed, so what do we have? Ah, Vincent is hmm. against, up against Dubov. In an unpleasant position, what is it? 30 seconds versus 48. Yeah, white has the bishops 93. Attacking it's a double some attack, yeah. Dubov sacrifices the pawn on b2 in order to go for initiative, but king c5, then we have bishop c4 protecting against bishop d5 check. Bishop but then e5. bishop e5, oof, 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 then it's tricky. Maybe bishop d7. Ah, bishop d7 and then like this here. you defend yeah very nice yeah. spot yeah, on the board d7 played. yeah then it should i mean if we don't lose the knight then it's fine yeah and we shouldn't be losing the knight great all right that would be a great save because dragons do both to play with the black pieces and who knows? Dubov might overpress, yeah. He but yeah, Bishop E2 traps the knight. Bishop B3 makes sure that D1 square is protected. Yeah, with this diagonal on the control, I don't see how white has any winning chances, really. Yeah, and the pawn on A4 protects the bishop. Yeah, he can try to go after this knight, but but then C4 has square too many defense. squares. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. So this then. Vincent is holding. 
Mm. Vidi te against Murci, no, okay, this, I ah, know, this is Kupa Radzi against Rosmos. Yep, sorry, Rosmos is probably losing. He's in a lot of trouble, yeah. Mm-hmm. Vidi it should be a draw. Sarana, legend, is winning here. The and right. he's coming, yeah. He's right winning position. and then he's climbing to plus three, probably. Yeah, a lot of tough battles. Still being fought there. Fabi, is he still winning? Or is he winning at all? Okay, six, king, c5. Probably not. Probably not. But it's still very dangerous, yeah? Because if knight c4, then you trade the rooks, you go bishop d4, and you can lose this position. <clears throat> Actually, so it's a very risky position. Yeah, then just takes, takes, and the opponent game is winning. Yeah, king c4 played by Shimanov. Very important, because you can't pin the knight, because the bishop is... Lost on a7. This was the saving move. Yeah, now it's counterplay. Mm -hmm. Good job by Shimanov. Let's see. The Keimer game. But yeah, Keimer never really has any winning chances, does he? Uh, maybe well, you never know. I mean, okay, out. Dubov now went down on the clock and he, he did apparently some... What about this? Inaccuracy. Yeah, knight g2. Yeah, bishop d2, a3. Yeah, you, you're going to go like this. Sure. Not bishop sure if it's winning, but we achieved something. Exactly. Bishop mm. c3, bishop e6 back, and then opponent f4 is dropping. Mm. Wow, suddenly a chance. Oh, oh he missed it. And misses it. Knight c2. Okay, still. Also logically. So yeah, exactly. Three. Also unpleasant, but yeah, knowing that knight g2 was probably strong, it was not bishop d3 possible. Okay, this is the only chance, but it's a try. Yeah. I mean, you, you're probably going to go bishop b5. Yeah, bishop b5, bishop e8, and then anyway, it's a wrong corner, yeah? For example... Yeah, a lot okay, of wrong corners. AC, so he just forced the zone. Draw for it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other big names still in action? No bigger name than Matthias Bluebaum against Johann Sebastian Christensen. Looks like a draw. Well, but a very unpleasant one to defend with White. Or you just walk with it, but you can't really walk with the king. Yeah, king f1, rook takes hd, f4, d5. Correct. Making sure that the king can it's never collect the pawn. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And yeah, this, this is a very nice mechanism. And eventually you will be able to. No, if d6, then king is, yeah, king h2, just ah, waiting. Mm -hmm. And now king, okay, h4. Just, you, you can just play h4. Late, the point is if the king takes, then the pawn can be pushed. The rook has to take care of it, and it's a draw. Without it, it doesn't look like black can make any progress. Rook b5, you can still wait. Exactly, yeah. This f4, d5 pawn structure is just lovely against king on f5. <clears throat> well done, Johann Sebastian. Yevgeny Tomaszewski, what is Professor doing? We have seen him. Losing only one game against Magnus Carlsen, where also he played very nicely. Or some... oh, again, he has things under control. The professor, peace up. Yeah, but millions of checks. He doesn't care. He's already computed all the outcomes. Queen d4, queen d4, he wins. Here's yeah, some queen c1 check, then you have to go king b4. 
And now after Queen F4 check, you have to give up the bishop. Mm. So this is some very deep, and then King C5 and you win. Yeah, King C5, Queen G4, Queen D4 check. Thank you very much. Hang on, let's go back to the blue bomb game. Isn't it, didn't we jinx it? Because now King D3, Ooh. King C2 is coming. That's it. How did we do this? H4, Rook, B8. I went King H3. Then King E4 worked. Hmm. Yeah, and D6, King D3. Yeah, suddenly I almost got a heart attack that the King is coming to D3 and... Yeah, this was the way to do it. Ah, okay. But this is where... Yeah, and then the, the King F4 is coming. You sacrifice the Rook. Okay, with few seconds on the clock to understand, calculate and perfectly execute it. Very tough. But yeah, he should have understood the idea that that's the, his only chance. Yeah, because now he gets the same by the tempo down, which might be crucial. Yeah, yeah in, in this race, this is... The king I mean, King C, King back. F4, King D4, just in time. Yeah. Wow. Big win then for Blue Bomb on, on end mm -hmm. of the day. Yeah, bouncing back and a heavy loss to you and Sebastian Christian. Mm -hmm. It's always so important to carry on the momentum for the next day. Yeah, it's if, if you lose a game and then you you have this break and then all the sleepless nights are coming, you you need to recharge your energy while while at night not think about the missed opportunities. Oof. Fabi, safe to draw here, down a queen, but the H pawn is strong enough. Well, but honestly, I mean, he was the one who was trying something before, yeah. So he yeah, yeah. might have over pushed at some point, but but probably he had yeah, everything. He was not in trouble. Yeah, mm -hmm. just enjoying chess to the fullest. All right, shall we have a look at the standings so far? Do we have them? Are they updated? Um, we no. should have a bunch of players on four and a half points. Yeah, here we are. Magnus Carlsen, Vladimir Fedoseyev. Arjun Irigaisi and Jorn van Forest in the shared lead. Anish Giri, Nihal Sarin, Duda Abdusatorov, Yu Yangi. Well, this is a big group. Kuparatze, Sarana, Nepomneshi, Ahmed Yarov, and Volodar Murzin. All lurking with four points. Plenty of excitement to come, Peter. Eight more for, rounds. For sure, yeah. This today, always the first day is like the warm up day, and already this warm up day was amazing. With some stellar chess. Of course, Magnus Carlsen against uh, Abdul <coughs> Sattar of game was, was sensational. Yeah, the they, women's section. That was a real highlight. They only played four rounds today. That we've seen Gunina dominate Tan Shong Yi in close pursuit, as is a group of others. Okay. Yeah, finally, what have, the Hikaru game ended the draw, so Hikaru is with plus two stri within striking distance. Yeah, there is no reason to panic for him. Yeah, but still a bit behind after five rounds. He, he needs to pick up the pace if he wants to fight for first place. Okay, but it's kind of tricky because sooner or later, anyway, somebody will lose on the top. Yeah, they will will be dropping points as well. And if you are just there and you are coming... The, Sometimes, you know, when you are always on the first board and people catch you, it's much harder when you are the one who is who, who is coming towards the second part of the event. I wouldn't be ruling out Hikaru as well as, as many others. Sure. Here we see David Anton from Spain completely winning against Levan Pansulaya. Just take on C5. Or push well, the or B4, yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, just, just win it. In it to win it. And Aravind also still trying to win his end game against Tuan Min Le. But this is a draw. He's not going to. Fairly dead draw, actually. <clears throat> this is a fortress, yeah. Black also doesn't seem very confused about just maintaining the status quo. So, well, Peter, what do we have tomorrow? We don't know the pairings yet, but yeah, obviously. The four and a halfers will face each other. Well, one thing is guaranteed. We will have plenty of action on the high, mm. absolutely highest level. All the dramas. And uh, 
Well, basically after tomorrow, we will be a little bit more clever, yeah, because then after nine rounds of play, we will certainly see already, I think, like at least the top 10 players that who are those guys who are really fighting for first place. For the moment, I think everyone, probably MVL is also on plus two. He's also winning striking distance. Hikaru is there. Uh, probably Sasha Grishchuk. I mean, uh, those guys at the top, yeah, it's it's very nice with plus uh, four and, and plus three, but plus two guys are also very much close. Yeah, with eight games to play. A lot of stuff could still happen. Magnus Carlsen looked strong. Eric Aisi looked strong. Jordan van Forest had a bumpy right, but did arrive on four and a half points out of five. And yeah, the likes of Giri Nepomnesi, just half a point behind. Gotta be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, also Anish was uh, yeah super sharp. I mean, how he beat Donchenko, very nice endgame technique. Also some other games we have seen from him. Jan Nepomnesi had this scare against Salem. It looked like he will be checkmated. Somehow he survived that game. Even managed to win. Sometimes you need those lucky, lucky moments, yeah, and and you can build on them. Absolutely. Time flies when you're watching chess. It's been seven hours, Peter. That unbelievable. I mean, never it, it allowed really, in the action. Yeah, if if you would have told me that we are here only for two and a half hours, I would have also believed you. Okay, we're here for two and a half hours now. So let's see the <laughs> plenty of action of this game. ahead, right? Yeah, between Aravind and Tuaminle, and then call it a day. Yeah, there is three. not much progress here. I mean, Bishop East Black just goes back in G6, sits and waits. Yeah, why is dreaming of Rook Bishop versus Rook, but there's no way to force that. Black just does nothing. Yeah, chess is simply a lot of fun. I mean, in this uh, rapid blitz, whatever event... King, hang on, King, uh, King F2. So after Rook B2 check, White will play Bishop Except B2, me. probably. Or go back. And then you cut. Rook B3, very, mm. very nice technique. Yeah, this is the typical sec, I mean, cutting, yeah, in Rook and games now. Black cuts on the third rank. If White gets Bishop E3, King F3, then he's pinned. He can't make any progress. Yeah, no intrigue here. And it gets easier to find these cuts. The first cut is the deepest. <laughs> yes. Um. This we know. Okay. It's just a draw. It's less dead of a draw than the injured game we, we ended up watching. The last <laughs> round. But it's still fairly drawish. And yeah. Aravind with the stylish shirt there. I mean, Aravind... Uh... Had the chance against Nyapo, yeah, that, that, ah, yes. So basically, Jan survived two scary moments with the black pieces. He might feel that this is a sign. This is always very important, yeah, when you still feel like you can definitely improve on your game and you are anyway doing good in the tournament. I think this is a perfect, perfect scenario. Mm. Roll back to T6, yeah, white, black has some margin even for where he wants his pieces. Now he'll hang out on the sixth rank. Any rook trade, of course, is a direct draw. There's not much to say. King can come in here if needed. The computer always wants to go like h5, h4, but no human would ever do that, like allowing potential for, for a rook versus bishop. Yeah, and after rook c8, black will play king h5. Yeah, this is the usual stuff because black is already setting to go king g4. I think black was also relying on this, this defense for quite some time. We've seen this position a hundred moves ago, no? Like, <laughs> exactly. I mean, hey, however, guys. contrary to the online events, uh, here the computer does not stop at threefold or whatever. Yeah, it's... Maybe also it's a tricky spot psychologically for the players. Yeah, they are used to used to the online business where computer takes care of everything by itself. Yeah. I mean, with all these claims, yeah, we were wondering that in this look, bishop versus look position, why black was not uh, trying at least to, to claim a draw before getting checkmated. 
that will be one of my first thing i will of course have my lunch but also check out how many moves had been played in that game with the duke and bishop do you remember who played it uh yes of course I mean, Manuel Petrosian played it, yeah? And it was... Petrosian was on the white side, yeah. We still don't know who was black, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we will check it out. Yeah. Here, move 98. Will they make it to 100? Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, the question is, they will get to move 120 or not? Would be three, Roxy five. We've been here before. I even have the feeling that 120 will be reached easily. Beautiful. Rook a3. Keeping the pin. Because simply the logic is very easy. If, uh, I mean, White wants to, he decided to play the game till the very end. Yeah. So he, he knows that the position is draw. So why on earth would he ever stop right now? Yeah. Then, then he can just keep on moving, shuffling for, for quite some boredom time. Boredom or hunger. It's not like he's made any progress. Um, but he's made progress since here. He's won the B pawn. But the last 30 moves, not a lot of stuff has happened. I'm not saying nothing has happened, but not a lot of stuff has happened. Yeah, basically nothing happened. Because so the, the character of the position of, of the battle did not change at all. I it's love this when computers now. in some moments like this claim that oops, <laughs> suddenly the, Black is better now. <laughs> the weaker side has some, some chance in it. I always feel that this is a sense of humor by, by the engines. Mm -hmm. It's the latest now with N N U E and comedy function. Mm -hmm. Stockfish 15.1. Yeah, there are some positions when it's a theoretical blue and somebody's like peace done and still the guy who is peace done is like minus zero zero one battle or something. It, it's very funny. King F3, starting developments. Will he give a check or not? We don't know. No check. Will he give a check next move? Ish don't think so. What's white going to do? Move the rook to some square? Maybe the bishop? Well, I don't know. I don't see the any bishop intrigue. Moved. However, Sotiris informed us that we were wondering who Petrosian's opponent was, that it was a Kazakh, uh, Kazakhstan's FM. Mm -hmm. Abil Mansur Abdiher. And he was also doing extremely well. Yeah, finally, with a few seconds on the clock, he collapsed. But uh, you, you could really feel the, the school, Yeah, that they are yeah. very nice chess school. He knew his stuff. Now, very tempting to go King G4. Is Tuan Min Lei going to take the bait? Or is he going to wait and do nothing? Which is also perfectly fine. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we are reaching closer to 120. Yeah. yeah. No, Bishop G7 won't be played. <clears throat> you don't White think so? will play Bishop E3. Believe me, White will play Bishop E3 now. Mm. White will play Bishop Easley. Yeah. Like, no. Okay. Looks like he's very ready to check out of this game. What Aravind is saying. You can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. No lunch. <laughs> you have good music taste, Jan. I like this. Excellent, excellent. The Eagles, it's one of my favorites. You should watch it. It's called. Um, it's a documentary called The History of the Eagles, Part 1. It's fantastic. Like, ah, really? Yeah, <laughs> the music true. is great and a lot of infighting and intrigue and partying. It's really, really good. It's maybe my favorite music documentary. All right. I mean, I also very much enjoyed Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, that was too much plot for me. I didn't uh, I didn't like the plot. It felt a bit a little soap opery sometimes, but I, I did enjoy the concert scenes and this Rami Malek did a great job, of course. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Mm -hmm. King e3 played. Maybe give a check. This is exciting. He could also go all the way back. But I don't think he wants to allow the king. 
Well, I mean, but but running away with the king might be risky, yeah. Then you collect the GC pawn, you go king g4 f4, and yeah, who's you playing should. for a win, yeah. Maybe make the king take a little journey to f7, and then we start going. <laughs> wow, I mean, I believe that now maybe black is the one. Look at this, he's also up on the clock. Who is thinking about can I try something? Because black could play the move king g4 now, for example. Let's go punish the guy, king g4 on the board. There Ale. Okay, and rook h6. That, that looked a little, a little panicky, rook h6. Now king g3. Ooh. The horizontal cutoff. Yes. It's a draw, of course, but I mean, this is... It's maybe time to start thinking about how you make that draw with white. Okay. We have a bishop. It's not going to be impossible. <laughs> Still, stranger yeah, things have happened. Exactly. I mean, it's annoying. Yeah, I mean, be, before you, you had all the... Freedom in the world, and but that's also what you deserve for moving around with uh, with zero progress for a hundred moves. Like then, ah, uh, but, to but admit, Luki, saying, why Luki to check? Why you allow this king f five? He just wants to draw. He yeah, took okay. and went f three. He's he's had enough. Fair enough. And then they will reach hundred twenty. Ah, oh, sorry, rook f six. We should go at some point. <laughs> 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 Yeah, king e3, f1 takes takes, and then king f3. They are blitzing it out. Yeah, they chose a different way, but same result. Move 122, you were right. Excited yeah, congratulations for both players, yeah, for this epic battle, epic fight. Congrats to us for making it through this. <laughs> and congrats to you, dear viewers, for sticking with us all of this time it's been seven hours of fast-paced chess tomorrow we'll get at least five more of this it's been a great pleasure please join us tomorrow at 10 a.m central european time in the meantime check out our friends at chessable if you want to learn to play 1b3 like world champion magnus carlson i'm sure you'll find a course there and yeah we'll be back tomorrow with more action thanks peter this has been fun yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Yuan. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll be back tomorrow with all the action. Stay with us. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck and your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker, look at your favorite brands from a new perspective. Sam Shackland. I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri. And I'm Minus Carlson. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. Hari Krishna Pentala. the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Seriously?
DHS is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew! Welcome, everybody. My name is Yanni Pomnishi. Follow my world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. It's so much happiness.